opportunity that we can't pass up. So the sponsorship from New Zealand Carbon Farming has been fantastic for our sports teams actually who went away to tournament week. We're a community who's driven by sport, but often money and, and the cost of travel, accommodation and uniform can be a, a barrier for some of our students. And to come out with a, a new uniform for a number of sports, particularly our basketball teams who have been away at nationals, has been uplifting for the students and for our community. Uh, the support from the Carbon Farming has been wonderful. Without them, then we wouldn't look like this. <laughs> Funding is a real challenge. Uh, we know that a lot of schools face that ongoing and the reality is if you go to a lower decile school in New Zealand you are less likely to be able to afford to participate in sport. Obviously having come through it myself with kids and, and being one of those kids myself who played sport, I know how much it defined who I was. And now being able to go, I can't fix it all but we can help and try and give to those people who are going through really tough times. Sport is about more than just a game. It's about going from teammates to best mates. It's the high fives and helping hands. That's why Caltex is proud to help fuel school sports. This isn't an ad about four wheel drives. It's about knowing the place, as well as the locals. You've found the place. That's a good start. Built by my great grandfather 20 years ago. Uh, kia ora koutou, ko Taranaki te maunga, ko Manawatu te awa, no te papai oia ahau, ko Kaiser toku whanau, ko Paul toku ingoa, no reira, tēnā koutou. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. And no my hearty mai, welcome back once again to Wellington and the Waimeri Hutt Valley Croquet Club for day two of the New Zealand Golf Croquet Under-21 Singles Championships. My name is Paul Kaiser and with me once again at the commentary desk is Janet Boutel. And I reckon we had a pretty interesting first day today, don't you? Well, I wasn't here yesterday, so please fill me in on what happened. Well... We've played eight rounds of the singles yesterday. It's a double round robin, and as you could see up here on Croquet Scores, Levi, yes. Levi Franks and Josh Winter seem to have had the best showing yesterday, both on six wins, but Mikey Lauer has caused what you'd probably call an upset, two upsets actually, because he, he managed to beat both Levi and Josh. So it actually, as the standings are, it's Levi Franks and Josh Winter in first and second, and then Miles Duggan from Canterbury has been playing really well as well and he's on five wins. Oh well that's interesting because we've got Levi Franks on this lawn one playing uh, James Duggan this morning. Yes we do. And that's the game we'll be watching. Yep so Levi will be really looking to win this and he will hopefully get a pull a lead out at this but it appears that James has run the first hoop and it looks like he's playing this red ball in right in front of the hoop. And he'll be looking to clear. He'll be looking to clear that with the uh, clear the blue ball with yes. the yellow ball, so yes, we we'll can go through. Well, Levi will certainly be looking to win this t this one and extend his lead. Yep, that's right. So, what's he up to with the black here? Do you reckon he's going for the hoop? Ah, uh, difficult to tell. I'm trying to look here on the screen as well, but it appears that he is going to go have a look at it. He's certainly giving it some no, thought. No, he's clearing yellow. No, he's clearing yellow. Looks as if that's what he's up to. It's a bit of a chilly morning here up in uh, 
Waimari. We are just north of Wellington, Whanganui Atara. And the weather is slightly overcast, no rain at the moment, but the lawn is dewy. So when the sun comes out, hopefully, it will certainly speed up the lawn a bit. But at the moment, it's going to be a bit cool and a bit slow out there. So you think it'll take, there'll, there'll be a bit of time for these players to kind of get the feel of the lawns positionally? Yes, I think it will. It's going to be a bit slow to start with. And of course, it'll take them a while to warm up as well and get used to the lawn. Oh, well, it looks like James was going for that cheeky little block there. Now we've got to see if Blue is able to see red. And it appears Levi can. It looks like he's lining this up. And yes, you can see that on the camera. So a nice little stop shot here. He'll be he'll be thinking of clearing black with the clearing yellow with the black, so Blue can have a go at the hoop. It looks like a pretty nice stop shot there from Levi. It does. And I think we're going to just see James playing back in here. He's going to want to get between blue and the hoop. Yes, his red ball is now over on the west boundary about peg high, and he'll be looking to come back into position. And a nice shot from him. Looks pretty good. He's a little bit short, perhaps. Oh, uh, no, that, looks, that, actually, that uh, actually looks pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. And Levi's lining up this yellow ball. He's probably been... Black ball? He's lining up the yellow with the black, yeah. Um, I'd say he's probably been not the best rokeyer. Well, one of the best, but I think there have been a few of these players who've been all, all been playing really well. But you'd expect Levi to be hitting these shots as he is a previous national champion. He is indeed. Levi is 20 and he started, he's been playing croquet for about six years now. And they're all, pl they all he plays out of the Kashmir Croquet Club and in fact he does play with James. And there are actually a couple of other people from the Kashmir Club as well. They're great friends off the lawn. And it's good to see that they're all competing at the highest level here today. They absolutely are, and they're loving it. <laughs> he also likes football and basketball. Yeah, I know. They're, they're, big on, they're big on the football and basketball. I see them uh, going like, between games. They're all talking to each other about um, which, how, how their teams are going. I'm not sure exactly what teams they support, but they're really interested in that as well. And it looks like James has manoeuvred it so there's two balls in front. He's really taken advantage of that black ball going a bit, way to, uh, bit by the wayside. Yes, black ball is now on the north boundary and out of play at the moment. But because of that, black did come off yellow, so that means it's onside for the next hoop. So Levi has chosen the right option here and he's just going to run the hoop, in theory. Which he does. Well, in theory, he worked, and that is the blue ball through hoop two. In theory and in practice, that's one all, and Levi's got a really good advantage at the next hoop with black on side. And I actually caught a lot of wire there on the replay. You can see that. And I think they have reset the hoops this morning. Oh, for sure, yeah. So red has now got a good position in front of hoop three. I think black would be looking to clear that. Well... Black is already there because it came off another ball, so it's not offside. He's Correct. doing well there. And some of, some of these players will be looking to, if the opportunity arises, they'll be looking to deliberately flick their ball off another ball in order to uh, be, go onside. It's really nice when you get an opportunity, to do, an opportunity to do that. That's right. So why do you think he's choosing to clear this here rather than go into position? Well, the other two balls are still over on the other side. Yeah, but there's, a lot of, there's a lot of distance there. Yes, I think he, he can't risk Red having a running position because his partner is not there to clear it, so I think he has to do the work now. That's right. Well, Blue, Blue would technically have a shot. Oh. Oh, well, that was a lucky let off for, for Black, that wasn't looked, it? He really almost close. put Red through the hoop. I was looking at it, I'm like, <laughs> no, surely not. That would be a, that would have been a disaster, but no. Red has just bounced off the upright yep. and is now just a little bit past the hoop. Now James is just going to be chucking this in front. It's yes. quite interesting because we're so Levi will be having a sigh of relief for that one. He almost put it in, but it's not over yet because where Black's ended up, this is a prime opportunity for James to put that red between the black and the yellow. The black ball, I think, is just out of shot. All right, here is blue coming up. Levi playing blue. 
So he is, is he? No, he's not lining this up. He's just playing this No, in. he's just playing it over. So I think he's going to take his chances with James attempting the and block. And it's coming he, in just north of yellow. If he decides to. But we could very well see Red just clearing blue to the line here. And it looks like that's what's about to happen. I would expect that to happen, in which case black will probably have to deal with yellow because yellow has a hoop shot. We've just got to make sure we're a bit a bit quieter here because we don't want to disturb their swing. We're actually we're only about maybe 10 or 15 metres so away James from James So looks as moment. if he is going to clear blue. Yep. So yes, you were right on that one. And yes, so red and blue and are both on the, on the north boundary. And that's probably the outcome you want from a shot like this. You don't want to be leaving red on the lawn because that allows blue to clear it really easily on its next shot. That's absolutely right. So he's done the work early and got rid of it. He's done the mahi and he's gotten the treats. He has done that. So here is Levi coming back in with black and he's going to try and get rid of yellow. And again we just got to be a bit quieter here. We're only about 10 metres behind him, so we don't want to disturb him too much. And, he's and a nice clearance from Levi. He's pretty much middled that. He'll be very happy with that shot. The seven yarder is, which is this distance here, that's really your bread and butter shot. Well, there are a lot of bread and butter shots, but that's one of them. You've got to be really consistent with them in order to win at top at top level croquet. Absolutely, it's those seven yarders that you need. And what's more, he was on the um, the east side, the short boundary, so he can clear the other ball all the way off to the other side of the lawn. That's right. I feel like the seven yarder is almost harder than longer shots because it's at, it's at about the distance where you think oh, I know I can get this <laughs> I can do it but then you actually still have to do it it's still not easy but then well, on a on a really long shot that's across the lawn like 20 30 yards you're well, probably thinking oh you know if I get it I get it but if I miss you know there's not much pressure on me well that's one of the things you learn in croquet is to take care with every shot and these guys are definitely really good exponents of that they're both top ranked players in the country actually and Levi obviously having won uh, the National Singles Championships, but Levi and James together, they've actually just uh, they've actually just both won the under-21 doubles uh, the other day, haven't they? Yes, they did. They did really well. So they both play really well together, and now we get to see them playing against each other. So there's all three balls in front of the hoop, blue, red, and yellow, and black is going for yellow, I assume. Yep, so as you can He's see... He's trying to get rid of it. So we play the order blue, red, black, and then yellow. And blue and black are a team, and red and yellow are a team. In the doubles, one player played each ball. But here in the singles, both players both players play two balls. Yes, and that was the black ball playing, the Poru Pango. And that was a really, really nice shot, actually, and a really good angle as well. We saw that absolutely smash it on the middle and send it right to the line. A really clean contact there. Now here is yellow coming back in again. That is the Poru Kofai, the yellow ball. Yep, and it looks like it looks like he might actually be blocked here. He's he'll be aiming at the Kikorangi blue ball. I think he may only have half a ball here. Well, I think blue plays next, and blue has a hoop shot, so that's the one he has to go for. I that's think that's right, but it's it's partially blocked. Oh, and he's oh he's actually dear! His, no, 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 that's a good shot. He's, I think. he's hit his partner ball as well as the blue ball. So they have all scattered. Red is now on the north boundary, and Levi is just going to bring blue back again. I, th I think it, I think it could be a lot worse though. Um, sure, red was in front, but it was blocking that blue ball. James would have been trying to go around the outside of that, but he managed to get them both instead. Yep, so and, and you'd rather and if you are going to hit your own ball, at least he got the other one as well, yeah, the so one he wanted. Yeah. So blue ball, the Poru Kikarangi has just come back and got a hoop position and is looking good. And what do you think Red's going to do here? I think Red just has to come back. Rely on uh, Blue to get rid of... Uh, so, ro sorry, rely on Yellow to get rid of Blue. Well, do, you think, do you think Black's going to be looking at Yellow or not really? I'm not sure if Black can see Yellow. I think the Blue ball may be in the way. I'm not quite sure if Blue has a block on that. Yeah, it's hard to see, but... Oh. We're just looking at I'm not. I don't think but, it's blocking. Uh, but oh. even for black to get rid of yellow, that is still quite a big shot. But it appears James is really respecting Levi here, so he's lined up this blue ball with red.
ball, and he's uh, almost, he's almost, he almost got the hoop himself. He did what almost what Levi did before. He bounced his red ball off the wire. So blue ball has now gone to the west boundary, and red is quite close oh, to the hoop, just a little so bit close. left. Almost exactly the same as the shot we had earlier. But Levi's, he's actually, James has sacrificed the, the hoop shot with black, so he reckons that on the, on the balance of percentages, probably he'd rather have, let Levi have a go at this than have a clear yellow. And it's proof to be the right shot. He had a go at the hoop, but black bounced off the hoop. So that leaves um, James to come back in with yellow. And they've been doing that a lot. I think they've reset these hoops. The hoops, I think, are fairly tight this morning. And we saw, we did as see they the should doubles. be for singles. We did see in the doubles that there were a lot of a lot of rejections, just like that. We did in the last few days. We've seen a lot of rejections, and I think they just need to get used to the hoops being really, really tight. So, do you think do you think they could be doing anything differently? Just <laughs> taking more care. <laughs> taking more care, so like taking more time to really focus yes, on the shot. Yes, and instead of uh, trying to smash it, I think they need to just stroke them through gently. Oh. Uh, that is, that is definitely something that you could do, but a lot of these guys, we actually feel more comfortable running the hoops with a bit of pace. Yes, but as you see, a bit of pace sometimes just doesn't work. Well, sometimes. So here's James having a go at blue. And he's cleared blue. He's played that, he's played that pretty well. Blue's yes, off, that was a good shot. Line. He'd probably have wanted those balls to be in reverse positions, but you know, you got the clearance, that's well, the Well, you get what you get. So Levi's just now thinking what to do about it. He's he, on his mind. He's probably got this, yep, this last shot that he's he hasn't quite gotten, but he's going to line it up again. He may be trying for the hoop again. I think he is. What a really straight straight swing he's got. Yes, straight swing. Solomon grip. Nicely balanced. And... Ooh. No, and the hoop rejected black again. So maybe, maybe he heard you, Janet. He has... Oh. It looks like he has played this a little bit softer. Yes, but I, I hope he didn't hear me, Well, <laughs> because we're far enough back and away from the lawn that I hope the players can't hear what we're saying. Oh, I think <laughs> I think they might be able to. I think during the doubles, um, one of them was talking to me, and they said um, James was like, "Oh, I was I was playing a I was playing a shot, and you said everyone's been playing really well." So I was like, "Oh, I can't miss the shot," <laughs> but he didn't. He he did really well, and James is just so going to put this. He's just going to pop yellow right in front. So he's. It looks like he's played that really well. He's wired it from blue. Blue doesn't have a shot at the hoop, and the clearance on yellow, you could clear it into the wire like we've seen a couple times before. But I think Levi's going to... He could. I think he's going to clear yellow. Yeah, but he has to he has to hit this on the side, doesn't he? He does. Nope, he's he's just playing in. He's gonna no. Allow, he's going to allow Black to clear it. He's just going to play in and, and get the, a position. Bit long, but runnable. This is the right option here, and in return, James is going to line up this blue ball. Yep. So You're, and then watch him watch him spread his feet. This is like this is like cocking a cocking a rifle. He's gonna walk up to the ball and he's gonna put his feet apart. None of the other players do this. That's and not then that's not necessarily a bad thing. Everyone can play, everyone has their own individual technique. Everybody really has their own style. It's just really interesting to see. But the again, differences. Uh, they've both got Solomon grips. So what what is a Solomon grip? Well Solomon oh dear, and red mist blue. So red and black are now both together on the west boundary. So that puts that puts uh, Levi in a prime position, assuming he can hit this. But tell it us does. About what are we saying about okay, Solomon grip? Okay, the Solomon grip is where you've got both fists forward. So you've got one fist underneath the other fist, depending on whether you're left or right. But uh, the palms of your hand both wrapped firmly around the mallet. So kind of in a in a circular. Yes. Kind of way you've got them both wrapped around. Yes. It's hard, it's hard to describe, but yeah. So one yeah. hand above the other hand, and uh, elbows just out to the side and relaxed. So here's Levi coming in again with black, and he's going to try and get rid of yellow because yellow plays next, and yellow has a hoop shot. A really and nice, he's done it. Really nice mid pace there from Levi, yes. and he's even cut off in the right direction. Yeah. So yellow is now over towards the west boundary, and is just going to have to come back. So we're going to see another long shot here. It's I, I talked about we cocking, are? I talked about him cocking the rifle, but here it's going to be getting out his scope. He's going to try and snipe this blue ball. Yes, blue is in a hoop running position. So and what we said before, I think he could definitely hit this because those there's a bit there's a bit less pressure on these shots. 
Oh, no, close. no, yellow was close, but he went straight past blue. And I would expect blue to now have a go at the hoop, would you? Definitely. But, yep. you know, they have been, they have been rejecting. Looks like he's scraping his mud on the ground. Maybe there was a little bit of, little bit bit of grass bit that of got Bit of grass or mud or something. And he's walking forward. So why, why is he coming up behind the ball? A lot of people do that. They walk along the line of the ball, the line of their swing, just to make sure they're actually straight on with it. Oh, and lovely, lovely shot. shot. So Blue has gone sailing through hoop three and is about two-thirds of the way down the lawn now. He's, he's run that with a lot of control. That's, that's a textbook hoop shot. That's a really nice hoop from, from Levi. So here's James coming up with, with the red ball, heading off down to hoop four. And yes, the lawn is a bit slow this morning, isn't it? Because that red ball hasn't gone quite as far as James would have liked. Well, at least he's in front of the hoop. I think you can be, you can still be happy about that. If all else fails, you do have a shot. Yes, he uh, is in front of the hoop, but he's quite a few yards out. He's um, probably five, six yards out from there. And the blue ball is there. It's able to clear it. I think if this, if we see this red ball coming in really tight, this black ball, sorry, coming in really tight to position, we're going to see blue clearing red to the line, and then red will have the shot at black. So here's blue, uh, black coming in now. Oh, he's actually nudged and the blue ball. And blue, black actually hit blue on the way. And we could actually, it could actually be blocked there. The black could have gone along the line of blue. It and looks as if it might be a block, doesn't it? Oh, that And looks, yellow really has got nice a really yellow. nice position in front of uh, hoop four. So Levi's going to look at this block here. Yes, that was a good line. shot from James. And so no. Levi's lining up for. I'd say yellow. Play here. the blue ball. I think he probably has to clear yellow, doesn't he? It's either yellow or the hoop. Yep. Um, Which do you think it'll go for? Oh, I want to say yellow. And he did. He went for yellow, and yellow now no longer has a hoop shot. It's actually bounced over the top of it. It did somewhat, didn't it? I think these, there have been a couple of bumps in the lawns. I know I saw Levi yesterday in one of the singles games. His ball actually hit a bump in the lawn and went straight over the ball he was trying to hit. <laughs> and that's a really... That's don't you hate it when that happens? Oh, I, I know. I certainly do. It can be... The jump shot when you don't want a jump shot. Oh, yep. Yeah. And then it's and it's all out of your control as well. But I think by and large, these lawns are, these lawns are quite good. It's just because these guys hit them so hard. They do, don't they? And I think all these young people, the under-21s, just like hitting a ball hard, don't they? Yeah, but it's incredible to watch, and especially when it comes <laughs> off. It's amazing to watch. It looks like he's trying to wire this from blue. So James is just setting up in front of the hoop. I'm not sure if that's wired from blue or not, but it's certainly open to black. Well, Levi, Levi's looking at it, so it's got to be pretty close. The hoop will definitely be in the conversation here. And we'll we'll have to see we'll have to see how that's looking. Yes. Uh, well, we'll be able to work out if it's white or not, judging yes. by what he does with black. Yes. He may just decide to get rid of red, and because I'm not sure if black if blue can do it. Well, he's getting down here. He's looking at his hoop shot. I think this could be a uh, he could be just aiming for the hoop. See, he's just walking up, starting his casting. Now, what a what a good shot this would be if it goes through, but it might be just be a double. So there's two targets red in the hoop. He wants to get one of them, and he's got the red. He got red. I thought he might have to go for red because otherwise I'm not sure if blue could see because well, I think that red and blue may have been blocked. It would have had to be red or the hoop, but I, it would, was red. I would guess just by how hard he hit that that he was going for the hoop, or that was probably the target he was aiming at. So yellow is just going to take a position, and yellow is going to hope that he's wired from blue. No, no, has he, doesn't, he? He doesn't like it. It's still in front, but he'll be yes, thinking of the wire has here. It, has he got the the block from blue? No, he, I saw him shake his head, so I don't think he did. But it's still in front, and that's the main it's thing. It's in front, and that's what you need. It means Levi has to deal with that. So if Levi misses, then uh, I guess Black can have a go. <laughs> oh, it looks like it looks like he's going to trust. He's going to back himself to hit this with Black, and just play that blue ball right in. Oh, and he's hit the hoop. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Levi is now almost in the jaws, but on the wrong side. So he still has the shot with black, but... He does, but otherwise... Now, now James can just play this red in, and it means... He blue, may try a jump shot with yellow. Blue is not going to be able to clear that. Why, why would you play this as a jump, Janet? Because blue is blocking the hoop. And if, um, 
if he just tries to run the hoop, then he may bounce off blue. He might just hit the blue and bounce he, out. He might, he might do that. So it would probably be better to try a jump shot and go clean over the top of blue. Another, another big advantage of jumping a ball like this is that we're, we're going over down the middle next. It looks like if, if we get a clean jump shot over the blue ball... Then blue won't have a shot for next time. Exactly. However... However, yellow has now been dispatched of by yep. Levi. Levi said, no, thank you. I'm just going to clear that and avoid that altogether. But red, red will still have a shot, and I think we're going to see a jump shot with red. Yep, so yellow just has to come back. The only other thing I can think of is that that black ball is on side. And it, it is. right next to the next hoop. It is on side because it came off an opposition ball. So James, James may elect not to run the hoop with red. In fact, we might even see... We might even see red moving yellow into the perfect jumping position. Levi has nothing well, he can do but just tap this through. And now he has to decide, James has to decide what he's going to do here. Okay, so blue has just been tapped through and is now on the playing side, as you said. But now it's a difficult choice for red and yellow. So James is thinking carefully about this. So what, what I would be considering here is, it looks like James is going for his jump. But, oh, no, no, I no, think no, he's no. going he's for a this, clearance. He is going for the clearance. I wonder if you could do a cheeky little promotion, move yellow slightly closer to the hoop. No, keep. he's just cleared blue. But I think what, what you could have done is played that promotion, moved yellow slightly closer to the hoop and kept the blocking line. He could so, have. So, so yellow would be blocked from black. Yes. Red. Now black is going to try and get rid of yellow. And this is a long shot from Levi. Oh, very nice. All right, so let's start the hoop again, shall we? <laughs> yep, but we're back, back Nobody to has a position in front of hoop four to, at the moment. Back to, back to square one here. So yellow is just going to come up again. But that, that option before with the promotion, the... And the he's taken it a bit wide. In, in golf croquet, there are often multiple valid options. And that's that by that, and just because the uh, promotion option was there, it by no means uh, was the only thing you could do. And what what James did there with the clearance was equally valid. Yes, the interesting thing is um, about uh, running the hoop is even if you're sitting in the jaws, even if you've got a perfect position, there's no way you can make that hoop unless you're actually through it. Yep, you have to you have to go through. Even if the jaws, somebody will get you out. So here's James playing red. Yep, and it looks like he's going for the blue. He is. And James will want to hit this nicely on the middle. Oh, he's barely nicked it, but he has moved, he has uh, moved that blue Well, ball. he did move blue, but his own ball has gone way up the, uh, the lawn and is now on the west boundary about even with hoop four. Three, three rather. So he's gone a long way. But yellow's still in hoop running yellow's position. Yellow's still in a hoop running position, so he's going to have to rely on black to move it. And he always he has a very very good cadence here with the with how he swings it. And that was a really nice shot. I wonder if he attempted to go in that direction on purpose to try and get to the next hoop. He well maybe. If but that means that red and yellow are now both up by hoop three. Yep. And the only one in front of the hoop at the moment is blue. But it looks like blue's a bit angled, so I'm... Blue is a bit I angled, and it's a bit long, so I'm, we'll see what happens. I don't think he would have tried to go to the next hoop off that. So yellow's just making a comeback. But that's going to be... And has got a nice position in front of the hoop. The only problem is that blue is right there. So he does, he does have a very... He's a very simple clearance. Well, relatively, anyway. He has a simple clearance on yellow, but he's only going to send yellow to the line. And then yes, and that's a short boundary, so yeah. yellow will just come straight back. So then, if no, so then if red if red plays in, and red is in front of the hoop, black will play in as well, and then yellow will have a seven yarder at blue, yes, which well, James can very much hit. Well, black is over so, on the west boundary, almost near the penalty continuation spot. So Le Levi sees this line of play, and I think he would you'd be considering going for the hoop here, but Levi's decided no, no he's happy with he's, he's going to clear yellow. yellow here. So a bit of a stop shot here. Well, like I said, James will have the seven yarder, so he may be wanting to get a bit of angle on this. And he has. He has. But, well, yeah, you know, it's a bit of six of one half a dozen for, the, six, yeah, six of one half a dozen of the other, really. Because staying in front of the hoop is still a big advantage. 
So red's just coming down from the... Uh, Yep, so red plays From in. the west boundary. So red is now in front of the hoop. But now uh, James will only be able to clear blue to the south boundary. Yes. Instead of all the way well, across. Well, if he clears it to the south boundary, he may get a block on red. Yeah. If he sends it behind the hoop. Yeah, you could even you could even aim for a specific spot on the lawn, on the boundary, and, and try and put it out there. And here's Levi bringing black back, back into play. So it's, this will be really interesting what we see here. We could just see him play in for the block, but no, he is shooting at this. So I wonder if he's aiming for that specific spot. So yellow ball for Poru Kofi is trying to clear the blue ball, the Poru Kikarangi. He's locked and loaded. Ooh, not quite. Oh dear, and yellow has missed blue completely and has gone off into the boundary. Now, um, it's actually jumped the the little fence there and gone into the bushes. Oh no, and they're, they're going to be looking for it. We've and, had, a, we've uh, had a, bit a bit of a moment in the doubles. Yes, we had this yesterday. He's put his mallet down on the boundary to mark where the ball went out, but I hope we don't have to have a long search for yellow as we did, um, was it yesterday, day before yesterday? Uh, yep. Oh, and we oh, had about a dozen people in the bushes there. And it looks like we may have to see everyone coming back. This is... Oh, no, he's found it straight away. Oh, well, thank goodness for that. Car that fly, was an easy one. Fly, James. Didn't go too far then, did it? Yep, and I, you know, it's a, bit of, it's a bit of luck as to whether it's completely invisible, you know. Sometimes it can just get right underneath everything. All right, so we've got blue to play now. And blue is going to try and clear red. I'm sure he does have he Levi does have the clearance here but James, he does. James, is, James is still not in the worst position because black isn't in front of the hoop so red does no, not have any there's no pressure here on red to clear no. black so red is now almost up to corner two <coughs> that was a good clearance but blue blue is still moved he hasn't he hasn't stayed in front but blue and black both have positions by the hoop, and yellow and red don't. So advantage red, blue and black at the moment. I would say so. And here comes red back in again. But as long as he can, James can be playing around these short boundaries, he's still got a good chance. That's that a good length. back to two wall. Yes, good length shot from James. Oh, I wonder if we're seeing a Jaws attempt from Levi. He's looking at it. I think the jaws would be very powerful here, but it is very risky. It's been it's been difficult to get these in the jaws, I think, with how these hoops are set. It has. No, and he's just No, he's front. just going to play for a position. And that looks very nice. Now, what do you think yellow will do? Yellow is on the south boundary. Well, he's he's lining up that black ball, and I believe that's because he knows that Levi will clear this red. But I almost think he wouldn't clear it. I think he could just play up behind it because if he cleared it, he would be on the short boundary. It would be red, on the short boundary red and able, red can get rid of... Red would be able to clear yes, black to a long absolutely. boundary. So I think, if, I think if James doesn't get this shot, which he does, so... He does. Never mind, but it, it would have been but really interesting... Um, tactically if he didn't because I think we would have seen Levi try, he, he try and snuggle up to the red. Yes, he would have preferred yellow to stay in touch but he did manage to knock black sideways. Yeah, he's, a, he's achieved the main goal and it looks like he's he's played to block red at the hoop I think. So is, is James going to have a go at this? I think judging by his reaction I think if it was open he would but now he's just tossing up. Do you, Do I do a jump here? I've got. I might not get another. Uh, I might not get another opportunity. It looks as if he's lining it up, doesn't it? Now, is this is this going to be a jump or is this going to be played straight? No, he's playing it straight. I think. Just a straight one, I think. Just a nice little mid poster, I think. Clear, clear the blue ball, stick around. Nice and easy. Yeah, well done. Yes, the only problem is that he didn't stick around. Yes. So both blue and black have gone down to the south boundary, and blue is just about in corner four. Yeah, so Levi will be wanting to wire this from the red ball. Whenever whenever your ball goes behind a hoop, and James is looking at it as well, he knows exactly what Levi's thinking. 
I'm not sure if that's wired from red or not. It looks as if black may have gone just a, a roll or two too far. Yeah, well, whenever, whenever a ball goes behind the hoop, it's really, really powerful if when you come back into position, you can wire it because it means the clearance is not possible. So and yellow is just coming up to join black at the hoop. And, and so now we know that, that that ball isn't wired because if it was, James he, would be... James he would, would have got rid of it, yep. yes. So he's relying on red to clear black on the next turn. Yep, and that's very sensible. Red, is the, red has the shorter shot and it's going to be clearing black to a long boundary. And then black, if this is hit, black will have to clear yellow. So we're looking at... So there's James coming in from the south boundary. Yep, another seven yarder. You can see there are so many of these at this level. Everyone's getting cleared to the boundary, so you can see how important it is to be able to hit these consistently. Absolutely. That seven yard rookie is absolutely vital for these. And, and he's done it. James is just so showing us how it's done. Black is now heading up and is landing by hoop, hoop three. three. It looked for a while as if um, Black might have been hampered when it's return shot by the hoop, but it's actually a little bit sideways. And this is going to be a shot at yellow here. <coughs> Going for the long roke, the long uh, tu tutuki. Pongo at Korfai. Bang. Oh, barely. Ah, uh, and Black has missed completely and is now on the south boundary. So I, think, I think you almost have to go for the hoop here. Levi's given James the opportunity. This is his chance, I think. And I think, I think so, it. yes. I think Yellow will go for the hoop. And sure, Blue, Blue is there. There haven't actually been terribly many hoop chances no, they have there They've there's been a lot of clearances and a lot of lovely shots doing clearances but very few hoop chances well it's good they've both been playing really well trying to trying to grind each other down i think they have so james james will be thinking am i clearing this or am i going for the hoop he he, he knows that there's a lot of pressure on him here because he knows that if he doesn't get this hoop blue will go then through. blue will go through so he either gets the hoop or he clears blue will he take the risk I think, oh, he's looking, he's looking at red shot, so he's thinking, should I just clear blue and then have the shot with red? But I think yellow's in a bit of a better position here. If he leaves it to have the shot with red, it may be, well, we'll see. He's, he's thinking hard about this one. I think, I think it's going to be blue. I think he's going to decide. I think he's just going to think yellow's a bit too angled. He yeah, still is, can't make up his mind. This is this is a really tough one. If, so it's if, either go for the hoop or clear blue. This this is really tough. I think if in, if yellow was any less angled, he would go for the hoop in a heartbeat. But just where it is and how difficult the hoops have been, it, it makes it a really big dilemma here. But also, you need to run hoops to win the game. You do. And if you decline a shot, sometimes sometimes you might not get the, one. the opposition will grab it. And you might not get another one. I think maybe he's just going for it. Yep, I think yep. This is definitely the hoop you can see on the camera. And again, I think I think this is the right choice here. He's winding up. Oh, what a shot! <laughs> no way. Beautiful. He, he made it look so easy. Beautiful. So that is a yellow running hoop four. Yeah, Piro, he's gone through. Yep, nice shot from James. Look at and look at that on the replay. Look how smooth it is. He makes it look so simple. So Straight through. So blue ball, the Poro Kikarangi, is first at hoop five. And he's got a good position, so I would expect that if he's still there, he can run the hoop. That's right, so something's getting cleared. We're gonna see uh we're gonna see a, a, a tutuki attempt at least. And it looks like he's gonna leave this for yellow. This is a bit I think this is a bit risky because the line that Black's got towards the hoop, the the wiring line, uh, the line that blocks the line that blocks yellow from hitting blue is very similar. Yes, now red was trying to get a block there, but so it's just gonna, rolled on a little bit. He's gonna play this along and now he's gone a little bit too far. But still it looks like pretty I think that black is now on the uh, just on the side of the upright. Oh it's not it's not touching it, but it's very close. 
It's a bit difficult to tell from this angle, but I think he's on the upright, isn't he? That's, that's definitely jawsable, but red plays before black. But with that hoop shot before, it may have looked easy, but it's definitely not. These hoops are really well set in the ground. You can only fit about a credit card between the ball and the hoop. Ah, and yellow has now disposed of blue. Another fantastic shot from James. Yes, yeah, so blue has now gone off to the uh, east boundary. And he's actually nailed it on the middle as well. That's that's such a good shot there. And that was a lot of pressure as well, because Levi would have gone through there. He would. He was first at the hoop. Interesting that he's elected not to clear this red ball. I think we may see, we may be seeing a ho-ho tarapiki here. No, no, not quite. Can you translate that for me? Uh, that is a jump shot. A jump shot? But no, we, uh, James decided that he's going to play a controlled clearance on this red ball, on this blue ball, sorry. I think he's, he'll want to come out slightly to the right-hand side on the camera just to put that distance between him and Black. So obviously Black doesn't have a hoop shot. And he has. <coughs> well, he knows. So James has confidently got rid of blue, and blue is now on the Le west boundary, it's almost level with the peg. It's not a hoop shot, but Levi's looking at his jaws because he's thinking, do I go in, do I not? He's looking at yellow shot on black to try and clear it out, and he's decided that it's worth going for here. It is very angled, though, isn't it? Yeah, oh, and it looks like he hasn't quite gone in, so yellow might be able to see all of that. So we're going to see, we're going to see yellow hit that. No, he's marked his spot where he wants to play it. But that does live, that does leave blue, the shot at red. Okay, so yellow is just coming up into a hoop running position. Good shot from James. Nice control there. Yep. So he's he's saying I'm clearing black and I'm and yellow's going through. That's that's James's. That's what James wants. Well, Levi may have other ideas. I think it looks like he's playing for the block here. I almost think you need to shoot at that. But it looks like he's played it really well. Has he got the block? We'll see. I think it, it may be a little bit short. But Levi has been shooting really well, and so he must have decided that if Red does get the shot at black, he can just hit yellow. He'll just hit yellow from wherever he is. And it looks like James is lining that up. Yes, he is. I've got to, I've got to be looking both at the at our feet of the live stream and at the lawn itself. So sometimes we get different angles. We get different angles, yes. He has gotten that, but he, he hasn't has moved got it very back. far. So. And Le Levi, Levi obviously is. And red the is right. now yes, red is now out to the out to the uh, east side of the peg. Levi has chosen the right line here, which you'd probably expect because being a national champion, you probably have to know a little bit of tactics. <laughs> I think all these people have got really good tactics. Oh, they do, and you need it. You need to. Running, running hoops and hitting balls hard isn't everything. It helps. <laughs> I think a bit of sly native cunning is uh, very useful. Oh yeah, and you and I think a lot of these a lot of these players who are closer to 21 will be have a little bit more. Yes, of that, it's of that definitely cunning. it's definitely a game of uh, tactics. Definitely, but you've also got to be you've also got to have the the technique and the physical uh, capability yes. to play the shots that you're thinking of. And that comes with hours of practice. Oh yeah, and these guys will have put in many many hours. They've spent. They'll have spent long days at the Kashmir Croquet Club playing around, practicing. Indeed they running will. Running hoops, doing big jumps, having fun with it as well, but it's still practice. So blue is now in front of the hoop. Red's going to be clearing blue. Red is going to try and clear that. Because black is clearing yellow otherwise. And this is a long shot from peg high back to the hoop. Maybe nine or ten yards. Nice and shot. he gets it. Blue had a hoop shot, and now Blue doesn't. We've seen some really quality rokaying from both we have. These players. Yes. Yeah. The only problem is that Red is just going to come back and get another hoop position. No, no, he's cleared. Um, no, he's cleared Blue. So I think. Okay, I think so we now may, we may see James 
lining up that that ho ho tada picky that I was talking about that jump shot. I wonder if we will. Well, we'll see what happens. It's a bit far out, I think, and I, I'm not sure if Black is actually in the way. But he does. So you, I thought you know, oh, I you're think right. I think if he's not in the way, I it think will he be can probably shot. just run it from there. He's he's played the roke really well. He's given himself a chance. So he will try and run the hoop, oh. the fitty. I think so. It's hard to it's hard to see. No, it is black. No, nope, he black cleared ball. black. Still, still a very good option. It's just you're not going to stay in front of the hoop if you do clear that. But he's still around, and it means that yellow is able to he's rotate. still around. Yellow is able to rotate anything that comes in front here. In response, Levi's gonna he's gonna aim this maybe a couple yards further back from the hoop than he otherwise might have done. Yes, and he's got a good position there. As you say, a couple of yards back and more or less dead in front. And James, nice line. James will play this one in and he'll play the clearance with yellow. Oh, that could be a bit far or it could be perfect. Oh, what's he done? Oh, he's just gone oh, past. So Red's just gone past the hoop and is now about a yard on the wrong side of the hoop. And James, James is looking at that. He knows that that was a... That well, was a mistake. Well, he knows that it was a critical shot, but every every shot is critical here, and you're never going to play. Well, you're every, right there. Every shot yeah, is critical in this, at, at this, level, this sort of game, isn't it? Been um, but it's still it still could be worse. James has so, experience here. Yes, yeah, so blue and black are now both in front of the hoop, and both have hoop running positions. And also, you're never going to. No one hits every shot. Everyone but makes it's, mistakes. Uh, but it's the yellow ball, the uh, Poru Kofi. And I think, and I, he will be trying to do something about blue. I think as long as you have the right intention, if you make if you make a mistake, it doesn't really matter. I think it's about you can at least know yes, that was the right idea, and sure, and then you know you can just improve next time. That's a good so, mentality so to James have. So James is lining up for this shot. Bang, bang. Yes, and he has hit blue beautifully. So both blue and yellow are now down near the south boundary. And another another good two took you here from. James. And it's really important here that when you do hit these rokes that your ball sticks around because then it allows you might have to do a return roke here. So James will have to clear this black ball. Oh, that is that I right think in front or is that is that slightly sideways? I'm it's hard I to I think see. it's slightly sideways, but I think he may have blocked I'm trying to I'm trying to stare at the I think he camera. may have put a block in between um, Red and yellow and uh, black. I'm trying to stare at the oh, no. Uh, camera here. No, maybe here. not. It no, blue, blue is sideways, nope. so it's not runnable. So that's a bit of a reprieve there for James. And you see James played it a bit. James overhit it slightly with the red, and now Levi's overhit it slightly with the blue. So maybe, maybe there's a little bit... There could be like a little patch on the lawn or something that's a bit faster that makes it harder for these guys to control that well, one shot coming down to hoop well, five. Well, yes, the dew doesn't seem to be drying off so much because it's overcast and there's no sunlight so the ground is still a bit damp isn't it you can see the dew lying on the ground yes but so it's still a bit slow and a bit uneven there i think the dew makes it but bo both of these guys they've looked to have compensated pretty well on these shots they've both both hit it back in front and that's something i think that these players are really good at they can compensate change work out slightly how much less you want to yes it does take a while you know, to get the feel of the lawn in the mornings doesn't it but these guys are very good at that. Nice little stop shot here. You're not really worried about where blue goes, but Levi actually is. He's played but, that uh, incredibly. Blue has stayed in touch, he's and what's more, he's got a block between red and black. And it's not just a block; it is a perfect block. That is completely straight It's, it's just on. lovely. Yes. You cannot do any better than that. I that's wonder if he different. was aiming for that, or is that just the way it happens? Uh, that's, <laughs> that's definitely on his mind. You probably are. Yes, thinking, but it's really I'm nice gonna, when it works, isn't it? You're probably not thinking, "Oh, I'm going to get that perfectly," but it's like you know, the the he's going to he's going to play it in such a way that it goes along that line, yes. and if it happens, it happens. So but it's, James, just, it's nice when it works. James has no option here but to try to hit blue onto red, the cannon, which is what he's done. Well, he's hit the blue, well, he's but hit blue, not quite onto black. But his red has gone further than he would have liked, and blue is, uh, black is still where it is. You know, it, it could be worse, because with where the red's gone, it's onside. Well, black has now got a shot at the hoop, and Levi's, the fitty. 
Levi is just going to... So he will try and run this hoop now. I think he Levi is reckoning that getting 3-2 up, having a hoop shot where both of these players have been rocking so well, you might not get any more chances. And he's just... I th- he's in just and out. And he's for now on the far side of the hoop and he hasn't got a shot for next time. Like, oh, it almost stuck in there and bounced out. I thought it was going to land in the jaws, actually. It didn't go through cleanly. No, and we've been seeing we've been seeing that a lot this whole tournament, especially with these new hoop holes. I know all these there's been a lot of volunteers, referees and hoop setters. They've been They've been coming, they came here literally before the crack of dawn. (laughs) They were up very early doing their thing. 7 a.m. putting putting in the mahi. So huge, huge Yeah, there's a lot to be done before a tournament. And, oh, is it near the yellow? No, in position. Well, the problem is here. Levi's going to clear yellow. Yes, I I think black has a shot there. Black will clear yellow. Yellow will have to clear blue. I think it's going to be these. Oh, I was going to say it's going to be in the next two shots. The hoop could be decided, but with how they've been rocking, I don't know about that. I think this could this could go on for a while, and I think <laughs> we're really we're really privileged to see them having such a good battle over these hoops. Yes, well, they're both under pressure, and they know how important each hoop is. They know that each of them aren't really making any mistakes, so they're thinking, oh. If I if I miss this, he's going to hit that. Yes, they're, they're both thinking that about each other. So so the they're just kind of even. They're very often playing for the clearance and waiting for the until they've got the perfect shot, aren't they? They're That's not right. taking any risks with it. And and also. The, we saw that Levi went for that hoop, even though Red was on side. I think that's that shows how much respect there is that he yes. might not get another hoop shot. That no, he, if that you've got a hoop shot, anyway. it's worth taking the risk if you've got that shot. In in that case, and with how well they've been playing, I think so. That's yes, the right option. Oh, I think he's missed everything, but he's actually. <laughs> I he's think actually he was hit, actually heading for hoop six, wasn't gone, he? <laughs> he's gone past, and he's actually gone through hoop six. It's a shame that it's not. It's a shame that that wasn't the hoop. It doesn't count, but... No. Yes, that was a, a very nice shot and a lovely hoop. That Unfortunately, bit, it's the wrong hoop. That could that could ease a little bit of tension there because sometimes just unwinding, you have a bit of a laugh <laughs> and you can feel a bit more relaxed. But, of course, he would still have wanted to hit that. And I know a lot of these guys have really high standards for themselves. They'll, they really want to make sure they hit everything. Now, that was a lovely stop shot so why, with blue on red. Why, why do we call <coughs> it a stop shot? Um, it's the way in which the mallet works. Um, the way you play a stop shot is to stop your mallet on the ground and stop it going forward so that the uh, the ball in front, in this case the red ball, goes a long way and your ball stops dead. Oh, so you're, the ball that you're hitting, it stops. Yes. So it's a stop shot. Makes sense. Oh. oh what's he done here? Has he... He's, he's come back. the jaws. I think he might just be on the side. It's difficult to tell from this angle, but that, that was a lovely been, shot back for the jaws. That would have been incredible if you managed to get into the jaws from there. But now All right. it We're looks like Levi reckons he can clear this with blue. He'll have to hit it on the left-hand side. It's send blue out towards where we're sitting. Down on the, from the camera's perspective, it would have, oh, from just before, it would have been on the left-hand side. So yellow is up on the... Uh, North boundary. And what he's do you think he'll do? He's got a long comeback from there, hasn't he? Well, he knows he knows that blue is going to be eyeing up red. But he's also thinking, do I just let blue now, hit it? What is the exact position of red? Because from where we are in the commentary box, we can't actually see it, exactly where it is. It appears, it, it looks to me, that because of the way Levi played the black ball, that the red is far enough out that he thinks blue can get rid of it. I would think so. It looks as if red is just slightly on this side of the hoop, doesn't it? And James just played that up. I think he's going to rely... Oh, he's nudged the red. Ah, uh, so I'm red is now in a running position, isn't it? Yes, but that, that, it will, make definitely it, that is. will make it a bit easier for Levi to clear it. But red was probably going anyway, so I think that could be a lot worse. I think, yeah, red, red was probably um, already getting cleared. I wonder if red is, is uh, blue has got a clear shot on red without uh, interfering with black. Yes, I think he does. Yes, he does. Very nice Unfortunately, shot. he interfered with yellow, but uh, never mind. Ah, and there is the referee telling us that they have been playing for one hour already. So we only have 20 minutes left, and it's, 
It's such a shame, I think, with these with these time limits. Of course, we have to do that. We've got to get through eight games today. Yes. Yeah, so what happens is that they have one hour time limit. And, and if they haven't finished by then, they get an extra 20 minutes. So we're now into that 20 minute period. And these, these guys will both be, these guys both love a good game of quality croquet as much as we do. They'll be, they'll both be gutted that they have to only play for 20 minutes when the battles at each hoop have been so good. And the score is actually to all. Like it, it deserves to, so see, if we deserve to see a finish. But yes, sadly, if they're still even after 20 minutes, after, 20, after the end of the 20 minute period, then they will play for a golden hoop. So just whoever runs the next hoop? Yes. So at the moment, they're two all. So this has been a low-scoring game so far. Oh, what that a That is shot. a lovely and shot from Levi, Red. Levi raises his hand in appreciation. We can all, every player appreciates, I mean, they won't like it when someone plays a good shot and hits their ball <laughs> away, but they but they, do appreciate a, it. they appreciate good play in anyone. Absolutely. So there's Black just coming back into a hoop position. Yep, that's right. And we, at what point do you think time will start to be a factor where these, that will, it will change their decision-making? Well, given the fact that they're now into their 20-minute extra time... They know and they're, they've got to have, start having shots at hoops. And they're even, they're two each, they may start taking risks to try and get that hoop. But you've got to balance the risk you want to take with what you give the opponent. You, don't want, to, you, you want to take a risk, but you want to do it intelligently, right? Absolutely. But they will be um, aware of the time ticking now. I think, I think for the next, maybe the next 10 minutes, you're going to see pretty much the same as we've had before. There's going to be a lot of clearance. Both players are going to be reluctant to give anyone anything. Oh, absolutely. And then but once, we, once we get down to maybe five minutes left, these guys will be... The pressure will be the on. And they'll be thinking, OK, we've got to start running some hoops yeah, now. Yeah, the pressure will be on. And I'm, in, I'm excited to see how this goes. There's going to be a lot of tension now. It's very, very rare that you see a game only go to two, only, only after, at hoop five after an hour. <laughs> but it shows that it's a really, really good fight over it. And it's not, it's not because these guys have been missing. They've been hitting every round. They've, they've been hitting, but they've spent a lot of time clearing the other ball and coming back. It's a, it's a shame. Yeah, almost, clear the ball you're, you're and come getting, back. You're almost getting punished by the clock for playing so well. Yes, there haven't been very many attempts at this hoop, but it's been a lot of clearance. But James is now in the driver's seat. Levi is off on the boundary. He's going to have to shoot at something here because he knows that yellow is clearing blue. Yes. So, so he will have to have a go at yellow, I think. It's yellow or red. The choice is what to shoot at. And it appears, yes, he is going for the yellow. I think he has to go for yellow because otherwise yellow will run the hoop. I don't think he'll run the hoop. I think he would yellow will blue. get rid of he'd blue. Clear, he'd clear blue and let and red go through the hoop. And leave it to his partner ball. That's right. They've been done. They've been doing some amazing clearances, actually, haven't they? They have, and hopefully you know, clearances we'll see from one. all over the lawn. Oh, he's nailed that as well. And he's got that one. Now, Le Levi's. He's kind of shrugging a bit. He's tilted his head to the side. That's an indicator of, you know, eh, not. It could be better, but he's gotten rid of yellow, and that's the main thing. He and has. Look, yellow was the threat. Playing, you'd, you'd almost. Not necessarily back him, but he'd have a really good chance at getting the return clearance here. So that was a 14-yard shot, and he nailed it completely. Yep. And now James um, has to clear the blue ball. Big pressure clearance here. Going for the tutuki on the kikorongi. That is the roki on the blue ball. Why, why do we call it a roque? I've, I've never... I've, I've never, no idea. <laughs> I, I know, obviously, we have croquet as the game. Well, it's spelt like croquet without the C on it. Oh, what a shot. Uh, and he has actually got rid of that ball. That is lovely. The performance of these guys under pressure has been incredible. Both of them. And we now have just 15 minutes left in, in this period Bang. of 20 minutes extra time. Now, this is, this is humongous pressure here. This is a almost guaranteed hoop run for James if Levi doesn't get this. But, but if Levi does get it... This is where Levi draws on all of his experience winning national championships. He's been under pressure and he has performed. I think this, this is a huge advantage for him in situations like these. Well, it's often the pressure that gets to people. They all know how to play, but under pressure... That really you've, you've got to great. be able. Yes, you've really got to be able to do these shots. Oh, and he's missed it there. And Levi missed that one, 
So blue has now gone down to the south boundary, and let's see if red can run the hoop. It looks like Levi, uh, Levi sorry, James is going to be wanting to get a nice controlled hoop run here. So red, that is Porofero, is about to run the hoop, we hope. The Fiti. And James, James would be thinking, I want to get this, like, one yard dead in front of hoop six. He's going to really take his time here. He knows how critical this is. But there's no yes. sweat here. And it looks like he's played that And really he has control. run hoop five all the way down to hoop six. And then Piro, he's gone through. Yes, Piro, he's run a hoop. So that makes it 3-2 three two three two. to James. But we've still got, we've got 15 minutes. We've got 15 minutes, 14 minutes. But, but because he ran it all the way down to the next hoop, that puts him in a good position. Yeah, we might just so want to be a little bit quieter. Yeah, so Levi is trying just to clear this one. the shot, you can see that blue gazebo. That's where we're sitting, so we're pretty close to him. We don't want to distract him while he plays his shot. Oh, he's just miss missed it. No, not no, missed it, he's nicked it. No, he, he nicked the red yeah. ball, and he's moved red ball back a little bit, but he himself with the black ball has now got off to the west boundary. And it shows how important it is to run that hoop with control. That put, that put Levi under a lot more pressure because he knew that red was in a good position. Yes. So yellow is now coming in and it's got a really nice position in front of the hoop. Two balls in front, this is ideal. Yep. Do, you, do you think time's going to be a factor and Levi will have a bit of a hit and hope go for the hoop here? I think that the timing will be a problem. So I wonder, he, he has to shoot it. And I'm sure that Levi will be feeling the pressure here. Because do you, do you leave red the shot? I don't know if you can, because James, James will go for it, and that could be 4-2. It could. I don't think Levi wants to leave red there. But it could, it could just be yellows there as well. He might just go for the hoop. What is it? What is it? Oh, uh, it's, hard, it's hard to tell. OK, so blue missed everything, is now on the north boundary, and red and yellow are now in front of hoop six. Black is on the west boundary, so that's another um, fourteen-yard shot. I wonder what he was going for there, because I think there's. I think he was probably good, going for red. There are good. I think there are good arguments for red and the hoop there. Just because James has two balls in front and black is on the boundary. Let's so the replay. Let's see what it. Let's see what it was. It looked like it. Oh, so it looked like it, it looked like it was so even yellow, actually. So red will probably... No, red's just coming up. No, that's very... Um, that's very, very I think good he's from hiding I think. from blue, isn't he? Yes, so he's on saying... The, on the grounds that black will try and clear yellow. So he's saying, I'm not going to take a risk and go for this hoop. I'm going to give myself an absolutely rock-solid chance. Yep. So Levi, if, if James has blocked this from blue... Levi will have to go for red, even though yellow has a hoop shot, just because of how yes, close Yes, yellow's is. is a slightly longer hoop shot. And that is what he's going for. Well, he can't rely on his partner to, to clear it, so he has to do it himself. And yes, that does sacrifice the hoop shot. No, oh. he's missed it completely. Oh, it was only only by about five, maybe five centimetres from, yes, from the edge well, of the ball uh, to the end of another. A bite. hit is a hit and a miss, I'm afraid, yeah, is a, a miss. A However miss, close miss, it is, miss it's is too good, bad. A miss is as good as a mile, right? So I think James is probably going to try for the hoop here. And he he has had to sacrifice this opportunity, Levi has. He has. But it's, they're, they're missable. Just in the interest of keeping the fight alive, we love to see some good croquet. Oh, but that, no, that's not a bad rejection. Mm. He's still in front of the hoop. No, that was a shot at the hoop from yellow, and he, the uh, hoop rejected it. He's bounced off. And Levi is playing to the halfway line here. He doesn't want to go offside. And it doesn't look like that blue ball is too hopper offside. And where has black gone to? Black's over on the west boundary. I don't think we can see it because the piping is in the way. No, but... But I think it's down there. There it is. But remember, uh, blue was wide from red, so yes. he, he had. There's nothing he could do. That's a really good. And shot red from James. has won the hoop, so that's a really good shot from James. That's four, four, two to James. Again, it's such, such a shame that time is a factor here. This, this is really good, Croco. I could, I could watch this for hours. <laughs> <laughs> so black is the first one at hoop seven. It looks like it might be slightly short, but jewelsable, I think. 
I don't know if Ritter's going to opt to clear that, to be honest. No, James has played to the boundary. Could he not, could he not get down there? Maybe, maybe he just wants to have a shot at the hoop no matter what. Well, with nine minutes to go, every shot is crucial but now. He is 4-2 he is up. He is 4-2 up. Although, we're going down hoop seven, He's and if you run it down, it's, a, it's straight it's down, straight to, hoop down to hoop eight. If Levi manages to run this with control, he could very easily, he could get, very easily take two hoops. get these next two hoops, get it up to four all, and suddenly it's all equal again, and it's all to play for. And, of course, it is possible, if you get a good position in front of hoop seven, that you can take hoop eight as well at the same time. Absolutely, Janet. I don't know if anybody would try that. But it just sometimes happens. So now, are we going to see? Are we going to see the jaws? Are we going to see black just clearing red, let yellow have a shot at something? I, it, I think this is. I think it's really risky. James is probably thinking, by playing to the boundary, I've got a shot at something. I'll have a yes. shot at the hoop no matter what. Well, the thing about playing to the boundary as well is that he can't be cleared away. And I think it's going to be if James does make this hoop. I think in nine minutes it's going to be really difficult to make up three hoops. Yes. But nobody can hit you away if you're actually on the boundary. That's right. So he's safe there. Nobody can clear him. But uh, I think it looks like blue and black, though. They're both in front of the hoop. So who, who was it to play again? Who just played? Red. Well, they're both sitting looking at it at the moment, aren't they? Yes, that's right. Did maybe black... I oh, don't know, I think black just played. Black just played, so James is looking so at his shot. So, oh, okay. I think what? James is looking at it, okay, and no, I think I've, it's yellow to play. I've caught up with it. Levi was trying to block. Um, he was trying to block yellow from blue and the hoop. I don't know if he's succeeded in that. So whatever. And James is carefully moving the black piping for the edging. Whatever. Moving it out of the way for his shot. Yep. Whatever. Whatever James has, he's going to shoot it at. If he's blocked on blue, he's going to go for the. He's hoop. going to go for the hoop. If he's blocked on the hoop, he's going to go for blue. I don't know if Black has got that block or not. Here we go. Splits the feet. Winds up. He's charging up. And we'll see We'll see what happens when so he hits So this it. is the yellow ball. Poru Kofai. Here we go. And... Oh! Uh, so close. Yellow had a go at the hoop. Barely. It looked like he caught that. And it's rejected, and the clip has fallen off. He caught that right-hand wire, and he's gone straight into it and sat But on the other it. hand, has he got a block on blue? No, he hasn't. <laughs> it looks like Levi will be wanting... No, the, Levi's trying for the hoop this time. He'll be wanting this controlled hoop, just as James ran hoop five to get in front of hoop six. Levi's going to want to run hoop seven and get in front of hoop eight. Oh, he and does. he's done it. He's gone a little bit past hoop eight, but he's still oh, right Oh, he has. There. He's, he's still right in, down there, though, isn't he? And it is really difficult to run these hoops with control. Yep, so... Uh, pretty close. So that's a nice shot from Levi. Straight through the hoop and down to the next one. So you, wouldn't, you wouldn't even think there's only ten minutes left and he knows he needs to get that. It just makes it look so easy. Oh, and we can see how close James's shot was there. Oh, and there's no. now six minutes left. But so again, Black is now heading down to hoop eight. James has played that well. Oh, and Levi's gone just past. It's, it's gone just past the hoop. So Black and Blue are both now on the wrong side of the hoop. Oh. Red has got a nice position. And Yellow is coming down to join them. Looks like he's he's played this pretty deep. I think he wants to make sure again he's got Nobody's going to clear him. He really doesn't <laughs> want to let Levi get this hoop because if he does, the score's are level. With only six minutes to go, you're really really going to start thinking about time now. This is where it comes into play. You might start thinking, if you're James, do we play for time? You don't, uh -huh. obviously, you don't deliberately time waste by taking a long time to play your shots, but you, it's very, very acceptable to just play clear, away, clear, 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 and never, and not choosing to run the hoop. Just that's, protect the hoop. That's perfectly allowed. And I think we might start seeing that. So that was a nice clearance, but Red has just come back in again. Yep, I think I think it could be worth here deliberately playing to the right-hand side of the hoop just so wherever it goes you'll be able to have a clearance. Well, black is now in front of the hoop. So what's yellow going to do? Yellow knows that if he clears blue, it's only going to the line. So if you are going to clear it, you have to put it to the corner to where that blue flag which, is. Just, which means just he has right to cut shot. it a little bit. 
And the thing about cut shots, I don't know about everybody else, but it's very easy to m just miss it on the side you're cutting completely. But it appears James has, James has said, I'm not going to do that. Levi's too good at the roque. He's going to hit me, so I'm just going to go for the black. Which he's done. Which Angie's got rid of the black. And now blue clears red. I think it's too angled to risk it. I think it was maybe a couple metres over. I well, think Levi I, would definitely well, go I for don't this. know. Time is running out. We have four minutes left on the clock. And Levi's thinking about it. Oh, he's... I think he is. He's asked, he's asked how much time is left. So he's thinking about this too. So he's clearing red. But I think this is a wise choice. I, I feel like you are going to get a better chance than this. There's incredibly uh, angled, even if you jaws at it. At this point in the game, no one's going to take any chances. Yep. Even, even if you jaws that, red has the jump shot. I think a risk that great, you're not going to take unless you've got about 30 seconds left. Definitely not, I think. But... As we, get, as we get down to the tail end, if Levi doesn't make this hoop, or even if James gets a shot, we might see some big hoop attempts, which is always fun to watch. Well, at the score of 3-4, I think uh, black and blue really need this hoop. Oh, absolutely. And like, like I say, we might see some big risks getting taken soon. So I think that black is going to come up. And blue will try and clear red. And I, I wonder if these guys are going to be thinking, I need to do something other than clear. I need to get these blocks. I well, need to yes. Get these snuggles. Yes. Because they know that the clearances are so good, and they're only going to be clearing them again to a short boundary, which these guys have been have been proven to be. Well, let's face it, there have been some magnificent clearances oh, in this absolutely. game so far, haven't they? That's, that, I think that's really the highlight here. It really shows the standard of play. And these hoops have been pretty good too, as well. I'm thinking. When James ran hoop four, that was a that was an incredible shot, under pressure and angled, yes. made it look so easy. So here comes James with the yellow ball, the Poru Kofi. Oh, and he's hit. And he's they're, hit they're black. Too good, both of these guys. You you wouldn't you wouldn't think they're under this much pressure, but so they are. black is now on the west boundary. And I think they, these guys are going to both know that wow that. The Rokos were incredible. They're both going to be saying this after the game. They're going to obviously if you look very at, good friends. Uh, if you look at uh, Levi's uh, shot from behind, he has a slight curve on his backswing, doesn't he? Does he? Yes, he was just in the right position, so we could see just a slight curve on his backswing. Oh, yeah. I know there are many, many players do do that, but as, mm. long, as, as long as it's straight on the way through... As long as it's fine. straight when you come through. And obviously it works for Levi. It does. You see, him, you see how he hits everything like this? Now, with two minutes to go... Black is just coming back in. Levi's going to be having the shot at red with blue, so I think we're going to see James having the shot at black here with yellow. Because, again, there's the respect with, with how, how well these guys are playing. You might almost see James going for the hoop, but I think, again, with time being like I think this, that might be a bit risky. You're not, yeah, I don't, I don't think we're going to see that. But he he doesn't need a, the hoop. If there is a double... Levi needs the hoop. Yeah, and I think and uh, red and yellow, James, are one hoop ahead at the moment. But there is a double, so you might, even if you miss slightly, you might go through the hoop. Anything can happen here. Oh, oh dear. He did go for the he, hoop there. He did go for the hoop, but it bounced off and is now in corner one. You know, it, it, it would have it would have definitely, it would have almost secured the game. That's that's really showing how time's a factor there, but I think in that situation, so, clearing black was the right play. So blue is now going to try and clear red, because red has a hoop oh, shot, and that's shot. again another lovely clearance from from Levi. And I feel like that, that could have been a critical moment there in the game. It could. So black will now run the hoop, unless red manages to get rid of it. And red's got, yes, red is on the west boundary now, so it's a long shot. But I do, I do have the feeling that uh, James very well could have um, been aiming at the black ball as well. But there's... Well, with only 45, 44, 43 seconds left. But sometimes if you can back yourself, you go for the shots. Oh, and he's missed it on the left slightly. And red has missed that clearance, so black will... Well... I'm not saying Black will run the hoop, but Black will have an attempt at running the hoop. I think it's I think it's quite likely with how anything's these guys possible. And if Levi runs the hoop, that will even it up at four all. Oh. And that that caught a lot of wire. That caught a lot of wire, but it's a hoop. 
So that is now for all, and, and they the have seven, six. Seconds, so They're counting down time now. Is about to finish. And so, that is time on the clock. So, Janet, we have now got a golden hoop on our we hands. We have now got a it golden is, hoop. It is all for nothing, all or nothing here. So, <laughs> Levi just managed to even that up in the last few seconds. So Le Levi is questioning whether there is a two-ball rotation at the end of time or if they just play for the hoop. They have to play for the hoop anyway because it's for all, but he's, he's wondering if, if, if someone runs the hoop, does it end straight away, or if you're in the rotation, if you're in that rotation, can you then run the next hoop? And as you can see, it looks like we do have a golden hoop here. So it's one I think all. we do. It's the equivalent of hoop 13. And honestly, I think it's it's what we all wanted to see. We want to see this go to a decider. Yes, we're going for a golden hoop. So whoever wins this one. So what do you do here? Levi just managed to even it up in the dying seconds there, didn't he? Yes, so Levi, he has a shot with blue. It's so it's now there. for all. So it appears that he's played this black ball in a position that he can block yellow having a shot at blue. So in return, I think if yellow can't see blue... He might just jaws it. But the problem is, even if you do hit blue, blue can clear red to a long boundary. Just like straight down the lawn. He can, straight hoop, down the lawn. Which will give black the shot. So black and blue are both balls. You don't want to... Uh, black and blue, you want to move black, but you can't because blue will have a shot at the hoop. Yeah, James is working out what to do here. I think it could almost be worth just trying to put this in the jaws and sure you sacrifice a jump shot, but it will give red a chance to move the black. No, he's thinking carefully about this. He did look at putting it in the jaws, but the, I think he's looking at other options this now. Is, this is huge here because he, he won't want to move black because he knows he has to move blue. He yes, won't want to move blue because blue will still be able to clear, clear red. Yes, he's still looking at jawsing it. No, I think he's decided to clear. It's, 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 this is a really, really tough decision, and all these options have their upsides and downsides. I think any of them, there's good arguments for both. Because even... I think I think Joe. I think just though, even though he clears blue. No, he's he's going for the clearance. Well, maybe maybe it's black. We'll have to work it out. We'll see what happens. No, he's cleared black. black. He's so cleared that, black. That does sacrifice the hoop shot. Oh, I don't know about this. So black is now in corner four. There is. It is not. It is quite long. Would would it's you a long shot? But he's very capable of doing this. Although the, James Wall have been thinking that they've been missing a couple of hoops, especially from quite far. There's going to be a lot of pressure on this. There, and, is, and there, would there that, is definitely. And would that just put it over the edge and tip the scales slightly? Not that you'd <laughs> think he'd miss, but maybe on the balance of probabilities, you're like, OK, that's, we'll, let him, we'll see what happens. Well, James is just having a little sit down here on the edge. Yeah, they can, that's, that shows how much tension there is here. Levi knows that too. Is he is he going to go for it? He may he may even choose not to. He knows how critical it is, so he's just taking his time to think about this one. I think though the way Levi's played to bring it back from four two down, it was two all when time was a factor, and then James made those two hoops. Levi's barely run the hoop on like the last shot. I think you almost have to go for it. You have to give yourself a chance to win. Well, he's sitting and thinking carefully now, but there is no time limit restriction anymore. It's just a golden hoop, and whoever gets it wins the game. It shows, so the, the, it shows the importance of of this shot, the amount of time that Levi's taking on it. Consider your options. He's, he'll be thinking, oh, maybe I've, I've missed a couple of hoops, but also, also you've got to back yourself. Yes, he's think thinking he maybe he'll clear red. So It's either red or the hoop. Let's, let's run through the tactical line here. So blue, blue clears red. Red will have to come back into position. Then... Black is on the boundary, so black could have a shot. I could think, I'd think that maybe black would clear red here. Black would clear red. And he's obviously made up his mind. No, he's going for the hoop, and I think this is the right option here. You have to, you have to, you have to play to win the game, and that's what Levi's elected to do here. I wonder if we can get one of these guys to come have a quick chat afterward. We'll see if we can get one of them. Oh, he's oh gone and through. he you ran can the hoop. See how how much that means to Levi. <laughs> the emotion there. What a shot! So that was a winning shot from Levi Blue. Has just gone through the hoop, and that's the game.
And that was fantastic. That was a fantastic first game, and that was only the first one of the day. We've got like eight of these. That was one of the first ones of the game. I'll just Five, see if I can grab Levi. Uh, grab Levi. Levi or James, or both of them. Even. Or both. So we'll grab we'll grab them. Levi, it looks like Levi is going to come have a thirty second chat. Well, good, good win, Levi. That looks, that looks so tight. Uh, yeah, thanks, Paul. Um, that was, that was pretty nerve wracking right at the end. Yeah, uh, after I ran that uh, hoop eight, I had about ten seconds left apparently. So like, ten seconds went a different way in that match, and I would have been swinging, and the time would have gone, and I would have lost. Yeah, so. you to, you, time really became a factor yeah. there. It's quite annoying because that could have been like a really good like seven six sort of game. Yeah, that's what that's that, what we were saying actually here. It's such a shame that it it went to time. Yeah, and when you guys were at two all, because it was like it was super even. Well, I think I think hoop the, for hoop. The big stand yes. out there was the rocaying. Both of you guys were playing. Yeah, really we didn't well. we didn't let each other have many chances at all really. Yeah, um, and it's good that it went to a golden hoop. I thought it was going to be like three two or something. Yeah, yeah, it was exciting. I was, yeah. Had to had to rush at the end with that hoop out and hit the big sort of nine yarder and it worked out well. It's still a pretty pretty enjoyable game, right? Yeah, lots what, of fun. What was going through your mind when you were deciding to which shot to play to run the final hoop? Um, I just thought I want to win, so I go for the hoop and yeah, got much. it. That's what that's what we were saying. Why I, I said before you you got to play to win, right? Yeah, you you done so well to get those two hoops back. Yeah. And yeah, just just smash it through. Yeah, that was that was the plan. So that that must do pretty well for your prospects at the next, the ne in the in the block so far, right? Yeah, I've lost one game so far to Mikey. Um, I got two difficult games up next. I'm playing Nathan and then Josh. Oh, those are so big. we might we might see if we can get one of those on the stream. Yeah, oh, I'd rather not, but <laughs> whatever yeah, whatever be, the streaming is planned, uh, I don't mind. You make it look like there's no pressure out there. Well, there's definitely a lot of pressure. <laughs> you just got to try not to let it affect you. Yeah, why, wise words from a national champion. Oh, thanks, Paul. <laughs> um, anyway, thanks, I'll Levi. Off now. I'll thanks you, for interviewing. I'll let you go. Mm. We'll, we'll go to an ad break. Yeah. And go! Just fill up at a participating Caltex, stack your pump discounts, and you can collect more savings on your next visit. Oh, there's another one. Getting quite good at this. Ah, filling and saving. Feels good. This is an opportunity that we can't pass on. to get a better result for our clients since 
I'm not sure if we're live at the moment or yes, not. We are. Welcome. We are. Welcome back. We're into the second round, the second day. This game, we're already into the game. It's Miles versus Luke. And just looking at the hoops so far, it's 2 1 to Luke on approaching hoop 4. Luke's just done a clearance on red. Been most impressed with Luke at this tournament so far. I've not seen him before, but he's a very strong player. Hits the ball hard and done a few good jump shots too. And uh, Miles is the twin brother of James, who was on this lawn uh, in uh, the first round this morning. We still have another six rounds to go after this today, so it's going to be another long day. But the weather's good. Going, I think you can see red here. And Luke's going for a clearance on red. No, you can't see it's going back through the hoop. Which is going to leave Miles to clear blue to the boundary, looks like. And then if he wires it from. If he wires it, then red would try and jump black. That's so, shot. yellow clearance on blue. Very nice shot. Um, Brian, the weather seems to have lifted a little bit, doesn't it? And we're getting more sun coming through at the moment. Yes, definitely uh, one or two degrees warmer than the last two yes, days. Yes, it's, uh, it's been a bit chilly for the first game this morning. But um, the weather seems to have lifted a bit and there is a little bit of sunshine peeping through. So we hope this will uh, burn off the last of the dew on the, on the lawn and it should be more comfortable playing. Not sure what Luke can see here. Not much. So Actually. Luke playing blue to a, a clearance. <laughs> he cleared black, didn't he? Cleared his own ball and... That's not very satisfactory. And blue went up to hoot six and maybe hampered by the... Yeah, so it looks as, as if well. blue may have the hoop in the way, doesn't it? So he may have a hampered shot there. But red, I think, is now going for hoop four. Yes, so Red has made hoop four. Nice shot from Miles. Mm, two each. All right, so now they're two all. Um, blue is not offside, is it? Mm, he's checking, but I don't think so, no. But it's not in a very good position to get to hoop five. No. No, it is offside. It's taking it over. Call over the umpire it has been one. called by offside, yes. I thought it might have been. So, uh, Miles not too happy about that one. Luke, Luke's going across to five. Just plays it in a little bit short. Red probably just come in here close to the hoop, in between black and the hoop. And looks like yellow might go for a clearance on black. Let's check in to see if he's not hampered by hoop four. He's a bit close to hoop four, isn't he? So I'm not quite sure if he's got an absolute clean shot there. Yes, I think he has. They're very awkward shots to play those. No, and he missed it. He was trying to clear black from in front of... Uh, Hoop five, but he's missed it. And now yellow has gone over to the west boundary. In fact, uh, blue and yellow are both over there just by the penalty continuation shot. We're all waiting for the next game as well. We should have much anticipated a game between Levi and Josh. I think it will be on this lawn. Mm -hmm. And that will go some way, maybe, so in those Luke early days, but it may go some way to deciding who may win this tournament. So Blue is just coming back in. Blue ball, the Poro, Poro Kikurangi, has just come back in and is now sitting just south of 
black at hoop five. Red is so trying to clear black. So Miles playing the red ball is trying to clear black. Black is a... Oh, he wasn't trying to clear black. He I was trying to go for the hoop, um, I think. He almost had a double, so... Well, yes, but he almost made the hoop, didn't he? He did. Bounced off. This gives Luke the chance to get three to in front here. Now he does hit it very hard, and he will try and run it all the way down to hoop six. He's uh, a yard and a half, two yards out. No. And the hoop rejected the black ball. We've had a lot of hoop rejections this morning, Brian. Not just Have this morning, you had I've the had same? A lot over all yes, three days. I think the the hoops are actually quite tight, aren't they? They're very tight. And uh, I think, too, some of it is just early morning nerves. But there have been a few rejections. So yellow ball, the uh, Poru Kofai, just coming in from the west boundary and gets a nice position there in front of the hoop. So Luke playing the blue ball, that is the Poru Kikarangi, has just cleared yellow back to where it came from. So it's now almost at the penalty continuation shot uh, spot on the west boundary. Didn't quite keep blue, not too close to the hoop, so it gives Miles a chance to take control of the hoop. If he does a good stop shot on black. And hopefully he stays in front of the hoop. Here that he goes. No, off to the side as well. No, so black has now gone down to the south boundary and red has gone slightly sideways. I think Miles was hoping that red would stay in front. Which has almost given the control back straight back to but Luke. But it went, went slightly sideways. So black has just come, come back and is sitting in front of the hoop. Uh, Brian, he looks slightly sideways to me. He doesn't look as if he's got a good shot there, so if he gets the shot, it might be a bit angled. What do you think? It's a bit difficult to tell from here, isn't it? No, you can see, you can see black here. He's going for black because he knows that red's going to be cleared by blue. So he's taking the option of clearing back and forth. So of here's hoop. Miles hitting yellow ball back in again. And he's cleared black. Lovely Perfect shot. shot. So black is now in a running position for hoop four. Unfortunately, they're up to hoop five. So that gives Blue a chance to come back in. He's uh, gone, gone quite deep. He's gone quite deep Don't because he really knows that if really he goes any closer, Red will have a go at him. But Red is going to have a go at him anyway. So Miles just coming forward here. Miles playing with a Solomon grip. I've noticed quite a few of the people have got Solomon grips. So why do you think they would use Solomon rather than the standard grip? Oh, it's just the way they've been coached when yes. they first started. Yes, but a lot of them, uh, I noticed that uh, Levi is playing with uh, uh, the standard grip. Sort of one hand forward, one hand backwards, cupped underneath the other one. But a lot of them seem to have a standard grip. So Black's just come in again and has got a... Well, he's a bit angled in front of the hoop, isn't he? Yeah, so Mar Miles has come deep for that purpose. Luke will come in close here to the hoop. And that's a good shot. Yes, and Blue has now got a lovely position in front of the hoop. So red ball coming into hoop five. This goes past the hoop just a yard Just or so. coming. It looks as if he might be just on the far mm. side of the upright, doesn't he? Luke which is means like that he's going uh, for the hoop here, which is Luke probably is going not to the best option. Yep, he's going to try for the hoop by the looks of it. He's going for the jaws. <laughs> and no, the hoop re rejected him. He probably should have gone to clear yellow there to the boundary. Well, yellow will now come in and uh, clear blue. Correct. I think blue's, blue's got a hoop shot by the looks of it. Could be a bit angled. No, he decided to go over the hoop. Ah, okay, so yellow went to the hoop and again the hoop has rejected it. <coughs> so we've now got all four balls all clustered around hoop five. So blue's going to have a go at the hoop now. And blue has made hoop five. 
And a couple of yards past the uh, peg in the middle. Yes, he might have preferred it to go a little bit further to be first one at hoop six. No, still in so the he's, position. So uh, he's not as close as he would like, perhaps, but still a nice position. Uh, what happened to Red just then? I think it just slipped off to the side. He's gone just a little bit past the hoop. Yeah, well, he had to go close to the hoop. Yes, he went very close, but he's, just, but he's just on the wrong side now. So here comes yellow. And yes, the weather is lifting a bit. It was quite murky this morning, wasn't it? Yeah. So it'll be much more comfortable for them to play. Blue going to stop shot on yellow. It's a good shot. Yeah, and yeah. yellow has now gone to the north boundary. Blue has kept its position in front of the hoop. These two are getting on with the game here. They both, they both like to play quickly. I don't think this will quite go so to the time limit like so the previous game. So James just giving the red ball. That is Poro Ferro, a little gentle prod just to put it in front of the hoop, which is a sitting duck for Black to do a clearance on it. What do you think? Well, it's hard to see from this angle. Might he? He's going, looks like he's going for a jump. Very aggressive shot. And he went off to the side. He did go for a jump. It's better option he, would have just uh, to put black in front yes. and clear red with blue. Yes, he went off just to the right side of the hoop and black is now on the north boundary, almost next door to yellow. Red is still in front of the hoop, but I think uh, blue will probably see to that. So the yellow ball, Poro Kofi, has just come up. And has not quite got a block on blue, I think. Looks I think he's just gone to just a smidgen too far to get that block. Maybe a chance of an in off here. So do you think Lynn will go? No, it looks like he's going, will go for the hoop. he's going directly for the hoop. Well, if he doesn't get it, then Red will eat it. So he's walking up, shuffling his feet the way he does. Standard grip for Luke. No, and he's did, cleared red. Did go for the end off. Yep. So that leaves yellow within reach of the hoop, perhaps, and all the other balls scattered around the lawn. So, so red ball, the pofu... Poru Ferro is just coming back into position. So yellow and red are both in front of the hoop. This is hoop six they're up to now. And black ball just coming back in, coming a bit deep. And Miles marking out a position. He's thinking of trying to wire it from blue, but the best option here is just to clear black. Yes, I think that's the most sensible thing. He could have tried to put a block in on blue. He on could red. have. Oh, there's another ball from the next Hello, one. Hello, we've got a, another red ball from lawn two. Just come in. Looks like that one of uh, Mikey's aggressive <laughs> shots. So he must have jumped the uh, the black the black piping that is meant to keep the balls in their own territory. And Miles has just sent it back to lawn two. So now we have red and yellow both in front of the hoop. And Luke trying to do a clearance and he's missed everything completely. So blue is now on the south boundary, leaving hoop six for red. So let's see if uh, Miles can get a hoop here. This will make it three all. I expect Miles to get this one. And he made that the hoop. That was just an experience a bit by Luke. He's going to learn over time that sometimes he's just got to stay in control of the hoop. And by that aggressive jump shot he did earlier, he lost control of the hoop. <laughs> and Miles. Um, well, he obviously thought it was. It. He obviously thought it was worth a go. But uh, it didn't come off. So here's uh, Luke heading for the first one to be at hoop seven. It's 
Good approach to seven. Put it in a runnable position. Miles is trying. Ooh. Just goes past black. Good shot from both of them, though. It could be both a problem yellow for Mars, and blue. Because Mars is going to clear black and he could end up hitting his own ball away as well, being close to one another. He could. Okay, blue's now got a nice position in front of hoop seven. And Miles is just wandering over to black and yellow to see exactly where they were. Who's going to try and hit black on the side here? On the right-hand side, I'd say. Yep. Now, see, Miles has got a bit of a hook on that backswing. Yeah, there's a problem. Oh, dear. So instead of hitting black away, Miles has managed to hit his partner ball yellow away, and black is where it is. And, of course, black plays next, so I suspect that uh, Luke will probably have a go at the, sh at the hoop. Nope. Hit no, he left. did have a go at the hoop, left but it hoop uh, and shot way off to the so uh, hoop rejected it, and it's now boundary. on the west boundary okay. about peg high. So he won't be pleased with that. Miles will probably go deep here because I don't think Blue's in a position to run the hoop here. Um, I don't know. Luke may try and get it into the jaws. But uh, it's, uh, it looks a bit angled for a hoop yeah. shot. He's going for the jaws. And that's actually Yes, so shot. Blue has arrived in the jaws of hoop seven. It was a bit angled, but he's made it. But one of the things that you learn is even if you're in the jaws, you're not actually safe until you're actually through because some nasty person will come along and get you out of the jaws. I think he's far enough through for, um, I'm not sure Red's going to go for it, but... I don't think Red and Yellow can do much about that one. Well, no, Yellow's got a jump, potential well, jump shot Well, yes, there. it's a bit long. There's a danger but, here uh, of um, Red knocking Blue through the hoop if he does that. No, he's, he's giving up on that tactic. He's going to do something else. He's just going over to... Uh, Miles is just going over to look at the hoop to see exactly what the situation is and how far through blue actually is in the jaws. <coughs> oh, he's going to give it a crack here. So blue is in the jaws of the hoop. That is the hoop is the fitty, and red is going to give it a go. But the possibility is that he'll push it through. And that's what he's Which done. is exactly what he's done. Yeah, so Miles has so Miles has given the hoop to Luke. Yeah, I would have left that alone and just give it a go with jump shot with yellow there. Because now Luke's four three in front and first shot at hoop. Yes, yeah, so that gives uh, Luke the uh, the possibility of getting to hoop eight first, which is what he's done. Miles comes down. So Miles comes down with the yellow ball and just goes slightly past the hoop. So let's see what red does. Red is going to come down. No blue for blue first. Where are we? Oh, there's blue. He's got blue's trying for a block. Luke is marking a spot that he wants to aim for to try and block block black from red. So he's bringing blue up and I don't, attempt, just I, a little bit short. I don't think he gets the block there. I think he's a bit short. Do you think, Brian? I think he's a little bit short. Yes, a little bit. So it's a big cross the lawn shot here for Miles with red. He's uh, about a yard north of hoop three, heading down to hoop eight. And he's missed it, and the red ball is now in corner one. In fact, it's just about disappeared under the uh, 
under the edging there. And we've already lost a yellow ball there yesterday and another one today. So I hope we don't have to go hunting for any more balls along that border. Good hoop by Luke there. So that and Luke has just run the hoop. That's hoop eight. Five three up to Luke. Five three to Luke. So Miles will want to get on top of this one. So he'll be first one at hoop nine. And it looks as if he's overshot by a teeny bit. I think it's still runnable from there, though. Yes, yeah, still runnable, but a fraction more than he'd like, perhaps. Luke is going deep. Luke coming up with blue. Yes, the sun is starting to come out now, so that's going to make it uh, much nicer for the players. Red's come up a little bit short. And uh, Luke is going to go for yellow here. Holds his hands quite low down on the mallet. Oh, he's jumping. Oh. He obviously couldn't see it. I thought. I'm not sure if that, that was what intended. Luke did a jump shot, jumped over nothing, and missed. I'm assuming he was trying to clear yellow, was he? He was. But uh, he missed yellow. And yellow is a bit angled, but uh, Miles is going to have a go for the hoop. Just wriggling his feet. No, it was probably just a bit too angled and the hoop has rejected yellow. So it was brave, but I think that opens the way for blue, doesn't it? And blue yeah. has now got a, a nice straight shot. So Luke will have a go at this. So it makes this has got good control of the game and six three up. No, never a rejection. No. Another rejection on the ball. So yeah, they had struggled from that distance. Yes, well I thought that blue had a nice shot there. He was quite he was a yard or two out, but Absolutely runnable. But um, so red is now clearing blue, leaving yellow in front of the hoop. Yellow looks jawsable from here. So yellow does, so but I think uh, black will have a go at clearing yellow. Black is on the boundary, so it's a seven-yard shot. And, well, Luke has... He did touch yellow, but it's black that has gone over to the west boundary instead of yellow, leaving uh, Miles with a hoop shot, which he's going to take with his yellow ball. So Miles lining up for this. Luke will be disappointed in that shot. So Miles getting ready. And no, he didn't run the hoop and the clip jumped off, but he's still got a hoop position. So Luke is just bringing blue up behind yellow. I thought he might have gone for yellow there. I thought he might have gone for yellow there too, because it's only seven yards. and uh, It's a lot better than 20 yards, <laughs> which well, is going to have to be his next yes. <laughs> so Miles is just bringing red up. So red and yellow and blue are all in front of the hoop. And Luke is on the west boundary. Luke really has to hit yellow. And he misses through to corner four. I don't quite know why uh, Black didn't clear yellow when he had a chance. So instead of just coming up, I thought he might want to clear yellow because yellow's now got a shot. Doesn't have a tight angle though, so maybe he's going for the jaws here or is... We'll see. 
No, he's going for no, the No, he's, he's going to try it. Now we're going to see another rejection. I hope not, but the hoops no. are tight. We do see another rejection. It was a bit angled, but I would have thought that he... Players of this calibre can very often make those angled hoops. So now he's left it open for uh, for blue, and blue has cleared red. That's an excellent stop shot. It leaves black the chance of clearing yellow. Yes, so red is now down by hoop three, and yellow and blue now in front of the hoop. So black will have to clear yellow, won't he? Yes, he will. So black Same is on the boundary. Time, the one he didn't go for, but yes. Well, I don't know time. why he didn't do it last time. <laughs> Miles just so there is in. red coming back in. A bit deep. Luke takes his top off. And that is an important shot. Winds up. Launches and a good shot. Yes, that was a lovely shot from Luke. So yellow is now down by the penalty continuation spot on the west boundary. There's that power. So he's got, he's, he can hit it all the way across the lawn. They do, don't they? So yellow has just have to come back from there. Oh, I have to go for blue here. Blue, blue. Well, right blue has got a. Well, it's a, it's a long one, from the west boundary to hoop four. So Miles getting his shot ready. Here he goes. And yellow has missed blue completely, and yellow is now on the west boundary, leaving. Well, maybe. Blue to run the hoop. Yes, it looks like an easy hoop. So Luke is just testing the hoop to see how firm it is. This will make a six three, and we'll try and can do a controlled hoop all the way down to the next one. And he's done it well. And that is lovely. He's managed to get most of the way down to the next hoop. Miles and a swing, the red ball comes over again from lawn two. Surely that's Mikey again. Oh, yes, it, it is. is. Yes, that's Mikey again. The red ball uh, just hopping the boundary there and turning up on, on lawn one. And somebody is rescuing it and sending it back to lawn two. So red ball has got a good position in front of hoop ten. Black coming up has also got a really good shot. And now Miles is sending yellow down. Now so they all have he's a. He's got two options here. He's going to have a stop shot yellow. We'll go for red. He's going to go for the first one. Stop shot yellow and stay in front of the hoop. Hit yellow to the boundary, which he's done very well. Yellow to the boundary. Yes, lovely shot. Oh, yellow has now hopped the boundary and has gone on to lawn two. He has left both his balls close together, though, so it gives Miles the option of a cannon here, black onto blue. Well, yes, but do you find in this shot normally the front ball goes sideways and the back one doesn't move it can if you do. don't get the shot completely straight? That's the way he's done. Yes, so he did do it here. Uh, red hit black, black hit blue, and blue has gone off to the boundary. But fortunately, black stayed. Yes, black where stayed it was in contact. And has given Luke the chance for the game. So this would be a very quick game, wouldn't it? No, and it Luke has made the hoop. Very well played, Luke. <laughs> so Luke has won that game very easily, 7-3 against Miles. Yes. So that's a really good game from Luke. He played all those shots very nicely, didn't he? Yes, he's improved a lot over this course of this tournament. <laughs> yes. So, no, that's uh, really well done. Be the a uh, short break now, will it? And then before the next big game between uh, Josh Winter and Levi Franks? I assume so. 
Uh, Levi has just been on this lawn. Uh, it could be a so while may Levi put, is currently playing. Yes, well, they may put that on another lawn. I think Levi is still playing. Yeah, against Nathan. So we might have to wait for a while before that happens. How do you want, Mikey? Five one down. Five one. Oh, good. Well done. Yeah. So on lawn one, this game has finished, and it has finished with a result for Luke Franks <laughs> seven against Miles Duggan three. Luke Francis. Luke. Yeah. Luke. Luke. Where Francis. is it? Luke Francis? bit difficult to read the screen there sometimes because the sun's coming out and it's not as clear as it was, I think. So, yeah, so that's all wrapped up on Lawn 1. They're still going on Lawn 2 and Lawn 3. Uh, lawn 2's finished now. Mikey... Lawn... Oh, Lawn 2 has just finished. Mikey was 5-1 down against um, Pat and ended up coming back and winning 7-5. So it was a good comeback, even though we did see... So who won that one? Patrick? No, Mike. Mikey. Mike did. Mikey, Mikey. did. Mikey Lauer. So they're just having a chat over there on the boundary. So I'll sit now for a while, I think. Well, yes, I think we're still live on the screen, aren't we? This is an opportunity that we can't pass on. Sport is about more than just the game. It's about going from teammates to best mates. It's the high fives and helping hands. That's why Caltex is proud to help fuel school sports. Funding is a real challenge. Uh, we know that a lot of schools face that ongoing and the reality is if you go to a lower decile school in New Zealand you are less likely to be able to afford to participate in sport. Obviously having come through it myself with kids and, and being one of those t kids myself who played sport, I know how much it defined who I was. And now being able to go, I can't fix it all, but we can help and try and give to those people who are going through really tough times. being trusted to get a better result for our clients since 1973. So sponsorship from New Zealand Carbon Farming has been fantastic for our sports teams actually who went away to tournament week. We're a community who's driven by sport but often money and, and the cost of travel, accommodation and uniform can be a, a barrier for some of our students and to come out with a, a new uniform for a number of sports, particularly our basketball teams have been away at Nationals has been uh, uplifting for the students and for our community. Uh, the support from Carbon Farming has been wonderful. Without them then we wouldn't look like this. <laughs>
So what's going on on Lawn 2 and Hello who's there. playing? We're on now. Oh. Just uh, switched over to Lawn 2 while nothing's happening on Lawn 1 for the time being. And we are covering the game of the two young ladies who are in the tournament. Jessica Bullen and so is, uh, Matty and Matty. Matty is from Auckland and she hasn't been playing for very long but she just loves it. She's down to a free handicap though, so she's come down very quickly. And in the situation in the game, uh, we're on hoop four, and it's so far it's 2-1 to Matty. And Matty's just coming in, rolling into hoop four. Jessica's uh, going to place right in front of the hoop, I think, here. Yeah. Matty only started playing in uh, 2019 and she was introduced to it in a school phys ed class which is really good to know that the schools are including croquet in their curriculum. Jessica's going a little bit longer, she didn't really like croquet at first but then she was uh, roped into it because she hadn't had no choice really because uh, all the rest of the family <laughs> were playing it. Well it's either play or get left out isn't it? Yeah. Now, Maddie unfortunately put red almost in the jaws. But Jess has done really well, actually, with her croquet, hasn't she? And she's played in some important tournaments, both here and overseas, hasn't she? She has. In the Women's Worlds last year in August in England. She's missed out on the invitations this year due to um, work commitments. So uh, what does she do during the rest of her time when she's not playing croquet? Well, she's been a typical teenage girl, hangs out with all her friends. She's now at uni and also doing part-time work, so that feels uh -huh. like a lot of her time. What's she studying at university? Oh. Well, so a few times. So sociology is one of the subjects, mm -hmm. global economics, and a couple of others who I tend to forget. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, the first year. Is that stuck in the jaws there? I think that's red in the jaws. It hasn't quite gone through, has it? So Matty's going to try and get it read it out. It's a good angle to get this one out. It's on the side. Looks like it. Matty may have to sacrifice black a bit because it may go a bit too far and not stay in touch with the hoop. Yeah, yes, a that's a good clearance on red. Nice shot from Matty. Yeah, we'll just go back in front. One of the highlights of Matty's career so far has been playing in the uh, under-21s last year and also playing in the women's uh, national and the women's invitation. Just blues come in tight to the hoop. That's a good shot. It is interesting to note that Matty thinks that she is about the only female under-21 player in the Auckland area. Which is quite sad, really, if that's the case. Yes, interesting to note that. Jessica's done a good um, block on black to yellow. I think the hoop's open to yellow. So Manny will have to hit red onto yellow here. So Matty is 2-1 up at the moment. So Jessica needs this hoop. Slightly uh, missed to the right. So Matty was trying for a clearance there, but she's just missed it. So this will give uh, Jessica a chance to to get hoop four, and she does. So yellow has run hoop four, so that is now uh, four three. Two two. Two. Sorry, where are we? Two two. Two is. two. Two all. So Matty is the first one to go to hoop five, and it looks as if she's overrun it a little bit. Yep. Black's offside, so yeah, um, Jessica's just telling her to take it. Yeah, so black the, is offside, so it will go to the the penalty continuation spot. Jessica going deep. 
I haven't put it in close for blue to clear. Manny will just come in. So near Matty's blue. Matty's now just in front of the hoop. coming back from the penalty spot. It's slightly hard again. Yeah. It's just a little bit hard. So it's gone past the hoop. Jess is going to maybe a bit too close to blue. Leaves blue potentially stop shot unless Manny decides to go for the jaws here. Like she did on hoop one, which we never saw. Well, she's thinking about this one. No, she's going for the clearance. No, mm -hmm. she's not. She's yes, changing she her mind. Yes, she is. She's changed her mind back again. Yes, she's clearing yellow. Now, it does give Jessica the potential to go for the hoop here. It's a bit of a long shot. We're just going to stop shot blue. Yes, that's front. what I would have done, stop shot yeah, blue. Because it was just too long to go with the hoop, for the hoop with blue <coughs> lurking around there and black lurking there as well. So blue has now gone up to almost back to hoop three, actually. So Matty is now looking at uh, clearing, clearing red. red. That's a good shot. Which she's done. So let's start this hoop all over again, shall we? There's no balls anywhere near it. Yellow is just coming up to try and get a position. And looks that good. looks pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. Nice position from Jessica there. So Matty is making a comeback from down by hoop three. And she looks as if she's just a little bit short. Red comes in. And I think yellow got such a good position because she was first at the hoop. So unless black can do something about it, and I think... Uh, I think yellow's open here, so I think she'll be going for yellow. Um, so red's in a good position, but I don't think red's quite got a block on black, has it? No. I think yellow is open. But even so, it's uh, from the south boundary to hoop five, which is... Uh, and she's and she it. got good it job. too. Nice shot from Matty. I watched Matty playing yesterday, and uh, she was actually a bit nervous, <laughs> as you are on day one of the singles. But I think she's um, survived the first day, and she's playing well now. Just going for the clearance that was option. The yep, that was putting it back in. And she's missed. And she's missed it. So Jessica misses the blue ball. What sort of mallet does uh, Jessica, Jessica play with? Play it's with? a Terminator. It's a Terminator, yeah. is it? She's been playing with it for uh, oh, three or four years now. Mm -hmm. I play with a Terminator myself. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've noticed a variety of mallets around the place. Um, there are a couple of coal mallets from Australia. And Matty does a nice clearance on the red ball. Blue just went a bit too yes. far away. Unfortunately, blue has now ended up on the south boundary. So red is just going to make a comeback and gets a nice position, just about dead in front and about yard, two yards out. And he comes in, which will mean she will have to clear red with blue now. Jessica might try a block or just come back in. You don't want to get too close to red, just in case you hamper it for its hoop around position. No, it's going to the That's side. a nice shot from Jessica. So black, red and yellow are all by the hoop and blue is coming in now. Matty is just lining it up from the south boundary. Now Matty casts and then puts her mallet down behind the ball. And she's hit it again. Good and shot. she cleared red, so nice shot from Matty. Only problem is her own blue ball is now north of hoop six, so it's gone quite a long way. Jessica's trying to clear black here. 
to leave yellow open. Yes, I, th I think Matty would have preferred it if her ball had stayed She connected, in touch. but only moved black a couple yes. of yards. Well, Jessica did touch black, but uh, really only just uh, got an edge on it, didn't she? Yeah. Which leaves so a good opportunity for Matty to stop shot yellow so and keep black in front. Yes, so nice stop shot from Matty, perhaps, and get rid of yellow. These are important shots that he's had to try and stay in control of the hoop. Mm, black went off to the I'm side I'm not again. sure if that's quite what she wanted. She would no. have preferred black to stay in touch with the hoop, but instead black's gone down to the boundary. And Yellow has just made a comeback, and Jessica has got a nice position in front of hoop five with Yellow. I'm sure me and Matty will have to do another clearance. Well, clearance. unfortunately, Matty's blue ball is uh, up near the north boundary, so this is this is going to be a long clearance. Well, when we clearance, we'll just bring this in and clear with Black. Well, Black is down on the south boundary. Yeah. Potentially a double as and well. And Red is over by corner one. Maddie comes back in. She's come it. a bit deep. Yeah. She's gone a bit further than she wanted to. And here's Red coming in from corner two. And Red and Yellow have both got reasonable hoop positions now. So Black from the south boundary will have to come in and do something about them. We'll be trying to clear Yellow, but there mm -hmm. is a I can't see from here, but there is a potential double here maybe. So there's always a chance. Mm, maybe. Through. It's a bit difficult to see from this angle, but there could well be a double in it for her, and so she can clear both at once. Well, she has but hit the last two from the distance. So yes, but yellow is the one she needs to go for. And she, and and she gets oh, stuck in the jaws. What a so shot. Matty has not only cleared yellow, but black has arrived in the jaws. Great shot. And that was really nice. Sometimes you wonder if it's skill or luck. For me, it's no, mostly it's luck. Skill. No, I <laughs> you reckon it's skill? Well, not in the jaws, but she's, <laughs> you, know, you, you reap that the was rewards a, of a good shot there. That was a very nice shot. So Jessica has got to do something about that. Trying to go back through the hoop and clear black. Uh, and she bounce. hasn't. Yellow has bounced off the upright, so black is in the jaws. And I don't think blue is in any position to, to move it either. Well, Manny's got a choice there. She can try and hit black through the hoop, or she can try and clear red, but the disadvantage of that, you might hit red in front of hoop five and give Jessica a clearance. No, I, I don't think she wants to do that. I think, I think she, she should. a safer option trying to yes. hit black through here. She wants to clear, clear well, well clear of red. She and does. she has. Shot. Lovely shot from Matty. And, and black all the way down to And hoop both six. blue and black are now off towards hoop six. 3-2 to Matty. So she's got a good head start there. Very nicely so done. So Red is joining them. Oh, Jessica clipped the peg there in the middle. Yes, Red hit the peg and has gone off a little bit sideways. Gives Matty a free shot of the hoop or is she just going to put it in front? I think she's going to go, no, put it in front. She's just going to play safe. Mm, I think that side. may have gone a little bit past. So black and blue, both firmly by the hoop. So Jessica with red coming in slightly from the side. See for where I am. I got a cameraman in my angling straight in front of me. Yes, me too. The, the crane camera is between us and six hoop six at the moment, so we can't really see what's going on. Matty is going to hit black and probably get rid of red. Yes, she did. Good stop shot. So red has now gone down back to hoop five and may be hampered by the hoop there in the next shot. Do you think that red might be a bit hampered? No, I don't think so. It's yellow to play anyway, so... Yes, and yellow has just got blue. rid of black. Blue, rather. Because blue was in front of the hoop.
Oh, slightly hampered red. Yes, I so thought it might be a little bit hampered. Down. Yes. So red has come back down. And so Matty playing black is just going for a position. Lawn three has just finished. Game between Levi and Nathan. We'll just find out the score as they walk by us. Score. Who won that one? Ah, so it looks as if Levi has won the game on lawn three. Seven five. So Levi is playing really well because he uh, won his first game this morning as well. He's only lost one game this tournament so far. No, he's playing very well. Singles, and that was two. Okay, Mikey. so so Jessica has just come in with yellow, tried to do a clearance and missed it. So yellow is now uh, near hoop one. We will be going back to lawn one. And probably mm -hmm. in about five minutes, which we think is the game between Levi and Josh. And we'll give yes, you an update. Yes, it will be between Levi and Josh. As it goes on. So it's still um, three two to Matty here. Not sure what Jessica's got on here. Can't, still can't see him very much. Yes, well, I think that blue and red are either touching or pretty close. Okay, so red has gone down on the north side of hoop six, leaving both black and blue together by the hoop. And I think Matty has just put in a block for yellow so that blue will be able to run the hoop next time. And the block did its job. So the block hit black that Matty put there specially. And pushed black over to hoop and seven as well. Yes, it did rather, didn't it? So fingers crossed Matty can run the hoop. And Matty runs the hoop with blue, which puts her well in the lead now, doesn't it? 4-2. That makes the score 4-2 to Matty. But Jessica has the first chance of getting in front of hoop 7. Matty's taking her, tap off, her top off. It's getting a bit warmer out there now. In fact, I can't actually see hoop. Yeah, I can see it from here. So <laughs> I can't so because Matthew, the camera's Matthew's in the way. <laughs> <coughs> Jessica comes in, puts it in front. Matty comes in as well. So she did the right thing by putting black deep. So forces Jessica to. It looks as if yellow has got laundry. a. Oh. It looks as if yellow's got a, a good hoop shot there. He decides to go for blue, not black, which leaves black an opportunity for the hoop here, I think. Or if not for the hoop, a chance to get rid of yellow. Yeah. I think she's deciding to go for the hoop. Looks like it, doesn't it? Nope, no, no, and it bounced side. off the upright, and it's gone off the side. So that leaves yellow, perhaps, with a hoop shot. Black has now gone down by the peg. Jessica's lining it up. Shuffles towards it. And no, rejected. Bounced out. There have been quite a lot of rejections of balls by hoops. But the, holes, the hoops are set tight. But um, people are having a few problems with them. OK, so there's red coming in to join yellow by the hoop. And nudged yellow out a bit, so... Black coming out. So 
Might be a little bit hampered here. I'm not sure if she's wearing up it's trying to go in the jaws or hips. Yes, there's a bit of discussion here. Matty with one hand on the hips. Waiting to see what's going to happen. Going for a snuggle, maybe. No, she promoted red. Matty's going to clear red here by the looks of it. We're quite a distance from um, lawn two. Yep, clears red. Yes, so red is now heading off down to <laughs> almost in front of hoop eight, which would be a lovely position if they'd run hoop seven, but they haven't. So red just has to go back up again. Well, you're going to have to clear blacks in front of the hoop, so it's going to have to clear black. If it's open, I think it is. So she's going for it's a long clearance. Long clearance, yeah. Winding up. No, just and to she the left. Uh, she misses black to the left, so this gives Matty a chance. No, it ah. back. And the ball got rejected. So that was a chance for Matty. Here's another chance for Jessica here. Slightly angled, though. All right. <laughs> no, it rejected again. Oh, dear. So that was um, Jessica having a chance at the hoop with yellow, and the hoop rejected it again. Matty's bringing blue up to the hoop. So we've got uh, blue and black and yellow all in front of the hoop. Jessica's probably going for a clearance on black here, I'd say. Oh, she's got black and also she nudged yellow, which ended up in the jaws of the hoop. So that was a bit fortuitous. I will get away with it. Well, sometimes you just get lucky. So yellow is now in the jaws, and I don't think... Um, now, Maddie's trying to clear yellow that's in the jaws. It's open, half open. No, she, no, missed, it, she missed it. So it looks as if this will be a hoop for Jessica. So she made the hoop and tried to run it all the way down to hoop eight. Which she has. So yes. yellow has run the hoop. And yes, hoop eight, she's gone a bit sideways and a bit past it, I think. That's four free to Matty. And Blue has come down as well and again gone just past the hoop. Oh, no, she hasn't. There's the hoop. Oh, Red's got a lovely position in front of hoop eight now. And Matty is just sending blue to, uh, Black down to the hoop as well. Jessica will be looking to clear blue here to the boundary. Although the boundary, uh, she's clearing clearing blue to the short boundary. She's got both balls. So oh. That's a bonus. I, I think she was aiming for blue, but I ended up getting both. That gives Maddie yes. a shorter chance. Yes, I was just, yes, just going to say red. that um, the boundary is over, over only seven yards away, that short boundary. <sighs> oh, it's Maddie was, I think she was trying to nick red, but I think she may have... She touched red, but put reds in front of the hoop. But yes, she's improved red's position, in fact, which is not what she wanted. On the positive side, Maddie is on side for hoop nine. Well, yes, <laughs> there is, is that. <laughs> and it is um, on the boundary. So Jessica has got to make a decision here whether to just make the hoop or not. I think she will. Why not? A hoop's just a hoop. Black's in a position to clear it if she doesn't. Yep. Maybe stick it in the jaws to force Blue to come back. 
Well, if she doesn't try for the this hoop... what she's trying to do, yes. Black would clear her, and if she goes into the jaws too far, then Black will also clear her. Yeah, she's taking the gamble there, but I think I would have done the same. So she's tried to put it into a position where Black won't be able to do anything, but it won't stop Matty from giving it a go. No, no missed. so that was a cunning idea of Jessica's. Black has missed it. Now, do you think she'll use yellow to push right, red through, yeah, no, or will she just right, come no, up? just put a block, if, if she can, to stop blue having a go at red. I'm not sure if she's got a block or not, no. because black is hiding behind the black uh, drainage yeah, uh, it's open, pipe for us, so we can't halfway. see. It's probably the right thing to do there too. Just concede the hoop and move on. But now Maddie is okay. offside, so it's got to go all the way to the other side. Okay, so Maddie's black is offside. Jessica's just run the hoop. And now they'll go over to hoop nine. For all. For all. So Maddie's lost her lead and Jessica's had a bit of a comeback. All to play for. So Matty's taking her ball over to the penalty continuation spot over on the west boundary. That's a lovely shot. And Black has just come distance. in. Yes, that is a beautiful shot from that distance. Forces just uh, maybe not clear with this one, but forces clear with one of the two balls. She's going to put this in front. It's a little bit short. Not a bad shot from both of them. So black and yellow in front of hoop nine and blue just coming up. When we turn over to hoop. To lawn one round, I wouldn't mind a break. Just come get me. So Maddie's going for so stop shot on yellow. Maddie going for yellow. Rather than going for the hoop. She did have a good shot on the hoop, but with yellow lurking around, she couldn't take any chances. Yeah, taking the safety option. Yes, yeah, so sometimes safer to clear than to actually try the hoop. Yellow just comes back so in. So yellow ball just coming deep. back in. It's gone no, a little fine. bit deep and a little bit far, perhaps. Yeah, Still wandering on. Now Maddie's going for the jaws, looks like here. And she's got, and it. She's got it. So blue is now in the jaws of hoop nine. But red is there, so I don't know if blue is far enough in the jaws to stop red getting her out. I think she might be safe there. But on the other hand, you're never safe until you actually threw the hoop. <laughs> Even if you're sitting in the jaws, somebody will come along. Yeah, good shot. Yes, exactly like that. And now Red has a hoop position. And Jessica managed to bounce Blue out of the jaws. Black's going to clear Red here. Well, we'll leave. So Jessica Black has cleared Red here, back to the boundary. Oh, no, it's going, once again, going for the safer option. Yes. Jessica's yellow will now try and clear blue because blue has a hoop shot and blue plays next. Yes, nice shot from Jessica. Yellow has stayed in touch and blue is now on the far side of hoop five. We're not far off uh, starting the game on lawn one by the looks of it. Ah, okay. So if they're starting lawn one... Um, we're watching Lawn 2 at the moment, but if the game starts on Lawn 1, we will switch over to watch Lawn 1. And we'll keep you updated on what's happening on Lawn 2. They're just having the toss on Lawn 1. So on Lawn 2, Jessica is bringing her red ball in. She's going to try and clear black. Which she does. Yes. And black bangs into yellow at the same time. So Matty is just bringing black up in front of the hoop. 
together with her yellow ball, with her blue ball. So Jessica is going to try and do something about blue because blue's got a hoop shot and blue plays next, so yellow is going to try and clear it. That's Which she does. Nice shot from Jessica. We're now switching over to lawn one. Okay, we're now switching over to lawn one. So, uh, Janet's going to be relieved by Callum. Yes, so Callum is taking over, which leaves you with Brian Bullen and Callum McKinnon as your commentators. So how are you laughing, me? Welcome, Callum. <coughs> Thank you, Brian. Kia ora, kia ora. Got my tea here, it's gone cold after watching that game. <laughs> So we're now commentating the game between Josh Winter and Levi Franks and based on current results they're th sitting in first and second place equally in the block. Uh, Josh is blue and black, Levi red and yellow. <coughs> Three balls that look like in front of the hoop so far, in comes the fourth. Looks like blue to take red is the obvious choice. Now, would you have hit that that hard, Brian? Or would you? Um, yeah, probably. I would have tried to. I don't know. Josh pinpointed a spot there to try and block red from hitting black. So black could have had a go of the hoop. I think of, um, maybe he's a bit angled, Josh, so Levi's just going to come back in tight. Yep. No, he does have a shot of the hoop. Josh chooses to take on the angled hoops. Lots of players have been struggling with these hoops over this tournament. It's an interesting decision. And there's another one. They have been so hard to get right. Mm -hmm. That's left um, Levi with clear and black here. Got to be careful he doesn't hit on the side and not black in. I don't expect him to, though. Mm. That was a good shot. Very close to going for an in off from there. Didn't quite have the angle on black that he might have wanted. Josh is weighing up his options here to come deep, maybe, or stop shot red. It's going for the deep, deep option. And both of these players come from Cashmere Croquet Club, both of them coming through the ranks at exactly the same time. It's Played each other a number of occasions, I'd say, just yeah. in practice and in tournaments. Not sure what the score is between them two, but I'm not sure they're counting either, but I'm sure they've both won at different times. Yeah. Obviously consecutive years of national champions in this game. I believe it's the 21 and 22? Yep. I expect this to be a very tactical game. Yeah. So why is he positioning quite deep there, Brian? Oh, he doesn't want to give Yellow a chance to stop shot black and just keep in front of the hoop, so he's probably going to hit blue to the boundary here, yeah. which might, he probably had on the side so Josh doesn't have a shot from the boundary. Yeah. He's usually very good at these shots and that's what he's oh, done. That's a great and shot. Force Yellow to the boundary as well. You notice these players will look a lot closer at their cuts and yeah. where their balls got hit, their opponent balls. And they pinpoint where they're going to hit. <coughs> yeah. To try and gain any small advantage they can. Now, I'm not sure where Red positioned in front of the hoop there. Hard to tell from this angle. Looks a little bit to the side, probably jawsable, but not quite a runnable hoop position.
So just still weighing up his options. Maybe thinking of a jump. Maybe too early in this game to try that though. It is the jump shot. Very aggressive option early. Yeah, and he missed to the left. He might have thought that was the only option he had from where, where Reb's positioned. Yeah. Levi asking Josh if he wants an umpire to watch this, but Josh realising that... Levi going in the jaws. Yeah. Yeah, depending on how far he gets, he's done well there. He's got half the ball through. Which Josh has decided... No, I don't want a part of this, so he's going halfway. I'm thinking of the next two ball ready. Both players are on eight each. Thank you. Oh, yeah. That just the manager there um, <coughs> announcing to us that both players are on eight wins each. So both sitting at the top of the block. They do have to play each other again yep. later on. So... This, whoever wins this will give them a bit of a head start, but the other players are capable of beating these two, so every game's crucial at this stage. I've seen young Mikey Lauer beat both of these people in the block so far. And Josh is going for red. Don't think he likes it? No. no not quite. So Red now having the shot to go through the hoop and get position onto hoop two. She looks to have done very well. Yeah. And that's why Josh put his ball black ball there, it's just in case he nudged black and stopped him going down to the next hoop. But it didn't quite work out. Josh decides to put the pressure on and Goes close, good shot. Eva will get close to black. Try not to hamper himself from clearing it. Yep. That's a good shot too. So if you're Josh here, do you consider the roke or do you just go for position? No, I just go for position and then try and clear yellow with black. That's a good shot too. Great shot. Lots of good positioning on this one. Players have probably gotten used to the lawns by the th third or fourth round. As you can see, Levi, Levi is trying a position here where I think he's, he can uh, wire. I don't think he's actually doing that. I think what he's doing is he's going to take the black ball and he's going to try cut it on the right hand side and flick his ball all the way over to hoop three preparing for the next hoop and being on side while he does that Ooh, that's a bit of a gamble and both these players starting quite aggressively in their yeah, tactics is, yeah it's a good shot it comes off so now josh has to make it was trying to wire but it's, um, i think maybe that's open Josh has to make this return or okay. Yeah. Otherwise, Levi's in a great position for the next two. Well, any advantages they can get, they'll try and eke out, yeah. which is possible. But Josh is a good rogue, and there, oh. there it goes. Beautiful shot. Straight so through. Gamble that didn't pay off, but I can see why he did it. Yeah. We're playing these games to win the game, not just the hoop. That's right. Always think of the next hoop. So now pressure's on Levi. To well, yeah, maybe I'm thinking um, possibly he's still an advantage of hoop three with red, so he's yeah. thinking maybe he go for the hoop here. Mm. Well, two balls in front, he's got a pretty dead line down the middle. Yeah. It's worth a shot. I've seen him running from this distance before. Of course. Oh, oh, he did go for it and just bounced back. That was a good shot, though. 
Nice rejection there for Levi. Yes. Leaves might himself around. Might have stopped Blue going for the hoop. I think he might be in the way. Josh still has to try for it. Yellow haven't really got a shot well, on the Red's hoop. still on side though, so... But if the hoop's on, take it. Yeah. I think that's, that's their philosophy. Yeah. You'll hear it from all sorts of players. So Red now in a great position to... Go sit in front of hoop three, I'd assume. Yeah. He won't go for this. He'll just put it in front. Now, both of these players are extremely accurate shots. Um, and in that sense, the tactic then comes into play. You have to assume that your opposition is going to hit almost everything. That's a good position. Is he going to go with one ball or two ball? Probably just, I mean, he's going with two. He's going to go with black first. And as Josh does like himself from the short boundaries, so yeah, he's quite confident to have this and leave himself another okay should it not come off. Yep, nailed it right in the middle. Shot. And their bonus is black went to the boundary as well. Yeah. So yellow will come back in. Do you go tight here? Try to. It's uh, very hard to get so tight to that hoop, though. But you have to. Your option is to go into the boundary. That's a bit of a confidence shot, I think. Going to the boundary, you have to be relatively sure of your shooting from there. Yeah, he's going a little bit further back. Well, I think he's thinking, well, if blue goes in front, I'm going to clear with red. Yeah. Clear the danger ball. Yeah. Blue looking to aim for that wire through yellow. It doesn't look like it's quite come off, unfortunately. Be a bit of a shootout here. You'll see him on this hoop for quite a while, I think. Yeah. That's a good shot. Yeah. This now. Now black will clear yellow. And back to square one again. Nice reset at the hoop and hopefully stick around after clearing this ball. Now will you do this half pace with your three quarter pace? I'd probably do it around three-quarter pace and uh, obviously you're trying to get it as accurate as possible to hit it dead in the centre, but um, three-quarter pace and just get... Oh, oh missed it. I was fine with those tubes there. They're always on your mind and they're just... They're not they're happy in a way, but they're, they're always in the back of your mind. Am I going to... My back's winning. Is it going to touch it or anything like that? Yeah. Yeah. No, but I... I I think at that shot, you're aiming to get yellow out of a position where it can run the hoop. Yeah. You don't necessarily need anything too much more than that. No, uh, good, good shot by Levi. Beautiful hoop run. 2-1 to Levi. And the black ball is offside. Levi making the choice to put him at the penalty spot. Rush as always, puts it in a great position, right in front. Kikarangi only sitting about a yard and a half out of out from the hoop. So now Levi, again, the pressure's on Levi to make this clearance with one of his balls. And he might have a double one of these two, so if he does, he might go for it. Looks like he's going to... Give he's it a go with the red ball. Yeah, he's got better position with red than he has with yellow, so... Ooh, Great shot. Beautiful. I notice with Levi's swing, he often keeps his head up when he's casting. Yeah. And then puts it down when he um, plays his shot. Do you think that's a 
standard way of doing it? Or? Yeah, well, if it works for Levi, you work what's best for yourself. But you can't argue with the way you broke out in the ball, can you? No. <laughs> Comes pretty straight off that mallet of his. Now Josh thinking, what thread shot on black like? Oh, he's thinking, no, I can't. Or maybe yellow's too close to black for to try and clear yellow. As such good shooters, do, they do like to clear the danger ball if possible. But I think you might just put this back in. Looking like it. He's oh. even trying to block, I think. The shot on the hoop. Obviously, with yellow hitting black towards that short boundary, um, create the shorter roque for Josh to work from, which I'm sure he would have some confidence in making if yeah. he needs to. Looks like Josh has hampered black from clearing yellow. So, Levi might come in here. And he is doing. Going in tight and nice. getting the spot. Good shot. Beautiful shot. Four ducks in a row there, I think. Uh, he's going to try the jump, maybe. He's thinking of it. He did one of these earlier in the game against Nathan and got it. Oh. Try it this time, but just bounce off the side of the hoop. He's so close to that blue ball to get it up that high so quickly. It's very yeah, impressive. very hard to do. Yeah. He's worked it down to a, a bit of a fine science there. I think that's just all the practice they've done in the past. They know they can do that shot from that distance. Confidence in your own ability. Of course, they used to run a YouTube channel where they do croquet trick shots. So their yep. jump shots are pretty phenomenal. Hit this on the side, I'd say, and get as much distance as possible. Corfi, Not quite. Corfi clearing the kikarangi and would you have gone for a wire on blue there if you could have tried for yeah, it? Yeah, if it was on I would have done. It's such good shooters, the wire is a good option. Blue going for red here in front of the hoop. Oh, missed. Just missed the feather ball there and leaves Levi essentially a two foot shot. Looks slightly more angled than. He might be able to get this through just far enough so he might be able to promote it with mm. yellow. So he'll go for a controlled hoop here. It's a good shot. He made it. Or he's going to just put it through enough so that use red as the clearing ball for the next hoop. Yeah. I've heard some people talk about there being an advantage of running hoop four and going over to hoop five is getting that seven and eight yard roque across. Would you agree with that at all? No, you'd have to be total control of hoop four. And I'd say yellow would have to be closer to hoop four as well. So you could be really, it's a hard shot to do and it doesn't come up very often. Yep. And, uh, it's not a percentage shot, I wouldn't have thought. You're better off doing what Levi's done. Well, he hasn't gone in front this time, but get in front to clear with red. Yep. It's only a seven, eight yarder. So Josh now in control of this hoop with two balls in front. And Levi left himself without a nine yard roque onto the pungo ball. Oh, cup high. Dead in the middle, but unfortunately. It hit black and black went on to Levi's other ball and knocked it a few yards away. So it was unfortunate, a good shot, but didn't quite work out for him. So we've just had word that in the game of Jessica Bullen against Maddie Clarkson, Matty's won that ho uh, game on the 13th hoop, so she's won that 7-6. So... 
I okay. believe that's her first win, so congratulations. Yeah, well played. I think that's Jessica's fourth 7 6 loss as well, so she won't be happy with that. Unfortunately, I don't think Jessica's having the tournament she really would like to have, especially given recent form. Levi clearing the black ball here. Yep, he's clearing the black. Shot. And he gets himself to go out on the south boundary, pretty much directly in front of hoop five. It's going to be tricky because blue can get real tight to hoop five. Which would mean Josh might have to do a long jump shot. We'll, we'll see what happens. That's Levi doing the long jump shot from the boundary. Levi just plays his core five Levi's ball back eye. in. Yeah. Josh weighing up his option does choose to go tight here. Has got the option of clearing black here and then doing a uh, jump shot with yellow. Which I think that's what probably what I choose to do. That is probably the percentage play here. Yeah. Rather than going for a 12 yard jump shot. Well, both of these players can pull this shot off when required. He's in going for blue because blue's slightly to the side of the hoop, is it? Might have a double here. Oh, no, no. to go for black. I would have much preferred that to hit a bit more central and send black quite a bit further. And Josh now was... Still going to give Levi a chance here, an angled shot. Yeah. Oh, that's a good shot. So Levi's chance now to come back across the lawn and clear the Kikarangi ball back out of the hoop. Potential for it and off. I think it'll just be going straight for the middle though here. Yeah. Oh. Went through the gap. Big thudder that hits the shelter over on the other side of the lawn. And this will be 3-2. And Josh trying to take control of the game here by running this under control and getting down to hoop six in a nice hoop running position. He's waiting for Levi to put his ball in market because there's potentially a um, wire from red if he can control it really well. Well, red is an onside, onside ball after coming off the yeah. black. Yeah. And he's done it. Beautiful shot. So when you're going for shots like that, are you first thinking about running the hoop or are you first thinking about the power that you're going through with? Oh, the power. Oh, oh yeah, you want the power, I'd say. When it's that close, thinking about the power so you control it, you've got to know how the ball reacts going through these hoops, though. Especially with them being as tight as they yeah. are at the moment. Both of these players... Um, probably not playing as much, but playing some association croquet and having, therefore, great hoop control. I think they're both scratch players in association croquet as well, which is quite impressive given their prowess at this level of the game. So Levi going for blue here. Oh, hit his own ball away. Not what he wanted. 
makes an easy option now for Josh. What happens? Stop shot and yellow away just to get over the hoop. Yeah. And you see Levi over on the other side of the lawn looking down at his mallard and looking down at that kind of thing. You start to think the pressure might be creeping in and getting to him, so hopefully he can compose himself. For oh. Did he miss it? He hasn't got it. No. It's come off that right wire of the hoop, it looks. Wasn't expecting that. Levi now getting to play back in with his red ball. Yeah, do you try and wire it from black here? Um, Would you go deep? I'd probably go deep here, I think. Putting yourself, giving yourself a ball in front of the hoop is... Yeah, it's hard to pinpoint a wire from here, so... Yep. It looks like he might have... I would argue mm. that's possibly a bit short. Yeah, not deep enough, I don't think. Josh now... Ooh, choosing to... Yeah, trying to come block. in. And why do you think he would have done that instead of taking the red ball? I don't know, because he's going to get cleared. <laughs> so <laughs> I thought... The best option would have been to clear red there. And obviously, probably trying to clear it in the centre of the ball and stick around. I think Josh has confidence. It's a different approach. Trying something yeah. different. Going for the block instead. Mm. But the, the pressure play option rather than the, the arguably the percentage play. That's going to hit us on the right right side. Yep. So the it would be nicer if he hit it on the left side, but that was too risky because he might have put black into the jaws. Yeah. You really don't want to rush peel your opponent at this no. level of the game and give them the first shot across. No. So Pungo now having the shot on the core fire ball. If he gets this, he leaves the Kikarangi ball right in the middle of the lawn. Love smack bang in the middle. Great shot. Great distance too. And the Pongo ball then sits right up by the tier, the centre peg. And you would argue Josh now once again has control of his hoop. Yeah. He has two balls within striking distance. Another long distance shot here from Levi, yellow to blue. Bubbles of it. Mm. It will mean he'll be offside as well if Josh makes this. Now, will he be thinking of what happened last time? You'd assume there'd be a little bit of that. Same thing. position. Yeah. Sitting around in his head. He's a bit more straight on this time, so. Yeah, yeah. nailed it. Beautifully run. So, he's caught, caught back and it's now 3-3. Three, 3-3. Three. Three, three. Level game going into the turn. What's your thought processes? You go... Turn around and go on to hoop seven. If you're three three. Oh three three. Um you mean position wise? Yeah. Just do what Levi did. Yeah. <laughs> Just put him in front. Yeah. Kind of standard position and force Josh to then Yeah. Take on the long shot. I always think it's better to put the pressure on the opposition to clear rather than you clearing. Yep. Could have gone deep. And put uh, the second ball in. I think that gives you a long long shot from the boundary potentially. I, think <coughs> I like to put pressure on the opposition. Yeah, I think there I'm going as tight as I can confidently position. Just 
really putting piling the pressure on and making it feel like if they miss this shot they lose their hoop. He's gone for the long one. Yeah, I suppose it is a free shot in some ways. Just gets himself to the short boundary. Yeah. Levi into position with his next ball as well. You expect this game to be a 7 5, 7 6. It's so evenly matched. You look at their world ranking and their handicap and their head to head over time, I'm sure it's very even. Yeah, very, very close between these two. And obviously both of them arguably being the favourites coming into this tournament, having won the last two editions of it. Oh. Yep, good shot. Right in the middle. And again, Josh now has two balls on the short boundary, and knowing Josh and the way he shoots, he'll probably be fairly confident with hitting whatever <laughs> Levi puts in here. So you always think there, why why didn't I put black in and then clear red like that, force red to clear black? You're so just maybe not backing yourself 100%. Yeah, that's where the, the confidence play comes in and both of these players have every right to be extremely confident with how they play the game. And Sometimes it just comes down to what you feel is the right choice in the right moment. Yeah. I know watching back some of my results from the doubles, sometimes what you feel like might be the, the percentage play is well away from what you actually should have been doing. <laughs> Levi would probably go deep here. Yep. Maybe him straight to the boundary. Oh. Looks okay. fairly tight. So blue should just play in here. Red's roquet on black is only going to send him another three or four yards. And Kikarangi comes in and sits nice and tight within about a yard and a half from the hoop. Levi so just going to clear blue here. Or hit black to the boundary. Looking at the wall. He's going to take the danger ball here. Yeah. He's playing the patient game here. a good shot. Is any one over game going on in the minutes down on lawn three is it or for lawn four between Nathan and James? The rest are probably having their the lunch time. Yeah. And again that should be a relatively close game. James Duggan's been playing exceptionally well today. But Nathan obviously has the ability to beat anyone here. Well, he's had Josh and Levi this morning in his first two games. I think there was 7-5, seven, 7-5. Five, seven, five. Yeah, games so like I think those. he's happy the way he's been playing. That's good. Games like those come down to fine margins, and you look back and you might think it's one shot that you might have missed, but it's all about holding your head and holding that consistency. So Josh now looking at what Levi's shot with yellow is through the hoop. Looks like he's coming in tight. No, no it looks to be it. taking the shot on yellow. He's <coughs> a bit worried Levi's red ball will clear black down to corner four and it's not a bad shot. Half clearance. Red will clear black. Look for a good stop shot and keep Right in front of the hoop. Levi's very good at these shots. Hits them nice and central. He does, and firm. He takes the sting out of it. Great shot. Good shot, slightly off, but still a very good shot. Holds himself around the hoop and is 
close to a reset. Red's probably going to make a rokay on the next turn. So black's relatively so safe to come back in. Yeah, will he go close and get pushed to the short boundary or will he go deep? I would be going deep, yeah, I think. Get yourself having that short boundary being the north boundary and hopefully leaving yourself a shot if required. Yeah. He looks like he's going deep be straight to the boundary. Yeah, mitigating that shot and just leaving himself where no one can touch him. Yeah, I'll come in tight, hopefully blocking black from the hoop. Looks to have just rolled off a bit. It does get a bit quicker along that. Could be a good line though. Yeah, along that hoop two, hoop three area, there's a bit of a dry patch on this lawn, which seems to Ooh, speed up. That's interesting. Blue's just nudged yellow. Levi having a look at is his shot at the hoop hampered. I think it is. But it's also hampered black from clear and yellow maybe too. So he's gonna come in tight and block black. Now, what's your shot if you're Josh here? Let me see. Well, Josh likes to jump, so uh, he might try a jump here. Yeah. I don't think he can hit blue onto yellow because yellow is just going to go somewhere. It's definitely not a jump shot. Uh, maybe, he's got, maybe he's got a shot of the hoop. Maybe he's got enough of yellow he can see. Yeah. Nudge it out of the way. Now I see it as a problem. Unlucky. Was he looking at the yellow there? Well, I or think was he jump might be a better option for Josh there. Looks like he was looking at half the yellow ball he had yeah. to see and just a little bit off inches and makes all the difference sometimes. Oh, that was a result of his previous shot when he got too close to yellow. Do you notice there's a snowball effect in golf croquet where you have one turn that might not go exactly right and then it kind of. Yeah. So Levi going for this, make it four three. Pressure's off on the shot. Two balls in front. Oh no! Good rejection though. Still in front of the hoop, which means Josh has to do two good row okay's here. Blue trying to clear red. Got the first Good one. Good shot. And his blue ball pings off to the north boundary in a fairly good position. Have a look at the hoop on the next time if required. Maybe trying to block here. Back to yellow. Assuming if you're Levi, that last hoop shot's still rigging around in your head a little bit. Yeah. You look at the yellow shot. Here comes number two. Not this time. It goes off. All the way down to hoop three and lawn two. And Levi lines up the hoop shot with the yellow ball. This will be here fairly firmly, I'd say. Yep, never a rejection though. So if you're lining up that yellow ball, knowing that you've just missed the red one, what's your thought process as you line it up and try to reset? Yeah, you got to try and get out of your head, which I think they do most of the time. But because there has been a lot of rejections in these t in this tournament, it's hard from that distance. 
I need to try and get a, yeah, a closer like where Red is now to feel really comfortable about making the hoop. The extra yard has, you know, played on people's minds over this tournament. They're always thinking of trying to get down to the next hoop. Maybe sometimes you've got to think, well, let's just make the hoop rather than trying to slam it through and get down to the next one. This game is about making hoops, so yeah. No point trying to do anything unless you can do that in the first place. So who would you say would be in the favourable position at this point of the game? Oh, even Stevens. I wouldn't like to say who's going to win it, but I'd say after those couple of rejections, maybe Josh is soon and confident. Both are okay and well. Yeah, Josh was able to reset after that missed Hooper, Hoop 6. and Maybe one of those games where it comes down to one great shot or one error. One bit of luck. Yeah, you hate to say it, but this game does sometimes come down to what way a ball flicks off another. hope it doesn't go to time and then we have that situation where we had in that first game between Levi and James well, bit of a horrible situation there is mm. a great game that came down to a very much a technicality so Josh choosing playing nice and tight Levi can't really clear that black ball very much well, much further than Corner, yeah, corner. But he does look like he's aiming for it. Maybe he's going for the snuggle. Snuggle here, yeah. Yeah, he is. You being a proprietor of the snuggle, I am. I prefer a bit closer, the distance-wise, for snuggle rather than that, because things can go wrong. Yeah. Like that has, and he's cleared that. Good shot. They're getting their steps in on this hope at least. Yeah. Look and see what Blue can do. Is it makeable? Is it jawsable? He's got Red in a good position for a jump if he needs to. I don't think yeah, they can see Blue from there. If you've got a 50-50 shot, on a hoop and it's angled and you know, jaws or do I go for the hoop what, what are you normally choosing there Brian? Sometimes it's who you're playing against rather than what's the best situation um, in this situation I'd probably you couldn't try even try and jump it through I wouldn't like to if, well it depends where Levi puts this he puts in a better jumping position and he's going for it he must have had half a ball maybe Just goes up to the north boundary and Cause if he goes for this hoop here, there's a chance for a, a rejection. So I think he's going for the jaws. Leaving Levi, leaving Levi jump shot, which is dangerous. Josh's hands are down the mallet, but that does look like yeah. a jaws shot. Yeah. He knows what's coming, but. If he does miss, then it gives uh, Josh a great opportunity to get down to the next hoop as well. And of course, there's always the risk of pushing that blue ball through the hoop, which is... No, I think Levi has enough height on his ball. Normally, that I don't think we'll see that. Yeah. Well, he'll be thinking about this as a full full jump shot, I'd assume. Yeah. yeah. Over the top. Hit the crown of the hoop. He's got another opportunity with yellow, but that's a much harder angle. But I almost saw him pull one of these off against, um, I think it was Mikey, yesterday, from that distance, from that angle. So, never out of a hope unless you've... So I that's one of the reasons why Josh is coming back in. Well, obviously this jump shot 
rather than being a full shot, probably now becomes a jump, uh, a bounce jump shot. Yeah, which is a little bit more risk involved. Really, don't want to give your opposition that first shot down to the next hoop. This might be what I was talking about a minute ago. One of these great shots could win you a game. If he gets this, I'd say that'd be the shot. Yeah, Levi lining it up. Taking this time to do this, concentrating. Oh, it looks to have bounced off the side yeah, of the hose. Yeah, side. Good attempt, though. The right height. Slightly hampered. You got the referee behind you, Josh. So our referee, Alison Robinson, coming in to have a look at the shot. Alison, obviously a very, very experienced referee, refereeing several world championships over the, over her time. Now red and yellow are both offside. Maybe it was a bit harder than it looked. Alison having a talk to Josh there. Yeah, what's she saying? Is she saying that's a foul shot? Might have heard something. Is he asking for a second opinion? Just picking the markers up. No. So it clean shot. Looks like it could have. Yeah, no. No. It was a fault, and Levo's chosen to leave the blue ball where right. it's ended up. Yeah, interesting. Allison. Clearly seeing or hearing something that she wasn't happy with. No. Now in that shot where Josh has attempted to go through the hoop, obviously it being a foul, maybe hitting it softer could have been a better option and a bit more caution yeah, with... Like Sam before, sometimes just getting through the hoop is sometimes better than trying to promote it all the way down to the next hoop. Josh still has a shot at the hoop with yeah. his black ball. So he won't lose too much if he makes this. With yellow still being offside. Oh. No. That's really unfortunate. It looks like it could be another opportunity for a jump shot. <laughs> Making it interesting on themselves. <laughs> Levi's going for this. Maybe you can see half a ball. Well, oh, oh. that's very bobbly. It bounced a lot. Could have had a little bit of grass there or something, which caused it just to jump up a bit more than he would have liked it to. So, yeah. Looks like there could be a chance at another jump shot here by Levi. Maybe third time lucky. Getting a hammer in. He might have a clean run at well the hoop, actually. Do. Yeah. He's giving it a good look. And another referee, Wayne Gear, grabs his hammer and his spirit level to make sure that that hoop is tight and firm in the ground been a little bit hammered recently, so. Really appreciate our Kaiwao referees here at this tournament for volunteering their time to help us out and from what I've heard they've really enjoyed refereeing this event it's quite a different event having just the young people here and 
probably quite a different experience for all the referees as well. So now is this going to be a jump? Was it straight for the hoop? It looks like another jump, doesn't it? Based on his hands yeah. being further down the mallet, it does look like another jump shot. Oh, and that's a one. Third time lucky, yes. Beautiful shot. And that might be the shot you were talking about, Brian. Yeah. Obviously, Josh having pretty good control over the hoop about five minutes ago, and it's now gone the other way, just down to one or two good shots by Levi. Black's gone couple yards too far on that position down to hoop eight. I think it was slightly hampered by um, the hoops. I don't think that was a great position, really. Levi from where he was. No, Levi a little bit short there. Oh. Been assisted by Josh's blue ball coming through. Now, Brian, before we noticed when Levi was playing his jump shots, he drops his hand down to his yeah. mallet. Why does he do that? I don't know. Um, maybe he gives him better torque, should we say, better leverage so he can get more bounce distance. Like I say I've before, I'm not a great one to coach on uh, jump shots because it's, it's probably the worst part of my game, to be honest with you, Callum. <laughs> Probably Paul's probably a better answer than that one. And I was I was taught how to jump by the, the great Paul Kaiser. He's oh yeah, yeah. He, he's got a bit of a manifesto on the old jump shot. Oh. Yet another rejection from a hoop by these players. Core fire ball just bouncing right back out. And Josh choosing to play tight. Yeah, Levi's fed a ball. Is he might go for something here. Way off at corner three. What do you think he's lining up here? Well, he'll be going for blue, if anything. Does look like he is lining up a roque. Yeah. His ball's in uh, the vicinity as well, so he doesn't want to hit his own oh. ball. Well, he doesn't want to hit the peg either. You know, that's just come off the tier, the centre peg, and leaves Josh to take the core five ball away. Might better put this in a warrant position. That's what he's no, tried to do. Yeah, just got a bit too much on it. Gives Levi an opportunity to clear blue now. And possibly reset the hoop, I suppose. With both of them hitting their Roko so well at the moment, you'd hope he'd have a bit of confidence in this. Do you know how much time's gone in this game? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been going about... 45 minutes, I'd say. Mm. Great shot. He didn't have much of the ball to shoot at there. No. Looking at the replay at about three quarters, he's hit it pretty much perfectly. Nice medium pace as well. Do you notice with players who rotate better, the games take longer? Yes, they do. Yeah. You can always clear it. <laughs> yeah. I remember playing Nathan at the Under-21 World Championships and having one hoop that took about half an hour because we just... Plus they hand the ball further as well, so you're walking an extra distance as well. Yeah. It's all choose up time. Yeah. So it looks like the Fero and the Kikarangi ball 
both snuggled up to each other there, leaving arguably both balls hampered from each other. And most importantly, the red ball hampered from the black ball. Don't know if they're touching from here. I don't think they are. Trying to look at our little screen there. It doesn't look like it very much either. So this leaves Levi with a few options to consider. Do they go for the hoop or do they go for the black ball here? Lining something up. Went for the hoop. Oh. The good attempt at the hoop, hitting the hoop from that distance is... Now Josh has got options here as well. He can hit red and maybe get down to the next hoop, or he could snuggle. You know, those two balls are not touching, so he won't be able to play it straight through the red ball, but he's looking like he's going either for a hoop shot or a snuggle. I'm trying to hide the blue ball from the red. Yeah, oh, he doesn't, the doesn't ball, have so. to hit it very far to make an impossible shot for Levi here. Slightly on the side of the ball. But he doesn't want to leave him touching. Would you also try snuggle the ball over to the side and maybe hamper somewhat of a shot over at the next hoop as well? Yes, you'd be thinking of that as well. Yeah, and Alison coming over to watch Josh's shot. You might have to only hit this about an inch. Requires great control of... Yeah, it's harder than you think sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've seen this go wrong. All it takes is half a roll too much. and really, Although it does look like he might be just heading into it. Yeah. He's chosen to do that. Hmm. I'm not sure why, sure why you do that, because I thought there was an easy opportunity to have a snuggle there and not leave by a shot. I suppose one way I would think about it is if you do try to snuggle there, you might hamper yourself from going over to the next hoop with your first shot, which is less True. than ideal, especially with yellow being in the position that it is. Yeah, good point. And the game on three looks like it's just finished. I'm not sure of the result on that one. Oh, maybe that's the reason why it doesn't look like black can make the hoop from that position. It no, looks very deceiving. <laughs> yeah, no, it looks... I thought it was almost in front. Quite nicely, about a foot in front from where we're sitting. But still going for it, though. It's a jawsable position. Oh, he wasn't going for that. But he was going for the hoop, and it's gone straight through. Wow. Another beautiful shot. And looks like Levi with a bit of confidence yeah. going into... Hoop number nine. Two great hoop shots in a row from Levi Franks there. Fortune favours the brave. And that was just... Yeah. I suppose he had a chance to go for it, and he just went for it and just nailed it. And again, there's an argument there that that's a, almost a free hoop shot. Yeah. With Black not being able to make anything from that. So Josh has put his ball about two yards back at a somewhat angled position, but... Um, very runnable from where it sits. Looks like Levi's going to play this one nice and deep. This is a cool five ball. That's a nice tight position from Josh. Unfortunately, I don't think he can do much with that yellow ball. Stop it being cleared on the next turn. Josh has got a bit of work to do now to get back into this game. 5-3 down. Got 
levying good form. He's got the shot at the hope, so he's chosen to take it on. So clearing yellow here is not the greatest option because you don't exactly move it very far. So hope it is. He's made yep. it. Great shot. Yep. Unfortunately, it hasn't gone past the hoop very far, so it'll make a very difficult shot to go down to hoop 11. Oh, no, hoop 10. Well, that's the hour up, so 20 minutes to go. The score being 5-4 to Levi Franks playing the red and the yellow balls. 20 minutes is still a long time. You can you know, easily get four or five hoops in that time. Now, Josh is slightly hampered here. He's thinking about going for the hoop and rushing black down. Yep, well, yellow's got a Good pretty position. And there's not much, you can't hit it with blue, so that's not a bad option. So technically quite a difficult shot this one yeah you've got to get the accuracy and the power to get that black where you want it to go but no he's taken on the rogue okay. i think he's taken on the hoop he's gone straight through everything looked like it was going for the yellow ball there but levi can go put another ball right in front in full control for Levi Franks in front of this hoop. And that's the problem with just going through a black that distance. Yeah. Well, no option it. there. Out to the side. Would you have considered going to the other side of the hoop there and try stay on side for um, hoop 11? No, he's probably got a better angle from this way. Levi taking on the hoop. This is the yellow ball. Good shot. Great shot. Great nice. throw, six four. Smooth swing and Levi Franks is one away in this critical game in the under-21 singles championships sponsored by Terminator Mallets. I've noticed Levi Franks is also using a Terminator Mallet as are many players in this tournament. Again, that quick bit of lawn between hoops two and hoop three really coming into play there as Josh probably just overhits that positional shot a little bit. Levi choosing to go nice and deep back. Give himself a hoop running position. That's very deep, but Levi's confidence levels will be nice and high at the moment. It's the last few hoops. Approach by Josh, put it in front. Levi should just come up here as well. Looks to be doing that. Oh, just gets a nudge on the mm. black ball there. Which makes it interesting. So in recent games, James Duggan has beaten Nathan Bull in 7-4. And Patrick Connolly from Christchurch has beaten Ethan Gumbrell from Australia, 7-5. Very good result for young Patrick. Seems to be playing well this tournament. So blue onto yellow here. See, Josh chooses to take the danger ball rather yeah. than take the red ball, and he leaves Levi a shot at the hoop. He does. Forcing, it, forcing him to shoot at the hoop, really. Yep. Not sure he would have wanted to leave that red ball there, but 
Not well, left with much choice, unfortunately. No, uh, being 6 4 and down, he's taken a bit of a punt here, I think, maybe. He wants to try and control this hoop and the next. Levi so he's sacrificing the shot at the hoop because of it. This looks like it could be at the black ball. No, I don't know. I think he's going for the hoop. Hope so. Yeah, I yeah, got it. <laughs> Too good. Nailed it. Levi on form in this well singles tournament. And takes Josh out. 7 4. I'll go back to that jump shot on hoop seven. He never lost a hoop after that, did he? No. No. As you said, that one really good mm. shot became a bit of a turning point. Yeah. We see probably a little bit unfortunate for Josh there at hoop seven where got called on a fault. On a fault. But it's the way the game goes sometimes. That's a good game. We look forward to the next encounter. Uh, tomorrow won't it be, yes, at some stage. Probably one of the last games of the tournament. Tomorrow afternoon, and that could again, once again prove to be a, a vital vital game in the proceedings of this singles event. It appears we might be going on to the game between Maddie Clarkson and Patrick Connolly, which is currently going on on Lawn 5. It's the only game currently on at all at the moment. <coughs> Maddie looks to be up in that game. And the score appears to be... There's no clip on hoop one. Oh, it's been taken off for a jump shot here. Yeah. 4-3 to Patrick. Oh, oh. very close. Just catches the inside wire and sticks in. I definitely think Patrick's grown in confidence over this tournament. Oh, very much so. He's only a wee fella, <laughs> but he's uh, got a bit of a powerful shot on him at times. Got a nice big swing on him. Mm. Really gets that backswing through to generate the power coming forward. So it leaves a, a bit of an awkward position here for the yellow and the blue ball. And it's blue's turn to play the shot. Oh, no. She's deemed a shot. So it's red's turn to play the yeah, shot. That's fair enough. She's going to try and promote yellow with... Um, I depend on what Patrick does. Blue's not going to go very far if he hits it. It's just going to hit yellow and probably stay where it is. Oh, yeah. yeah. Exactly as you've said, Brian. But you see how he gets that big backswing on his swing, and it really generates the power going through the ball. Black to play, and it looks as if she might be just coming back in. Just leave yellow with a long rocker to clear the blue ball out of the jaws of hoop eight. It looks like to be a jump rocker okay as well as red might be blocking the... Yeah, it might be one of those cases where, okay, you have the hoop. I'll think of the next one. Oh, it's always worth having a go at this kind of shot. Like I say, my jump shots, I probably wouldn't be trying this, <laughs> but maybe you, you guys will. Are we going halfway? Now you become disadvantaged, you know, a little bit. One of the things Maddie possibly could have done there is put her black ball behind the hoop in a position where the, she can then run blue down and promote her blue ball with the black yep. ball on the yep. next yep. shot. We need yeah, that control of the hoop, you can do that. But Patrick gets the first shot across to hoop nine. And the score is now 4 all.
Another close one there. I just want to thank New Zealand Carbon Farming for taking the initiative and supporting schools like ours. It's really important they have that outlet to come to Kura for another reason other than curriculum and for some reason in our water our kids just breathe sport and having that resource here makes life that much more enjoyable and they can keep doing what they're good at. Having this funding, being able to use it specifically targeting sport is hugely beneficial. Funding is a real challenge. Uh, we know that a lot of schools face that ongoing and the reality is if you go to a lower decile school in New Zealand you are less likely to be able to afford to participate in sport. Obviously having come through it myself with kids and, and being one of those t kids myself who played sport, I know how much it defined who I was. And now being able to go, I can't fix it all but we can help and try and give to those people who are going through, through tough times. This isn't an ad about four-wheel drives. It's about knowing the place, as well as the locals. You've found the place. That's a good start. Built by my great-grandfather.
Yes. Okay. Yeah. This isn't about long distance calling, technology, or living overseas. Do I have one more bid? Thank you. We're going to go once. We're going twice. And we are sold to the Kiwi phone bidder from Manchester. <laughs> it's about Bailey's finding buyers that others can't. Fill up at a participating Caltex, stack your pump discounts, and you can collect more savings on your next visit. Oh, there's another one. Getting quite good at this. Ah, filling and saving. Feels good.
or here. All right, Kia ora Kato, welcome back. We have got a pr uh, thriller of a game lined up on Lawn 1 after that after that incredible showing from Levi Franks. We've got Nathan Bullen playing the Blue and Black Bulls against Mikey, Michael Lau, but we all call him Mikey, in playing the Red and Yellow Bulls. And Nathan has rejected from that hoop. And it looks like he's... He's played it quite hard, and he's gone straight into the centre of the of the upright. Yeah, but it just we've had a lot of hoop rejections, actually, haven't we? Yeah. I wonder if it's because the shots are just off, like the aim is off, or is it that the hoops are just really well set? Well, I think they are really well set. But no, that's what these guys will but be wanting. But I think rather than bashing at them, they have to try and gently stroke them through, rather than trying to kill the hoop at the same time. <laughs> trying to kill the hoop, that's, a, that's one way to put it. Um, yeah, that's, that's very true. Um, it can be very useful to just stroke it through. It can. Um, because not only, not only can it be easier to play, it's also nicer on the hoop. It is. And it shows, and if you are stroking it through, it means you've got a nice smooth swing and it's going to be repeatable as well. Yes, the hoops have been very firmly set. Right, what's so there is Red Ball just coming up. What's Nathan up to here? Looks like he's just playing that one in. He's got two balls in front. And I Nathan just trying to get a good position with Black, oh, and I think it's just rolled too far. Bad. Almost. So we've had... These guys are both playing pretty well, but I think the real story is uh, how Mikey's been playing. He's beaten both Levi Franks and Josh Winter. So both of these guys who had that incredible game just before Mikey has beaten both ah, of them. So Mikey must be playing really well. I think so. I think everyone's playing quite well. We saw we saw last game Levi hit that incredible boundary jump, ran that hoop nine as well. Hoop eight, sorry. And it looks like Nathan is lining up the jaws. No? Oh yeah, it was with his with blue. And he's gone a little bit past. It it could be worse, but I don't know if I don't know if black can see yellow or not. And Mikey I'm is not shooting at something. Not sure what Mikey's doing here. I think he's going for the hoop here. Because well, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't clear black. Well, neither no black need. and blue have got a hoop shot, exactly. so there's no there's point no in that. So I think that this is. He the might hoop. be actually just trying to run it. Ooh. Nope, and that got rejected as well. There've been a lot of those. There you see on the replay. What did he hit? No, that looks like that one went in and out as well. So Nathan's one hit the centre of the wire, but I think Mikey's has actually stuck in and bounced out. And he's tried to promote that. So Nathan's just trying to put that in a nice position. So he's, he's, he was attempting to promote blue, so it is blocked from yellow, but it appears he hasn't done that. Mikey's like saying, OK, thank you very much. I'll have that. And... Blue will probably be flying off down to the line. Yes, and it does. Blue is heading off to the north boundary. So this will be another long row not, red. Not far from corner three. And it's really interesting here to see all the different techniques these players have. So we saw Le Levi's and Josh's techniques. They play with that Solomon grip like you were talking about earlier. And so does Nathan. So does Nathan. But you can see that Nathan plays completely differently. There's a lot of wrists moving back and forth at the top of a swing. And he missed red. So I think that red may have a hoot shot there. Uh, yeah, it's a bit, bit angly, but... bit angly, oh, no, that's, but... That's, uh, no, that's runnable, I think. I'm, trying, think to, I'm trying to squint at, yeah, the, so squint I th at the screen. I think he'll probably give it a go. Yeah, because from our perspective, it's it's all side on, so it's it's hard to see exactly, but... I think it's worth a go. The camera, yeah. The camera and I think looks. Mikey thinks it is too. Yep. Yep, so Mikey to try and make hoop two. He's lining up. Look, he's using a standard grip. Yeah, so the standard grip, you've got the top hand is wrapped around the mallet like it is in the Solomon, but then the back, then the bottom hand is around, is only around the back of the mallet. And Mikey makes and it And Mikey easy. makes the hoop. So that is one all. And Nathan with first shot over. The first shot to the next hoop, I think, is one of the most important shots in all of croquet. Yes, if you get a good position there, you can run the hoop. And that uh -huh. puts you at a 
that means your ball is a really big threat and it forces your opponent to do something about it. And I must say that Black has got a really nice position there. So now Mikey has to think. So that's a good shot from uh, from Nathan. So now Mikey's thinking. What's going through his mind is... Well, does, he have to to clear, does he have to clear it I've or can he just leave it? No, I think he knows he has to clear it. But what is going through his mind is, do I, do I have two shots at it? Or do I play one no, ball in and no. then... Do I play one ball in and then shoot at it with the other? Well, he's just played one ball in. Oh, you're going to shoot at it with red then. And he'll have to shoot at it with red. And I've just been brought a lovely ham, cheese and pineapple toasty from the, <laughs> from the kitchen. From the Aren't kitchen you the inside. lucky one? <laughs> They've got some awesome, we've got a bunch of great volunteers here putting in the mahi. Making, making food for everyone and just making sure everyone's fed and fed and watered. All these young guys, you know, we all we all eat lots of food. So Mikey's mallet is actually a bit shorter than, than it Nathan's. would be if he had a different grip. And Red has just gone over to the west boundary and missed. So I guess he was ma making for black, wasn't he? A bit, a bit shorter, you mean? Yes. Mallet. So, but he he is a bit shorter himself, isn't he? Yeah. Well, everyone. Yes. So when when you're when you're buying or getting a new mallet, trying it out for the first time, oh, there's a we've got no. a bee or something flying around us. Don't no, worry, the bee has buzzed off. But when I thought it was a wops at first. Oh uh, yeah. When when you're getting a new mallet, um, what are we thinking here? I'm just invested in Nathan's hoop shot here, so I'll, I'll watch that first before I continue. Nice and shot. Nathan runs hoop three with blank. So when you're getting a new mallet. People will, someone will often say, oh, it needs to be as high as your waist plus a little bit. It needs to be up to here on you. That's a good starting point, but well, it, really, it really depends on the grip you play. Yes, it depends on the grip. With that uh, standard grip, he's got a, a sh bit of a shorter mallet than most people would have. Yeah, so but the Egyptians, who very often play Irish style, have really short mallets. And so the, the Irish style that Janet's talking about is, if we remember Mikey's grip, that bottom hand is the same as the top hand. So those both of them will be around the back of the mallet. And in fact, it's actually the style that I play as well. So I'm very I'm very partial to the old Irish grip. Yes, the Egyptians use it a lot and they have very short mallets, yep. but they're very accurate. Yep, and my, my mallet is a, a lot shorter than the average one as well, because I really try and, with the Irish grip, you have to get, you have to move your arms, behind, like you have to get underneath. Uh, yes, you really have to get right over the mallet, don't legs. you? Yes. And so to do that, you've got to lean forward slightly and you need, well, you need a short mallet, otherwise you're yes. going to be blocking yourself. Yes. You're not going to be able to swing back very far. And Blue is just about in the jaws of hoop four. Yep, and I, I think with, with where yellow is, I don't think Mikey will attempt to clear that. Oh, no, he is. He's lining this one up. The reason I say I'm not sure if he'd attempt it is because the... Firstly, of the distance, but also of the angle. There's a possibility that that he might put it that, through that by he might mistake. Put it through, yes, and we've we've seen that a couple of times. Um, we I have by if, mistake. I can't remember <laughs> if it was on the feature lawn or not, but I've definitely seen it in some other games as well. Oh, he's looking. Oh, he's actually. Oh, that was that. a lovely what, shot. What do we know? So he did do shot. a clearance. Maybe um, maybe the blue ball was a bit. It wasn't as far in the jaws as I thought. No, blue is now in corner two, corner that, corner four rather. If that was partially obscured by the hoop, that was an incredible shot from across the lawn. It so definitely well was. Car high. And blue is just making a comeback. I think this has got to be a hoop shot from red. And is now back in front of the jaws again. I think this should be a hoop shot from red. Mikey's played that r shot really well to give himself a chance. And just with yellow where it is, I think the if he's got an opportunity, I think he should take it. That's my thought anyway. What do you reckon, Janet? I would think so. If he's got a chance. So you think we are going to see the hoop shot? I'm not sure whether he's lining that up for the hoop or to get rid of black or get rid of blue. I feel like if you can see the hoop, we'll go for it. So, oh, he went the hoop, goes for he it. He went for the hoop. Absolutely. Went for it, it and a beautiful hoop right down to the boundary. 
We've got so many quality players here. They're all they're all running the hoops really well. Like we've seen a lot of rejections, but then you just see them sail through like that. And that would be two all. That was a beautiful hoop. I just bumped the mic by accident. Hopefully that didn't make too much of a noise. Sorry, viewers. All right, and Black's got a lovely position in front of hoop five. Yellow is going over to join him. Well, the, the problem with right going... Right behind Black, I think. The problem with going that close is that, A, he's almost... He may have blocked red, which is what Nathan's looking at now, but B, Black has a very easy stop shot on yellow here, and that means if blue plays into, a, into position really nicely, then Black can just really control this here. He could even play the snuggle up to yellow to stop it doing anything at all. Well, there's blue trying to and as you stop. Can, as you can see down in the as well. corner, we've had we've had had some updates from other games. Patrick Connolly and Maddie Clarkson. They went to the 13th, but Patrick managed to take that out. I was we saw a little bit of it just before, and it seemed to be quite close. So, although Maddie that, Clarkson did just win her previous game against Jessica, and that was the first game she'd won. Right? Yeah, so she'll be very pleased with that. Yeah, I was I was talking to a couple of people because I was saying I don't really. I don't really know much about Maddie. What's you know what's something what's something um, about her? And one of the players said that she has such a positive attitude, and that they're really impressed by it. Maddie is from Auckland, and uh, she's only been playing since the end of 2019, and she was introduced to it by uh, uh, school for Z lessons, which is really good to know that croquet is on the agenda for school croquets. Yeah, I know there are heaps of um, school programs up and down the country. Usually, usually backed by a couple of a couple of players, and they've gotten yes, that into the schools. Yes, yes. Croke New Zealand has a very strong croquet in schools program. It's been slightly disrupted by COVID, but uh, we're all back into it. And all all of these guys here, they've come through that secondary schools program. Mikey, Nathan, yes, yes. myself. Levi James, pretty much everyone here, all these top players, they've all come through it. Yes, Maddie played in her first under 21s last year. So she's back for more. And she also got invited to the women's invitation just a few weeks ago. And she played pretty well on that, I think. She was played fourth, fourth which is very bad. good. There are some, there are some it's really excellent. good players there. And she also played in the women's national this year. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So how she she's. That. I, I don't know, <coughs> but she's certainly one to watch. No, I reckon. Now Thank Mikey you. is now down. Her, his red ball is now down by hoop two on the boundary, and Nathan is about to play blue. That's a little bit. Oh no, he's going for the block there. I thought he was just trying to put it in front. No, he's just going for a block so that red doesn't get him, and that will leave the hoop open for black. So here's Red coming back into the game. No, oh, he's looking, he's looking. Oh, he's... Yes, and he got Red. Pretty much on the middle. Yep, beautiful shot from Red. Black is now south of hoop four. And that was a wonderful tutuki from the Fero ball. Poro Fero. Poro Fero. Yeah, the Poro Fero is the Red ball. So Nathan playing the yellow ball. Mikey. Oh, Mikey playing the yellow ball is the, the Poru Kofi, like the tree. Yep, nice mid pacer on the middle. Has just got rid of Nation's black ball to the south boundary. Now, something I think Mikey could have considered there, it's, it's difficult to spot, but if you play that with slightly less pace, make sure that black doesn't go out. That actually puts it in a prime spot for red to clear it. Yes, and you can't clear it if it's out. And just where it is, I think that if it hasn't gone out, it's not anywhere where you can really clear it. Now, Nathan has just done a teeny little shot just to roll blue into position to run the hoop. I hope he hasn't just rolled too far. And it looks like Mikey, Mikey is aiming to rush this yellow to a position where it can move blue or a closer jumping position. And it looks like he's going for the jumping position, and that's a really nice cut there. That takes a lot of control. And it looks like Mikey, if Nathan doesn't clear this, Mikey will be preparing the ha ho tarapiki, the jump shot of the blue. But Nathan doesn't want this. He's going for the roke. Oh, nope. just missed. 
He's, he's just missed everything, and Black is now on the north boundary. So now it's time for that Haho Tarapiki attempt, the jump shot. Uh, you'd probably back Mikey to get these um, from very short like this. It's another one of those bread and butter shots. You have to be able to get over a ball that's in the jaws. So he's standing further over it in order to pop the ball up just over the blue. Yes, you can. Oh, and he's gone no, in and out. he didn't. The yellow ball has got rejected again. He tried that jump shot and it didn't quite come off for him. Yeah, another, another rejection by yes. these hoops. Yes, bad luck, Mikey. And uh, they're calling for the referee because the two balls are fairly close together. I'm not sure what Nathan's going to do. But here comes Alison Robinson to referee it. So walk, walk us through what Alison is up to here. What's she, what's she doing right well, now? First of all, she will ask what Nathan is going to do. And then she will mark the balls just in case there's a fault. Because if there's a fault, then the balls can be put back to where they are now. And he's, just and played, he's played a jaws. gentle shot just into the jaws. So Alison will pick up her markers. She's done her job. So what, what could have gone wrong there? It was very close to the hoop. <coughs> so things that could have gone wrong is he could have done a double tap where the mallet, the ball comes back onto his mallet and he hits it twice. He could have done a crush, which means crushing the ball between the mallet and the upright and, and the and the and the upright. Isn't that what we saw <laughs> in the last game? I believe I believe uh, the referee faulted Josh at hoop seven. I think I, so. I yes. think that was a crush. It well looked like it. I can't, I can't think of what else they would have called it. But if there is a fault, then the opposition has the choice of whether the balls stay where they ended up or whether they got, get put back to where they came from. And if they get put back, that's why the markers have marked the spot for them. That makes sense. Yep. So what's Mikey up to now? He is, uh, he is going to rush this yellow where it can clear <coughs> blue. So he's going to put this behind the hoop. And Mikey's been Mikey's and been playing a bit of AC, uh, the other <laughs> the other code of croquet. And he hasn't done that. In fact, he's made a perfect block with red, so that he won't be able to get anywhere near blue. <laughs> yeah, but Mike, Mikey's been playing a bit of AC, so he would have he would have felt a little bit uh, confident about that shot, but <coughs> not quite. In in AC, there's I a thought lot of the shot was a little ho ha. Ho ha. Bit dicey. Dicey, yeah. <laughs> And my, Mikey's just uh, said to us the one time he hits at centre. <laughs> so uh, we love the we love the humour from the players here. So Nathan is coming in from the north boundary. And it looks like he may not have even gone over the halfway mark, which is a... Uh, so he is going to be... Offside. To, to Harper. He to, is going to, to be Harper. offside if the hoop gets run. So the thing is, with where the balls are right now, you may almost consider not running it if you're Nathan. And I don't think Mikey's thinking about this at the moment. I think he's just looking to do the cannon red onto blue. I think he's just getting rid of red, but he's not going to run it with... Uh, I would not be surprised if Nathan just deems the shot. And that would be because his black, black ball, ball is more than halfway towards the next hoop. That's right, it's too hopper. And if it's offside if it's too harper more than halfway to the next hoop before the hoop is run then the black ball will get to the sent to the penalty continuation spot unless he's trying no he's no not. he's run the hoop that's that works too uh the yellow um, the yellow was in a jumping position uh that was a bit further i would have been tempted to let him have a go at that but he's nathan's just decided no nope, i'm i'm happy with that i'm just going to run this hoop get three two up and have Run it with control with blue. So Nathan's ball, black ball, has been sent to the penalty continuation spot. An interesting little thing about the rules here is that if if Nathan were to have tapped the blue ball through and it made contact with the black, both balls would then be onside. That's right. Because they, they were moved in the same stroke that the hoop was running. Yes. And the, and the offside does not count until the hoop is made. And it only counts if you come off an opposition ball as well. That's before before the hoop was run. If it if it's in the yes. same if it's in the same stroke, Nathan could have tapped it onto the black. He could. Yeah, and they would have both. Because been okay. it is the shot in which the hoop was run. That's right. So Nathan's just positioned that blue ball in front of the hoop. So, no. sorry, Mike. No, no. Mikey, no, no. Mikey's going to be looking at oh. looking at what he's got here. His double. Yep. And a double is when you have two targets 
that, from your perspective, look like they're right next to each other? I, it, that's usually two balls or a ball and a hoop? I, I don't think that uh, blue and black are, are a double, but they've both got a nice hoop shot there. I'm thinking, I'm thinking blue and the hoop. With either red or yellow, it looks like you'd have a double with one of them. No, he's just playing it safe and coming up. No, I think he, he knows that... Obviously, black doesn't have a shot. He, no, he knows that He knows that yellow has a double at blue, so he's decided to block. He's decided to protect yellow from black. And it looks like Nathan... So Nathan's going to get rid of yellow. Which yes. Which he's done. Which he's done beautifully. A wonderful two took you And on yellow has now five. gone down to the... Almost down to the south boundary. And so Mikey will be shooting at whatever he's got here, whether that's the hoop, whether that's the blue, whether it's both of them at once. We'll see what happens. Well, I think that blue has a hoop shot. Oh, definitely. You've, and got, blue, to, you've got to do... You're and blue plays immediately after yellow. Oh, no, he's hit the oh, pig. Oh, no, he's banged into the pig. Yellow has hit the pig. So and blue will now probably run the hoop. It could, have, it could have been aiming perfectly at it, and then it could have just curved off. Sometimes the lawn can take it. Which will mean another hoop for Nathan. And that would be 4-2. And it is, and Nathan's, yes, Nathan's run it that. Yes, it is. So Nathan has run hoop six. And he's run that softly nice, on purpose. Yes, nice, gentle, soft shot. So that way his return roque... If, if Mikey would have put that ball right in front, it would mean the roque for blue at red would be a lot shorter. No, he's playing the wrong ball. Wrong ball, Nathan. He's played the wrong ball. He's played yellow when black should have played. It should have been black because uh, red just played the previous shot and Mikey has noticed and so he has said here? wrong ball. What happens here, Janet? Well, the opposition has a choice. It is a wrong ball because red... Yellow should not have been played after red. Black should have been played after red. So the opposition has the choice of leaving the balls where they are or just swapping them over. So, so he's... No, no, he's yellow, no yellow, sorry. There's no part uh, of the ball. He has the choice of putting it back where it came from. Yeah, well, there's no choice he has to. No. And it's, it's important to note that that's not, it's not a fault or anything. There's no, no punishment. No, it's you not just, a fault. Yeah. It's just wrong play. Because sometimes, you know, you can just... Absent-mindedly, you're not thinking you're, you're in the zone no. too much and just play the wrong no, ball. No, so what you do is you simply put the ball back where it came from and, and play the correct yep. ball. Yep, so no no punishment, no harm done. Just put it back, play it again. If it was the partner ball, then it would be a little bit different, but the rule's a bit complicated to describe to someone who hasn't really <laughs> read of it before. No, the partner ball is still a wrong ball. Yep. Anything is a wrong ball unless it's the ball that ought to be played. But you have a you do have another choice of what you can do with it. You do. This, the ball swap rule is a bit complicated to describe. Yes, we won't go into that here, but there, <laughs> there is another choice. But he's done what he normally should have, is uh, put the ball back where it came from and put the correct ball, yep. play the correct ball instead. A nice little uh, maybe 30% pace roque there from Mikey. Yes, gentle shot. Because he didn't, he didn't want his red to go very far. And so he's just playing that in front of the hoop, maybe trying to just block... Just trying to block yellow? Block yellow, yeah. Maybe thinking about red. Because, because yellow's got a shot, but it's a bit yeah. long. That's probably three, four yards. So you'll be considering a jump again. That ha-ho tarapiki. But no, Mikey has decided. No. Well, has he decided? No, he's just playing it. He's just playing on. up. So he must he must be able to clear that with red. It's interesting because at this level you don't very see very many wrong balls. No, that's right. I, I have a uh, funny story about that actually. I was I was playing against I can't remember who it was, but I was playing against someone, and they play a wrong ball. And um and they're like, Oh, that never happens. I'm like, No, don't worry, you know, we all do it. And then <laughs> the very next the very next shot I played the wrong ball myself. <laughs> so it was it was it was quite a funny moment. Yeah, that's good. That's that's all you need, yes, Mikey. That's what he the, needed. You've gone to the straight boundary. You haven't gone far. And he managed to get uh, black, black out of position. Out of position because black had a shot. And now black doesn't have a shot. Uh, black will be clearing so yellow. So Nathan will clear yellow. Yes. And yellow has gone to the north boundary, almost in corner three. And a bit of applause there from Mikey. He knows that it's a good shot. Obviously, these guys played together in their doubles, uh, in the mm -hmm. doubles as well. They did. Very so they know friends. each other's play very well. 
and it's really nice to see how even though everyone's very competitive, we're all we're all friends here. Everyone's really nice. <laughs> the interesting thing about the wrong ball is. Um, Sometimes you get into whole sequences of wrong balls and blue and black play blue, black, blue, black, blue, black and red and yellow play red, yellow, red, yellow, red, yellow, quite oblivious of the fact that they're all out of uh, sequence. Yeah, because you're, you're, just, you're just going according to what the pattern was. Someone's That's just right. Black, so you're like, oh, I'll, hit, I'll play yellow and then you realise that you've just gone yes. blue, black, yellow and then someone will play and, red. And uh, I saw a sequence like that. I was refereeing at the uh, World Championships in Catty Catty. And Very somebody nice did a whole sequence like that, about 10 shots, all out of sequence. And then I think at that point you just have to be like, OK, we don't know what's going on. <laughs> Everyone go to a penalty spot. We'll, we'll work it out from there. Yes. Uh, the thing about the wrong ball is if you don't notice and you just keep playing, it's too late to go back. Yep. You can't go backwards once somebody's played after that. But it looks like these guys are all playing the right balls here, thankfully. They are. They're all back in sequence. And Nathan has run hoop seven, so that takes it to five two. Three hoops ahead. That's very a very good advantage that he has here. All right. So yellow has just gone past hoop eight to the non-playing side, and Nathan is just been bringing blue up. That's a bit short, I think. I feel like I he would have wanted to come a bit closer than yes, that. Yes, I'm not sure if he just wanted to stay out of Red's way. Oh, you definitely do. You do want to stay out of Red's way. You so don't want to come right up to the hoop. No, so Red is just doing a little gentle shot to yeah. put it in front of the hoop. I think a couple, a couple of metres more closer to the hoop with blue would have been better. So Black is now trying to do something about Red. Yep. Yes. It. Very nice. Well done. Yes, Black has cleared Red, and Red and Black have now gone down to the south boundary together. And Mikey will line this Black ball in because with this yellow, he's going to be wanting to wire this from Black forcing blue to do something about yellow or go for the hoop itself. He's looking at a spot. Plays it just in front, not quite. That's a little bit short, isn't it? He really wanted another... A ball. A an, ball another two. ball roll or ball and a half roll just to get in front. Yeah, so now, now Nathan's going to be looking at yellow, wanting to clear this so blue can run the hoop. Mikey's playing this red in. He said that's okay, no matter where yellow goes. Oh, he went for the promotion, actually. He was trying to barely yes. tap yellow in yes, front. Yes, but he, he didn't get it. That takes huge amounts of control, but it's really powerful when it comes off, and Mikey almost got that. He didn't quite get it, so now red is in front of the hoop, and black has missed everything and has gone up to the north boundary. Yeah, but that's good. Mikey would have deliberately played it with enough power just to sit in front if it rolled past yellow. So he's played this really well. Even though he didn't get the promotion on yellow that he wanted, he's still able to hit blue and give himself an advantage at the hoop. Yes. So I think blue is going walkabout. Yes, yep. blue is taking a walk also up to the north boundary. So blue and black are both up on the north boundary. Red is in front of hoop eight, and yellow is on the west or near the west boundary just south of the continuation spot. That's right, and with with blue where it is, it will have an outside shot at the hoop. That's a, that would be a very outside shot. But with red there as well, it could be a double, it's, a double it's, target. It's not impossible, and we've seen it done. What do you think is the more difficult shot, running it through the hoop from this range or doing a jump shot from the boundary like Levi did in the last game? <laughs> They would both be fairly difficult shots. But I feel like the boundary jump, you see a bit less of it, but maybe that's only because you, there's not the opportunity to do it. Oh, and he's hit the wire. Uh, Look how closely that was. That was a good shot that Nathan tried. But these guys are so accurate. But he didn't make the hoop, so now Red will probably run hoop eight. And that will give Mikey a hoop. Oh, barely off the left-hand wire, and that's from 20, 30 metres. And Nathan runs hoop eight through to the boundary. Yeah, Mikey does. Sorry, Mikey. And again, that's a really good shot. Really angled, and he just makes it look easy. Okay, so he needed to catch up a hoop or two, and he's done just that. So now it's five, uh, five, three, I think. 
I think that's 5-3. Yes, five five three. Three. yes, yes, because it was 5-2 before, 5-3 now. So Nathan will have first shot over to hoop 9. And this is a pretty crucial hoop, because if you run hoop 9 with control, you're pretty well placed for hoop 10. And then, if Na and of course, if Nathan runs it, that puts him on 6, and 6-3 six, up with a control So Black is 10. slowing down. 6-3 up with and a control Black, 1 to 10 is a big advantage. Oh, it certainly is, yes. But um, but that shot has gone in. Nathan's put that uh, black ball in just in front of hoop 10, and it's a nice position, a little bit angled, but it's still a very good hoop running position. What, with black? Yes, with black. Yep, at so the very least, you're so going to be able to that. Yes, so black is a lovely ball there. And blue has come up and also got a lovely shot there. But we can't forget... Very nice position in front of the hoop for both blue and black. We can't forget about yellow, though. It's sitting on the well, boundary. Well, red it's is coming. I don't know if... Uh oh, so red came up from the south boundary and I think just tapped blue. And well, they're they sitting there together, black and blue, red and, red and blue, and I think they're almost touching. I think jawsing this is the most powerful option here because it forces yellow to play a really risky jump or hit red onto blue, which could send red moving as well. And that's, th yes. that's because of where blue and red are situated. Nathan and yes, I think Nathan's got that in mind. Yep. Nathan could just tap the blue for the snuggle. Ah. Oh, not quite. But uh, Nathan tried for the jaws, but it's just bounced off the upright and it's gone sideways. And it is, it is deceptively difficult to jaws. It uh, is. It, it looks easy. You might be thinking, how are these guys not able to do that? No, I think... Uh, but when you hit the ball softly, the lawn can just take it. It can roll off. Tiny yes. little bumps. I think Mikey has a bit of a hampered shot here because red is so close. Yes, and obviously if, you, if, your, if your mallet does not hit a ball other than your own, that's, that's a fault. That is definitely that. a fault. I don't think they're actually touching, but they're, he's, they're obviously too close to comfort for him. It looks like he's having a go with yellow. It looks like he's another boundary jump. A ha-ho tarapiki. Well, he's taken the clip off the top. And that's a sure sign that he's It's a sure a sign here. that he's trying a jump. So it's quite a long one. But there's yeah. no ball sitting in the jaws, so it makes it a lot no. easier to work out where you want to bounce this. Oh, oh and he's hit red. He okay, so he didn't make the jump. He hit red instead, and red is now on the north boundary. Yeah, so he didn't he didn't step over far enough, or he didn't get enough power on it. One of the two. Well, this leaves it open for for blue to have a go. And if he runs this with if he runs runs this with control, and he has. Like he has, so Nathan has got another hoop. That's going to be six three. Oh, and he's actually hit the wire of hoop 10 and <laughs> it's very rare in golf croquet that you see someone run two hoops in one it shot it is possible but it does happen sometimes but if you do it does count as two points it definitely does so if that had happened nathan would have just won the game there and then and i've myself i've only done it once i've done it once so it's very it's very very rare and i've been playing for about seven years well mine went through so cleanly and the bush is at the other end <laughs> And any, everybody said, what an amazing shot. And I thought, oh, gosh, that was lucky. <laughs> well, the real, the real incredible shots are when you see someone run five and six in the same turn because the peg's in the Ah, way. yes. And it, sometimes it can just curve around the peg. Well, I must say the peg's been hit and it's leaning at a bit of an angle. Now, here comes red in from the west They'll be trying to wire this, wire this from blue. Getting, getting wide position is one of the most important things you can do if your opponent's first ball has gone past the hoop because it means that no matter what, that ball cannot hit you. And it means you will have a shot. And here's hook. Nathan's black ball coming up and landing just in front of red, effectively blocking it. It'll be interesting to see if blue can still see red or blue's blocked through from red either through the hoop or through black. Well, let's see what sort of a position Mikey gets with yellow. And that's why you can see Nathan's looking at it. And yellow is... Has come to join them. Has just come to join them. So we've got a threesome of red, yellow, and black, and blue down, just off the side of the hoop. So it's hard. It's hard to tell what Nathan's going to do here because it's hard to see what's blocked. Hmm. But it looks like he's just going to play that in front. So Nathan has just popped blue in front of the hoop. And that's usually a really good. Um, 
So he's got a good position there. It's usually a really good option. When, when you're in doubt, putting a ball in front is usually pretty good. It looks as if Mikey is going to clear black. Yes, yeah, well so played. he's cleared black down to the boundary he's only played and stayed that. in touch himself. He's only played that with enough force to barely send black to the boundary because the more force you use, the less control you have. Well, he can't send it any further than the boundary, that's so right. there's no point, so in doing a, no point in doing a hard shot because that's as far as it can go. So, so black is immediately trying to come back. He'll be clearing this yellow. Yes, he and he does. And then now this will be yellow at blue, or the hoop, if you're feeling lucky. And if yellow doesn't manage to dislodge blue, and blue runs the hoop, then that, that will be game. That will be the game. But with red where it is, I think I think aiming for blue is the only sensible choice. So yellow me. has to aim at blue. I believe. Because blue plays next and blue will run the hoop. So Mikey has to do something about that. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's a double. So he's lining up. Slows it down, speeds it up. Oh, I think and he's missed he's, that on the left. And he's missed it on the left, yes. And red has, uh, yellow has gone through to the boundary, which leaves... Oh, let's look close on the replay. So this, this is for the game. It leaves Nathan open to run the hoop with blue. And this will be hoops. Uh, this will be game if he gets it. He will have seven hoops. No, oh, it's in the and jaws. he didn't. He blobbed in the jaws. So he tried to run that really softly, but it was slightly angled, and it looks like he's just sat in the jaws. It was, but now. I'm not sure if Red can get him out from there. Now Mikey's got a bit of a dilemma here. He has to think: Do I jump this, or do I clear it with Yellow, who is on the boundary behind the hoop? But that means you have to base it. You have effectively you have to effectively run the hoop from the boundary to clear blue. Yes, which isn't that easy. So effectively, he's got to run the hoop from the boundary. Or he has to play this yep. ha ho tada picky jump shot. And I think. And what do you think he's thinking of? Well, he's thinking of exactly yeah, that. So he's thinking which which Mike is just sitting there wondering what to do. And I think weighing I think up the options. Yes, it is. Yes, so he's intending a jump shot by the looks of it. So why, why are they taking the clips off the hoops? Why do, why do we do that when we're playing a jump um, shot? It's much safer to move the, hi the hoop, uh, move the clip rather, because uh, you don't want the clip to hinder your shot as it goes through. That's right, and we've been seeing, we've been seeing a lot of jump shots hitting the crown. Imagine yes. if the scoring clip was on there, the clip so would explode. Well, sometimes they do. Sometimes the clip ends up in two pieces. <laughs> Oh, no, he's not happy with that. No, he didn't. I'm not sure what happened there. Did he go right over the top or did no, he go sideways? I think he went sideways, mm. yeah, he did. Look on the replay. But he certainly didn't connect with the ball, did he? So he's put the clip back on again. So, but he's still got this fallback option of running it from the boundary. Yes. Going and through the back, clearing blue, which he's very capable of doing. And Nathan has just brought black up a little bit. So it's now Mikey having a go at no, yellow. He's not even and no, he's just bringing it back up to so be on side again. That's really interesting. So what what that tells me is that he doesn't reckon blue is runnable. Blue is on such an angle close to the wire that he can't run it. And I thought this was I thought this would be very obviously runnable, but no, I'm obviously not. From the, from this angle, no, it must not be and look at the way Nathan's looking at it. It must be slightly sideways and against the uh, right hand wire by the looks of it. So they're just going to have a discussion, make sure they're going to make sure that he's not going to play this too hard. He's, Nathan's going to say, I'm not going to try and run it. I'm just going to tap it in the jaws. So they should probably uh, call the umpire to have a look at yeah, this. I think what they've what they've done is Mikey's, Mikey and Nathan have said, OK, you're not going to hit it hard. That's OK. Mm. We won't call a ref for that. If you were, then I would. Yes. It's just the sort of shot that needs a referee to come and have a look. But he's going to have a go with red. Red at, red so at blue Mikey's or red at black is the question. Well, if he can see blue, it was blue. It was blue, and it sounds as if he touched the upright on the way through. Yes, he did. He hit the hoop. Yep. So red has now gone down to the south boundary, and Nathan is now trying to dispose of yellow. So Nathan's going to be cutting this down the left-hand side, which he's done. Yep. Puts maximum distance, makes the jump as hard as possible, and Mikey's smiling. He knows what he's got to do. <laughs> He knows that he's going to do a have to try a humongous jump. 
All right, so here's Mikey lining up the uh, and it, yellow ball, yeah. and he's just south of the peg line. And it would it would truly be the shot of the tournament if he gets this. Now, it looked like it had the height, but it did yeah, not give the it line. Didn't didn't have the line. I think it went over to the left hand side. And that's really a hidden hope shot. And Nathan just taps it through. Congratulations, and Nathan. And that is well the game to Nathan. A so seven three there. And I wonder if we'll be able to get one of them to have a chat. Nathan or Mikey. I'll see if I can go and grab one, perhaps. But congratulations to uh, Nathan. To Nathan. And Mikey, of course, they put on a nice little show for us. And there goes Janet. You're about to see her on the camera. She's about to go talk to them, ask them if they want to come and have a quick yarn with us. What are they going to say? Are they going to say yes? They're going to say no? Looks like Mikey's been roped into it. We love to see it. No, no, he's gone. Is he coming? We'll see. No, it appears, it appears he may be. It's hard to tell. These are the more important things. You don't, it's not about what shot they're about to play. It's about are they going to come and have a bit of a chat. And it looks like Mikey's coming over here now. Yes, we're just getting hold of Mikey, the winner of that game, to uh, have a little chat with you. Yeah, so welcome, Mikey. Come come sit down. Hello. Yeah, we, we need you to speak into the mic. Yeah, I'm coming. <laughs> so, yeah, not not a bad game. I mean, you would probably have wanted to have won, but what do, what do you think was the difference maker there? Uh, I was a little bit disappointed with some of my shots. Um, I let the game run a little bit down the middle, um, especially hoop six, a couple of tactical mistakes. Um, I sh probably should have gone for a jump shot, went for the clearance and didn't get another shot of the hoop. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I'm 4-2 down, um, and then going over to hoop six, uh, hoop seven, sorry, um, same sort of result, didn't go for the jump shot, went for the clearance and didn't get another shot of the hoop, and all of a sudden I'm 5-2 down, where I could have been 3 all. Yeah, what do, you, what do you reckon you've enjoyed about this competition so far? Oh, I think everyone just gets along really well. We know each other really, really well. Um, so it's always a good game and great sportsmanship. Yeah, we were, we were saying that before, how cool it is that even if you miss a shot, everyone's laughing, having fun, you know. Yeah, we're, we're, pretty, we're pretty chill with it. Yeah, me and Nathan had a bit of laugh at the end there when I had to go for a very long jump shot. Yeah, we were saying it would be, it would be shot of the tournament if you managed to get that. And you, it honestly looks not terrible. It had, it had, the, uh, it had the height. Yeah, Nathan has a thing for making me go for jump shots and <laughs> made me go for a boundary jump and our last round robin game but yeah no nah, really enjoyed it um disappointed with the result but um on to the next one yeah thanks mike and we might w w are we going to be seeing you in the commentary box at some point possibly uh potentially we'll see Ooh. we'll see what happens later on yeah thanks Cheers, mikey Paul. did you want to come over yarn nathan or yeah, now oh yeah well congratulations we've got nathan <laughs> bull in here thank you, thank you so how how'd that game go from your perspective you must be pretty stoked that you won there yeah i mean i'm happy with the win i think my performance it could have been a bit better a few missed shots, um, especially that last hoop. Uh, but a win's a win at the it end is, of the yeah. day, yeah. And you, uh, you've been playing pretty well. Where, where does that put you in the tournament, do you know? Uh, probably about fifth, I think. Uh, fifth or sixth. But fifth, there's a, it, it's easy to say fifth, but when everyone's tied for wins, yeah. No, yeah, it, can go, it can go either <coughs> way. You could very easily go I, right, up, right yeah. up the order. No, I definitely think the, uh, the competition this year is like definitely... At one of its best. There's like a really strong feel. I right? think every player is is so good. You know, every player has has their their strong strong points. And we saw that. Like Mike, Mikey beat both Josh and Levi. Exactly. Before. It just shows the the level of this competition. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks very much, Nathan. No worries. Thank you. So I think we might be going to another ad break now, and then we'll see. Uh... Whoops! Running on empty. Enjoy a six cents per litre fuel discount at your local Caltex with Pumped Every Day. Ah, feels good, eh? Get it at any participating Caltex. Funding is a real challenge. Uh, we know that a lot of schools face that ongoing, and the reality is if you go to a lower decile school in New Zealand, you are less likely to be able to afford to participate in sport. Obviously having come through it myself with kids and, and being one of those kids myself who played sport, I know how much it defined who I was. And now being able to go, I can't fix it all, but we can help and try and give to those people who are going through, through tough times. 
So the sponsorship from New Zealand Carbon Farming has been fantastic for our sports teams actually who went away to tournament week. We're a community who's driven by sport but often money and, and the cost of travel, accommodation and uniform can be a, a barrier for some of our students and to come out with a, a new uniform for a number of sports, particularly our basketball teams who have been away at nationals, has been uplifting for the students and for our community. Uh, the support from the Carbon Farming has been wonderful. Without them then we wouldn't look like this. <laughs>
How do you know if they had a bit stronger? Oh, kia ora koutou. We are back and we've got Ethan Gumbrell against Levi Franks. I'm Paul Kaiser back here again and I've got Brian Bullen joining me in the commentary desk. Welcome. So we've got, it looks like Yellow is playing this, uh, I think Blue and Black may be a bit, it's hard, it's hard to tell, I can't, I think Blue has a hoop shot still. What do you reckon? I'm not so sure, I don't think so, from it's there, from that angle. To squint at the camera but it's hard to see on the other we'll, side. We'll see in a second. Oh, he's looking at Black, you know, he's got a riff. Well, he's going to try something interesting. Whenever you've got a hampered shot, it's usually a good idea to get a referee. You don't want to bevel edge it. Just tap it with the edge of the mallet, and obviously you can't do that. You've got to make clean contact. He doesn't have many options here. He might just promote it forward, put it in front of the... Maybe going for the jaws, but I doubt it. You've got to get a lot of power on yeah. that. It depends, it depends how, well, how well he can get over it. It's just so hard to see from, from back here. This could be a very interesting game. You know, we've seen a little bit of Ethan. This could be what you call a banana skin game where, you know, if Levi's not quite at his best and Ethan's playing really well, yeah, it could be close. It's so it's so easy to just lose focus for even one even one moment, one game, and then you can just let it slip away. No, he did have something. Well whatever he had it wasn't enough, sadly. And it looks like we're going to have a nice little stop shot with red. I think yellow cannot see blue to clear it. No. So Levi got quite fortunate there with his position of blue. Yeah, so he knows that blue can clear red only to the line. So he'd have to, he might have to cut it, split them both ways, but... I think black would just come in deep, maybe yeah, a bit deeper. But the problem is, if you're doing that, it means your clearance shot with blue at red has to be. You've got to give it a bit of distance or not put it out, which obviously leaves red, which leaves red the hoop shot. So yeah, putting putting black there, I think you could almost leave this. To be honest, just play it in, right? Yep, that's mm. probably what I do here. Because if you put it out, sure, you, get, you can go on the line, which is good. That's the risk you take, isn't yeah, it, when you're trying to hit it on the side? If you're trying to cut it on the side, you can just go straight past it. It's happened to all of us, that shot. Yeah. But now Levi's faced with a bit of a dilemma. Does he come in tight and just ignore red, let him have the jump? But if he clears red anywhere past black, red's clearance on black is to a long boundary. Sometimes if you don't know an opponent very well, I sort of test out the water, see what they like early on with the jump what, shots. Let them let him have a go at it. Let them have a go at a jump if he, shot. If he gets it, he gets it, and then you know, okay, yeah. let's not let him not do, let him it do again. that again. <laughs> yeah, because I don't think Levi's ever played Ethan before. Ethan's come all the way from Australia. You would have seen him in the doubles, and that's about it. Yeah, and they both went to the recent Under-21 Worlds in New Zealand last year. However, I don't think they played no, against they each other. No, they didn't. They would have been in different blocks. So, red at black here. I guess like this yeah. could be testing the waters with the with the stop shots if he stays in front. But the problem is yellow is able to clear blue very easily as well. So I'm not fully sure if that was the right option there from Levi, but I'm sure he's... He knows what he's thinking. Yeah. He just plays his own way, probably. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a good enough player that he's, he definitely thinks this, if he, he's not going to do anything without there being a good reason for it. So this one will be probably just back in front, maybe slightly short boundary side. So if red clears it, it's not going to stay in front of the hoop itself and it also makes the clearance just a little bit longer. It looks like that's what he's doing. That looks pretty good. Yep. And this will be stop shot on blue, stay in front of the hoop. Mm, well, maybe clear on black. You could do that too. Uh, I think, I yeah, think I the think, stop shot's probably I think either, better. I think either works. It's just with mm. how close blue is, a stop shot, even if you mess it up a little bit, it will still roll in front. But you've still got to be really confident about hitting it in the middle and getting that control. Yep. But this tutuki that's coming up, the roke. Don't know why they call it a roke. 
Good question. I've no clue. I don't know. Oh, maybe he was no, going for black. He was very attacking there. So I'm, I'm actually he might, been, sort of, he might have been going for the hoop. Cause maybe. Maybe, maybe he was hampered from black with blue in the way. Yeah. That's how, well, it's hard to tell what, what someone's going for. The tactical situation can change if what, even one, one ball could be wired when, you th when we think it's not, maybe it actually is, and that changes what you have to do completely. So if we say maybe we would have done a certain shot, the other players could have a completely different perspective and that changes what shot they have to play. If we had a few more cameras around the place, maybe we've got it, but I think we're a bit limited on <laughs> what yeah, we can one get. Day. Well, <laughs> we've, only, we've only got three. We've got the camera yeah. over in the second corner out by hoop two. We've got a crane camera on hoop three, but no one's operating that at the moment. And then we have another one right by hoop one that you're looking at, that you're looking through right now. This is good from Levi, putting two balls in front, going for that yep. block. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, that's fine. Yeah, but then he's maybe even wiring it from yellow. So Through the just hoop. let him clear black. Let him, let him clear black and then yep. just have blue wide from yellow. Yeah, if that's the case, then you might try yep. and have blue onto black. Here. That's very, very possible. I can't tell what he's lining up. I think he's going blue. So in that case, yeah, it would be blue onto black. No, no he's it was going black. black so he must maybe blue must be open. Well, it's a good shot. That's what he's that's what he's done. So now we'll have to come back, shoot yellow at blue, and hopefully get it. Levi, just be patient here. Just keep putting it in front. Just wait for that mistake. And this this is really having that ex that experience shows he's not taking any unnecessary risks. He's just playing it in, two balls in front, keeping control, and forcing Ethan to play these big shots, because he knows that eventually Ethan will miss. So he's lining this up, and what's really interesting is how, not being from New Zealand, Ethan's got such a different technique from everyone else. He hasn't come through this mm. youth squad program coached by Greg, Greg Bryant, and he's playing it very differently. There's a lot less casting. It's a lot slower. It's, it's probably close to how Mikey casts. Yeah. But it's still completely different. Still quite effective, though. That's right. There's no, there's no right or wrong technique. It's only what works for you, and it looks like it's working for Ethan at the moment. He likes it. Oh, I think he went through the middle of those two there. So this will be a nice controlled hoop from Levi, in theory. And he'll be happy putting this a few yards in front of hoop two. So he lines it up nice and slow, and it's a really, yeah. it's a really slow way he casts. Yeah, still takes his time, concentrates, and I think, focus. I think Levi has one of the straightest swings of, of anyone yeah. in this tournament. Oh, oh has he has he sat in front of that hoop? That's a really it's nice definitely hoop. jaws of all. That's huge, and that's why the controlled hoop, uh, running a running a hoop under control, is so useful at this level because it's almost worth two hoops to Levi. It's going to be so difficult yes. to uh, remove the blue from there. Red might have to have a shot at this, maybe. Got a better angle than yellow. Yeah, it looks like, it looks like yellow, if it, if it shoots, there's, the angle's not good and would only hit blue onto the hoop. Even reds doesn't look the best, but... No. Trying to squint at the camera and see what it is, but it's hard to tell. Maybe a small chance of it in off, or he'd just be happy to stay it. Any any movement is good. He only has to slightly get it. But he's taking his time. His he's taking his time. He sticks to the routine. One more look up at the ball. Look down once again, and bang. No, I mean it's a it's a difficult left. shot. Yeah, very hard. He's still not out of it yet though, because. Then Levi's got to think, do I stick it in the jaws now because red's on the boundary? I'm still and clearable. Red, red will be able to clear the black. So then you almost you almost let him have this one. If it's jaws, if it's only jaws yeah. ball and not runnable. Obviously if it's runnable, Levi will just put it through. I think Ethan's quite an attacking player, so he likes to go for his shots. Oh yeah, have you been watching him play in Yeah, a couple other of games. games, yeah. How do you reckon he's been going? Oh, he's been going well. I mean, he's won five out of he's won out over oh, half his games. I'm not sure if he won. No, he lost the last game to James, so oh he's yeah. five and six. 
which is a reasonable effort. Oh yeah. And in in the in this tournament where everyone's been beating everybody, there are upsets. Even going five and six doesn't sound good, but you're actually still right in the mix because everyone's been having. Oh, yes, he's moved it. He's got it. That was a great shot. It was. I wonder if we get a replay of that. Yes, we do. He's barely nicked that. That was a fantastic shot. That's the only way he could have hit it to move that blue ball, and he has. That's a fantastic two tuki from long distance. Oh, he went through. Oh no! Even okay. there, he did go in off. Oh, he went in no, off as well. Yeah, okay, that's off. even that's even better. Not I did not realise that at all. Not at all. <laughs> that's even even more fantastic. I thought it was incredible that he just barely nicked it in the right direction, and then he goes through. Did show a lot of emotion. I no, he didn't. I had, I had no call. Just like, oh yeah, nice shot. He moved it, but no, straight it's almost, through. It's almost a fist pump one for me. Yeah, I'd be I'd be pretty <laughs> chuffed with that myself. Because it, it is, it, I guess it is slightly lucky, but yeah. it's not no, really because you no, aim for that's it. That's what you're aiming for, yeah. so if you aim for it, you get it, good, good shot. A lot, of, a lot of these players, you might see them getting lucky a lot of the time, but in fact, these guys will go for shots knowing that there is the off chance that something yeah. like that can happen. happen. And it so does. In, a, in a sense, they're good enough to almost make their own luck. Yeah, invariably, it does happen. And I wonder if we're going to be seeing the double clearance here. He's going to hit blue slightly on the left-hand side. Maybe collect black. It's that'd not. Be, that'd be the ideal shot. It's one. Of, it's one of those ones that you don't aim for it, but it's it's there, mm. just like we said. And anything can happen. It's a good double, so chance again one. Yeah. Nice and slowly. A lot slower than the Kiwis do. They they usually cast about the same speed. They play their shots, but Ethan does this very slowly. Yeah, the way he was pointed there, I got a good angle from here. That was sort of where his feet were pointing in that direction. Yeah, it doesn't. I was going to call it before he played it, but I thought better not. Yeah, so <coughs> you're saying it doesn't really matter if you're if it looks like you're aiming right, your feet have to be planted yeah, well. Yeah, still going in the same right direction. So it's very important to make sure your feet are in the right place, and I think that's why we all stalk the ball among yep. other things. Stalking is important. Nice shot from nice, Levi. Never good clean hoop. And is he going into that other hoop again? No, not quite. And this is another one of those shots where Levi's gone behind the hoop, so it's really important here is to get a nice wide position where blue can't hit you. So that's two one to Levi now. He has got enough room to come inside there. Yep, and if blue's open, blue can just clear red. Oh, that looked like just. it was about to hit it. I thought it would have for a second. But it's position. Looks like that's about, be about level with black. Yeah, no, I think he's quite. left it back deliberately, so blue doesn't... It's not too close to blue to clear. Yeah. I wonder if he was going for the block at red. Yeah, potentially, yep. I feel like what you said is the better option, though. There's no need. You don't want to leave it where blue will just decide to clear yellow instead. Now we're trying to do a good shot, stop shot on black. Keep it in front. Yep, and I think this is a, this is a, still a sense of Levi wanting to kind of test his opponent and see, yeah. see how he's playing, force him to play these good shots, and then you can kind of get the measure of them and think... Do I need to start playing these bigger shots and taking a few more risks? You'd play Levo would play this very differently if, if for example, yeah. it was it was Josh, Josh someone he knew, someone yeah. someone he knew is very very attacking, is able to hit all these big shots. That's a sign of a good player, though. You got to play the person you're playing against as well. That's not, right. Not just your own game. Sometimes there's no need to take huge risks if you're playing against someone who, for example, doesn't like to do jump shots or. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the only thing I can think of. A lot of some people really don't like jump shots, and some people really do. Some people will go for bigger hoops. Like I know, Luke's been very aggressive. Yeah, he has. So you might be trying to protect the hoops a lot more against against Luke. But I, for for Levi, I think Ethan would be a bit of an unknown quantity here. You kind of don't know what you're up against, which is better for Ethan, honestly, because. He'd probably see him, Levi would probably see himself as 
he'd back himself to win. Definitely. So there'd be a, there'd be a bit less pressure on Ethan. Yeah, they go through. Never touch, never touch the sides. And he's so chilling. He's <coughs> he's happy with it. Levi he's knows he's in for a game here. Oh yep. So that's that's two all. And especially with that shot at two, do you think that might have rattled Levi a bit? At hoop two, with he got mm, the in off and went nah, through. Nah, I said it before. Pre Levi's pretty chilled. He's pretty. Yeah. He doesn't get too flustered. What's going on? You just kind of put it down as oh. Yeah. That that just happened. Yeah. It is what it is. We move on. Yeah. That's a good mentality to he have. I think. He bags himself, which is fair enough. Yeah, I know. Uh, after the doubles, a couple uh, yesterday there was a youth squad coaching session. Not yesterday, sorry, two days ago. There was a coaching session and. Greg Bryant, the sport development officer of Croco New Zealand, he was saying that sticking to a routine and knowing that you have the evidence to back yourself is really, really important. Mm. And Levi obviously knows that he can hit his shots, so he doesn't need to worry, or that's what he thinks anyway. Knock blew out of the way. Yep. Red of it went a bit too far away, but still good clearance. It's not easy to hit these on the middle every time. So uh, Black would just go back in again in front of five. Would you even think about blocking this from red through hoop one? I think Levi's mm. looking at it. Yeah, he is. He was looking at that. Ethan's not, which is very interesting. I personally like yeah. to make sure I look at all the angles yes, just yeah. in case. I think yeah. it's even even if you're pretty <coughs> sure it's not blocked, I think it's just good practice. Oh, it is because sometimes you might you miss can't, something. Yeah, you might miss something. It pays to take that extra your two or three seconds just to have all the options in your, front your of you. Your opponent might have gone and put a ball that looks like it's in perfect running position, and then yeah. you go and have a look at it, and it's actually not. It's rod right on the wire, or it's not. It's yeah. really angled. He's going to clear yellow. Which yep. Might give red no choice, but to come in here if he can't see black. Yeah, it looks it looks like he is lining this up. Yeah, he can just, so it must be just open. it. But it's really it's really intelligent play from Levi. He's looking at the hoops. He's looking at every angle, every uh, every little thing that he can use to his That's advantage right. to make mm, the game that definitely. much harder for the opponent. Oh, that looks straight. Oh, just missed. That looked like it was hitting from where we were. And now this is a really good opportunity for Levi to go 3 2 up and have a he's good advantage. Ran, he's ran two good hoops already, controlled from this distance. And at this point, this is kind of where you're getting in the zone. He's just hit a couple of good yeah. rokes as well. You get in the zone and you feel like you can just hit everything. Which yeah, you can. Look at that. Number one and oh, controlled. Look at that control. That is that's incredible. You could not put it any better than that. No, perfect. Force the opponent to hit from long yeah. distance again. Perfect is the only word that can describe that shot there. Or oh, car pie. Good shot. And so Ethan will have to take two shots of this. It's not worth putting a well you can no, put you another can. ball in. It's it's a it's a very interesting dilemma you've got. Do you put a ball in, or do you take two shots? I tend to put a ball in here. Just give yourself a chance, give right? Give yourself a chance, half a chance. Because then, even if you hit, even if you hit, then that's right. Yeah, there's nothing there. And now he's in big trouble because Levi just pop another one in, and Ethan's going to have to do another two long rockets to. Even that's right. Get back into the soup. So now it's going to have to be red, red at black. And he's playing, and the, the angle he's playing it, if he misses, he's going to be offside. Yeah. So if he misses this, Levi's going to run this with control, and he's and then Ethan's going to have two really long positional shots over to the next hoop. Which is still very, uh, they're very much able to put them straight in front from there. Oh, but yeah. it's just all these little things when they add up. These little minor things, and they can turn games. Just forcing errors out of the opposition. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> oh, and that one mm. looked close as well. But you notice it's really good that he keeps his head down there as yeah. he plays his shot. He only looks up after he's done. Yeah, I like his swing. He's got nice action. I hear the 
popping this probably down to the boundary. Yep. I think you're probably just a little bit far that you want to really think about exactly where you want to put it. Running it to the yeah. boundary is probably a safe it's, bet. It's not much advantage by just going halfway. Yeah, yeah nice shot. Runs it cleanly. It looks like he seems to not be having too much trouble with these hoops at the moment. No. I think he really has gotten in his zone. And it's going to take Ethan putting balls in front to really put the pressure on Levi. So that's 4-2 now to Levi. So I think the, this shot here is really, really important for the game. It is. Go put pressure on whoever, Levi. Whoever, to makes, hit. whoever makes this hoop, either of them will, will regard it as a huge win. It's, it's the difference between 5 3, 5 2, sorry, and 4 all, which is 4 3, sorry. And 4 4 3, when you run it down to the next hoop, it can very easily become 4 all. Yeah. But then if you're, if you're 5 2 up and then you're 1 away from going to 6, it's very, very difficult to come back from. So I always think about hoop seven as a hoop you really want to get, no matter no matter what the score is. Because yeah, if you're five two down, really, you've got to win five one, yeah, or five zero to win the game. It's, yeah, it's, it's like there's a new game and you have to win. Yeah, yeah five five one five nil. Hard to come back from. So here we go. We see where this one ends up. Oh, a bit of a bobble. Just it looks okay. That actually looks really good. Yeah, very good. Yeah, and looking on the camera, that's that's really good position. So he hasn't let the pressure get to him. And so Levi's going to have to decide again two shots or put a ball in. And I think Levi will back himself here and he'll just put a ball in yeah, with blue, black. play it with black. black. And the clearance with black is going to be a bit shorter anyway. It actually looks like he's, no, he's shooting like at this. Shooting at this. I wonder why. Maybe he just decided he wants two shots. He's really, he really, really doesn't want to give him the opportunity at seven, no, so no, he's no, taking no, two shots. Now that's a fantastic Got shot. It. Go it out, blue. Blue going out. Ooh. No, it hasn't. You see the Levi raising his hand there, and we'll see where he um, puts in yellow. We'll have to see what yellow's clearance might on blue leave is a like. Rush for blue down to the other end. No, a little bit. Oh, that's possible. Yeah. Uh, the flick off blue. Get down to the next hoop. The problem is, even if you do that, blue only goes to the line. And that's a seven yarder to hit red. And yeah. I don't think I don't think with how Levi's playing, I'd leave him that seven yarder. I wouldn't I wouldn't back him to miss no, it. It's too not much, not enough to bet. It's too much of the a flick on it. So Levi's probably going to go for this as well. I'd say. You reckon? Yeah. If if uh, if blue is in a spot where it can be cut down the line. Yeah. Then yes, I think you have to go for it. But the snuggle can also come into play. It can. Bang. Yep, not quite on the right side, but still it's away. It. <laughs> and these are such these are such small things we're talking about. Oh, he's only he's hit it on the he hasn't hit it on the right side. We're not even thinking, oh, he hasn't hit it. No. <laughs> Where like these these are just the smallest of errors. And they're not, they're not even really errors because he still hit them. And that just shows you how good Levi is. And having, having beaten Josh when they came up against each other two games ago, I think, that I, I believe Levi's leading the table at the moment. Yeah, I think Levi's just had one loss and Josh has had... Yeah, just, no, two, oh, two. two losses because he lost to Mikey. Oh, right. No, one, no, one lost. One. He only lost yeah. to, no, he only lost to Mikey, you're right. Josh lost to Mikey and Levi, that's yeah. what I was thinking. See, why not? Just with this shot, I'm wondering if you're going to come in that far where red can hit you, why not just come in a little bit closer? Yep. Because it looks like yellow's going to have that hoop shot anyway and it can only clear you to the line. I feel so like Levi could have come up to the side, closer. maybe. Maybe he's thinking he can't make that. Maybe. Don't know. We'll see what Black goes for here. Yeah. Again, Levi will have had a reason for playing where he did. I think he's de he's debating. He's going to put it in, maybe, and leave yeah. a couple of jump shots. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he did three against Josh. He did in his huge game. Yeah. as well, mm -hmm. didn't he? Yes, he did. That would have been incredible to watch. 
And the other two weren't far off either. Whoa. Yeah, he's looking at Blue here, not even thinking about the hoop. He's looking at Blue's Blue's line, whether Blue's going to have to do that ha ho tada picky jump shot. And now it's the stop shot on Black here. I wonder if Blue's not blocked. Is he going to try and mm. nudge Red over slightly? Oh, I think he, he might did. have. I think he... Has he done that on purpose, though, is the question. Potentially. See what Levi lines up here. No, he's he's holding this in his normal... Normal stance. In his normal stance. When he, when he jumps, he holds his hand slightly further down the mallet. It's a nice little stop shot there. Yeah. He isn't in front of the hoop, but it's still okay. And then black will be able to clear yellow. But Ethan will probably come deep here. Yep. Yep, he's gotta he's gotta come a pretty far back so that we don't have any black won't be trying to cut red anywhere. He's actually gotta come almost off the line. So a little bit short. Oh, he's no, in the jaws. In the That's jaws. not what he wanted. No, not at all. So I think Levi will actually. We'll send yellow away and. Yeah. Um, you could even you could even leave yellow there, and just play back. But I think clearing yellow is the right I think option. Though. Try and control black and just it doesn't want to go direct. Yeah. In front of the hoop because that gives red the opportunity to clear black. He'll want to stop it and come out. Uh, yeah, in the direction yeah. that he has. I was trying to work out what it was on the camera's perspective, but that was, that's the direction he wanted. Yeah. And that means Red has to choose between do I go all the way through the hoop, make sure I get the entire way through, and then risk leaving black open, or do I try to come and really cut the margins, uh, cut the mm. margins really fine? And then risk not being fully through at all, so which it looks means like he's going behind black. Almost in line with it. Is it a is it a long range snuggle Just attempt? Behind a little bit. That's good. That's that's about all you can do in that spot. Put it in front. Usually, usually when you're in doubt, putting a ball in front of a hoop is usually a pretty good option. That's what I was always taught when I was starting out. When in doubt, go for position. Of course, there's a bit of nuance as to <coughs> where where you position it, but the general idea. Yeah, red's limited in what it can do here. Can it just go through the hoop? Yeah, you just have right. to tap it through. Oh, Ooh. not even far enough, I don't think. They might have to get a ref and check if that's gone through or not. They're both looking at it. If they come to an agreement without getting the referee, then that's that's uh, that's a okay. I think just because of how they're mm. looking at it, they are going to get a referee. Yeah, well, and I'm sure, do. I'm sure one of them is ready no. to, ready to come on. I know a couple of days ago in the doubles we had a, we had a bit of a moment where Levi was actually playing and he thought a ball was through, uh, and it turned out that it was just barely not through. Yeah. Do you remember this? No, I didn't see that. Yeah. And we had to we had to get three different referees on to have a look at it. <laughs> How many different opinions? Yeah, it was it was it was like really close. I looked at it; and it was the closest I'd ever seen. Do they I actually thought it was through until I. Do they not through. use the wire these days? No, no, they did. It? They did. They did, but we we decided to start with, and then the third referee had a had right. the wire, and you can't you can't drag the wire up past the hoop to so it moves the ball, but you can look at it and say, oh, it's going to touch when you put the wire uh, around the back of the hoop to see if it touches the ball. I think they come to the conclusion here that red is not through. So then he's clearing blue. Yeah. Do you, if red's not through, do you jump this anyway? I think I think you would from that oh close. Yes. Well, you won't get the option now. No, he's cleared it. That was a good shot. He saved himself. But I think... I think I would have jumped that there just because it makes mm, it makes put, red harder to get down. Do you put this on the side now? No. On the side of the hoop, so it's if on red side comes of the hoop, out, yeah, black can get close, and then you clear red and with blue. Black can black can be the the danger ball. What's he doing? I'm not sure here. Is he looking at if he can tap it? What he can do? 
I'm not sure why he's looking at it from this direction. If they're trying to work out whether it's through or not, they should already have done that. Yeah, you can't change your mind. <laughs> I think he's just barely trying to tap no. it. Yeah, yeah, I think that's through now. I it's think definitely he just through now. now yeah. So that is... He didn't, he didn't tap that. it much and it rolled back a bit, but I think it's through now. Yeah, but there's, there's no uh, disagreement, so it's it must yeah. be a pretty clear situation. But that'll mean that he has to jump with blue. Correct. You can give, give it a go with black. I mean, he has, he has yeah, made he these. He would head back himself. He'll be thinking, I've just done, I've done one of these at this exact hoop. This is my favourite hoop. He might give it a bit more height, just to uh, make sure he doesn't nudge red back through the hoop. Go for that ha-ho tarapiki, the jump shot. It is, it is his favourite hoop for jumps. And again, hoop seven, really useful. Oh, off mm. the he did, off did the give it a, Yeah, close. In and out, looking on the replay. And he didn't bounce that, he went on the full and oh, it hit, it hit just below the crown, I think. Yeah. But that's lucky. Sometimes they a, drop back onto the ball and that's actually in the jaws. And it hits it through, I was about yeah. to say that. It can, it can just hit the bottom of the crown, go straight down and, and hit, the, hit the red ball through. And if two balls go through in the same shot, it's whatever, it's whatever ball is closest to the hoop, yeah. whose hoop it is. So that would have been Ethan in this case. Once again, Mikey comes onto this lawn. He did that twice in the last game he played. Yeah, he's been. It's 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 not even because he's hitting it hard because everyone's mm. hitting it hard. I think the balls are just slipping mm. under the barrier in just the right spots where they're not pegged down. Would have been interested if he hit one of those balls, put them back in place. Yeah, and a lot of these balls are in critical positions. So if you hit one of them and you didn't know exactly where you were going to put it back, it could be a, a bit interesting. But anyway, Ethan's gone and played this to halfway. He knows that he has to he has to sacrifice this jump shot. Whatever happens, happens. Slightly angled. I don't know if you find the straighter ones harder or the angle ones harder. Oh, I think it's just longer ones that are harder for me. Yeah, that that sounded true. like it was clean. <coughs> yeah, was. that was very clean, straight through. A fantastic ha uh, ho tadapiki from Levi. There's at his favourite jumping hoop. That's five two now to Levi. Oh, and Ethan, Ethan is playing the snuggle. He's trying to stop Black getting down to the next hoop. But just, I think, just because of where Blue is, I don't know if that's the right idea. Mm. But he, he might not yeah. have been able to do anything no, else. No, he might not have much of a backswing. And if he can't get down, he may as well block do Black. That. This could be a two-ball game for a while. Yeah, it could be very interesting. You've got to be thinking, though, many... You've got to be thinking multiple hoops ahead and that the snuggle situation can very much change when someone's about to run a hoop. Yeah, Liv might, Liv, I might want to get out of this situation quite early, I think. It may, it may be a chance to put red up Ag against the hoop. Against the hoop. No, no he just he's, played away. He doesn't want to play as part of this. And I think that's a good decision yeah. from Levi. He's 5-2 yeah. he's up. There's no need to... And red, no it, to red is in. still behind the hoop yeah. and still got to come through the hoop to get up to the next one. And with, with blue where, where it is, blue can probably clear yellow. That looks like a good shot. Yeah, we'll see if Levi's got a double. I think if he does, he might just attack the hoop here, honestly. Even though even though maybe the right idea in theory is to go for yellow. No, he's 5-2 up. I'm if not you sure. yourself. Yeah, but I'm not sure red can get to the next hoop that well. So if he clears yellow, he might have a, a better opportunity with black. That's getting true. closer to them, red. That's true. Anyway. Well, he did, he did go for the hoop. He did. He was he was feeling it. He was feeling confident. Well, he has run some nice hoops, so. And he knows that he's still got the shot with black. He did go through the hoop. But he did it cleanly and came all the way up to hoop eight. So a good Ooh. shot by Ethan. And those shots, you can kind of, you can almost just play as positional shots. You just have to make sure you ground your mallet so you don't come through and hit the hoop. Yeah. Not because it's a fault or anything, but just because it can mess up your shot. If you, because hitting hitting the hoop with your mallet is not necessarily a fault in itself. It's only if you crush it and squ basically squish the ball between the hoop and the mallet. So Levi going for yellow here. Yep. I don't. I don't think with maybe if red or was in hoop. front as well. 
he, I think I think he will decide this time. I go for yellow. Yeah. He'd be like, okay, let's calm down. Let's not let's not mess around. That one might have been a bit. Yeah, ambitious. A bit, a bit ambitious, <coughs> but this time it's further away. He'll go for yellow. That's my bet. No, it was the hoop. Or it could have been the yellow when he hit the hoop, but yeah. either Who way. We never know. Either way. So this look likely is going to be 5 3 here. The blue and black aren't in the worst position. They still no. have first shot down to hoop 9. And it's one of these odd numbered hoops where. If you run it with control, you have a really good chance of making the next hoop too. Nice short little shot, and it actually... I thought he might have gone out a bit deeper there. Why is that? Of, well, because of blue goes in front. Then black's got black is actually a good block. block. Yellow from knocking away blue. It makes, it makes the block that much easier. Yeah. I'm not sure if Levi's looking at this. I think if he was, he'd no. be aiming a little bit closer in yeah, front of the hoop. True. But it's still... The the wiring shot with black is still a lot easier than it would be otherwise. Mm. I think I think it's definitely worth looking at. He might play the black towards the hoop, aiming for position, and if it rolls along that blocking line, then it's the bonus. Yeah, sometimes I take the shortcut and just go... Just, just, block, just, it, yeah. just block it from close yeah. in. Because if it's a short shot, even if it's n nowhere near the hoop, you should still be able to get it, right? Yeah, in theory. But and these lawns are still quite slow, so... That'd probably be a bit easier. Easier. But it looks like Levi hasn't really... No, he's he left it open. That. He's like, OK, I'll let Blue can have a shot at it. And yeah, sorry, Yellow can have a shot at Blue. I'll hit the seven-yarder and yeah. Black will run the hoop. Yeah. But when you're as confident with your seven yarders as, as Levi is, these lines of play just open up to you. You just let them have a go at whatever they want. And you just back yourself to hit. Yeah, nice good shot. shot. But there you go. That's that seven yarder he's got to hit to make um, Black have a shot of the hoop. And even even though you give them the seven yarder, it's still... like If, this, if they're going to hit it anyway, you have to think about, is there anything else you can do? But a lot of the time, there just isn't. You have to. Mm. You you, you have to no, move the you ball. No, you have no choice. You can't just leave it. I think I've said this before. That's why the second ball is just as important as the first that's ball. Because right. he put Black in a good position to run the hoop. Where the, the first ball can just can't afford to go too too far or too short. Yep, that's right. And that's why he maybe went a bit deeper as well. Just take that out of the equation. Just make sure that you do get that ball in front yep. with the way he's been running hoops. And he's got that. Not as much distance as he might have wanted. That's more of a maybe maybe an eight yarder that Red's got at black. Very very gettable. And I think with how Ethan's been doing his rokos, I'd think he might get this one as well. Levi would have wanted a lot more distance on that. And then you start thinking. If it hits, if it hits black and doesn't go out, then yellow may have a rush on red. You could never even yes. plan for that, but it's something that could happen. Taking his time, nice swing. Yeah, nice shot. It's a good shot. And that's good where he's ended up. Yeah. Because wherever we, wherever, uh, wherever black comes in, red does have the seven yarder, just as Levi had before. And it shows that power power isn't everything because even though Levi hit that really hard, it, it wasn't accurate and it made the return row okay just that much shorter. Yeah, he's, he's still giving um, Ethan the chance to clear that. He could have gone deep. Yeah, he could have. So now it's the same line of play but the other way around. Ethan is now the one who's got the seven yarder to hit. Yeah. And Levi's knowing this so he's decided... I'm only going to, if I miss, I'm going to end up on this boundary anyway. I may as well shoot through. Yeah. If I miss, it's it's fine. But if I if I get it, it takes the whole seven yarder line out of the equation. Yep, and he's yep, got that. That's good. It's also really powerful to play a clearance on the ball that just played before you if you can, especially if you get control. Because if you do that, 
uh, the ball that you clear, it can't just come straight back. A lot of the time, you play a clearance, but then they just come straight back into position and you have yeah. to do it again. And if you've just lost the ball that you've cleared with, and it's gone really far away because it didn't hit it on the middle, then you get in trouble. Take a bit of pace off this shot. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to hit it too hard. Yeah, he's done that. He's played that well. Went a bit to the right near hoop five. He'll be looking. He's been looking at the wire here for yeah, on yellow. Black at, black at yellow because. Again, as Levi shot through with blue before, saying it's okay if I hit, if I end up on the boundary, Ethan would be very happy saying, okay, if I, I can shoot through at this black ball, and if I miss, I'm on the boundary anyway. Yeah. So he's picked a spot. And, and at this level where everyone can hit, everyone can roke anything from anywhere. No, he's come up a little bit short there. Yeah, when everyone's capable of rokeying anything from anywhere, wiring things through hoops, through yeah. other balls, through the peg, are really, really, really useful here. So Ethan going to clear black. Yep, shooting through like he, like we said before. We try and take both balls to the line. Yep, I think you want to be hitting this on the left hand side, if you can. Mm, that's going up short. Yeah. So and clearance for black on yellow. I. I don't know if he... Oh, no, no. Yellow just cleared black, so yes, yeah. that would be a clearance. It would be a clearance from black onto yellow there. That's why it's really crucial that if you are hitting it hard like that, you yeah. do need to make sure you go out. If him just a little bit harder sometimes. Now, I'd, I'd almost be a fan here of hitting yellow to the line, shooting at yellow here. Yeah. I think he's quite happy where blue ended up, though. It's coming no. up a little bit short. Yeah, looking on the camera, it is actually a little bit more angled than it looks like to us. And Levi's thinking about this. Does he take it on? He is capable of running angled hoops, but does he want to take that risk? No, I think he is taking it on. He's taking it on with black. He's like, wherever blue ends up, if if I get cleared, I've only got a seven yarder on red, I've got this. Yeah. May as well just go for the hoop yeah. and just take it all out of the equation. And that's not that's a bad okay. rejection. Good rejection. He's on the short boundary. Just don't want to miss the hoop totally on those ones. Yep. And, at, and most of the time, if you've missed the hoop, something's gone pretty wrong. Yeah. You're not going to be doing that too much. He thinks Levi's got a chance of making the hoop with blue, so he's going to clear it. I think you have to, even if you don't. Blue yeah. jaws is it. I haven't really seen Ethan's jumps. I don't know if I don't know how good they are, but uh, he's done pretty well. The ones I've seen. Oh yeah, especially at the Worlds for the last year, he did oh, yeah. some very good jumps. I know a lot of a lot of people today have been hitting the crown. Yep, nice shot. This gives Levi the chance to clear this with blue, go off to the line, hit it on the left hand side, bounce off to the line. So it's a bit of battle, a bit no, of a battle on this. He's, he's letting him have this one. Now, I always, I always get not not angry, but I'm like, mm. when when someone just puts a ball in like that, I think I've been I've been challenged. Yeah, he's he's saying oh, I don't think you can get this. I'm happy to let you go for this, and I always like I always find it real satisfying to prove them wrong. wrong when you run make the it, hoop, run the yeah. hoop anyway. So we'll see if Ethan rises to the challenge here. I don't know if I would have let him have the shot, to be honest. No, probably not. I, I guess you are you are five three up, and if he if he misses it, you're in the driver's seat to go to six. But well, he's back in the game though. If he does make yeah, it, runs exactly. all the way down to the next hoop. Exactly, and yellow is on side. It's an important shot. And he got Fantastic it to the end. Shot. He has and almost the run down. Control on that. So five four and in control of hoop yeah, ten. Yeah, Levi's going to be regretting leaving him that shot. Yeah. That could almost be a turning point of the game if Ethan manages to get this hoop because then you're going down the middle, it's 5-all and the Rokos are quite short even if uh, the opponent has first ball in front. Okay, Ethan, a bit of confidence as well. And he's taking two shots at this. Yeah, I would have been inclined to come in between red and the yeah, yeah, or even go with blue. Or even come out to the side. Yeah. Force, force red to have a shot at the hoop. 
from yeah, but he just did that in the last one, Paul. And it's, no, it's, it's, even, it. it's, it, it's even further away. And would you back him to do it twice in a row? Although that's the point where mm. it's like, where it's like you keep you keep gambling and you still and you keep losing. Yeah. But I don't know. I feel like I feel like playing. You're playing the role of averages here. Yeah. Like he's going to get one and miss the next. Well, well, you're not you're not going to get every single one. No. And it, and that does. To me, it, it it just looks a bit further away. It feels it feels more difficult. And because if you miss, then you've got two Check balls nice. in front. Made it easy for Ethan here. Yeah, he's just two balls in front. Yeah, and now he's probably forced to go with blue here. Now, what what would you have done? Well, he has to hit it now. He has to hit something, I think. We'll go for the hoop if he can see the hoop. Well, black, if black's wide on yellow, then it has to be the hoop, right? Yeah. Or yellow. But that still leaves red the shot. Well, something, yeah. <laughs> you've got to, you've got to shoot and hope you hit something. Let's see what it is. I'm picking Lethem to go for the hoop because yeah, I saw him do yeah. this against Josh. He just, well, he just ran a really good one. He's looking. Yeah, oh, he, off the side, he did go side. for it. Yeah, it was the hoop. Oh, so close. I think it's also valid to, if it isn't already, try and nudge yellow a bit closer to the hoop yeah, and in wide still. position as well. Blue is offside. It depends if it's wide from black at the minute. If it's already wide from black, then no point in risking that's right. nudging yellow and that, making that, it not wide. That's right. <laughs> oh, oh, no. It looked like it bubbled a bit with the lawn there. He was just trying to control that through the yes, hoop and not did. go there too was a far. Huge little yeah. A little jump on it, it hit something in the lawn, but we'll have to see if this is wide. I feel like if it, I feel like it must be, because Levi yeah. played that shot before, going for the hoop instead of the yellow. Although Levi has gone for the hoop a couple of times. Gone through the hoop. He has gone through the, through the hoop. And it's actually shaping up to be a really close game. It was looking. It was looking in the early stages that yeah, Levi yeah. might almost it was run away with it. Five two up. Now the ball went to five four, and even in control of hoop ten. But he must be. He must not be wide, which is really interesting. He didn't. He decided not to promote it. No, I oh, love this shot. He can see the whole thing. Mm. Maybe should have. Maybe should have promoted it. Yeah. In that case, yes, probably would have done. Yeah. Should have done. Oh well, sometimes you can see it, but not feel like you're confident enough at doing yeah. it. Yeah, and which is fair enough. That's well, brought Levi back into the hoop, though. Yeah, so Black Black has a really nice shot at this, and I, I somehow I don't see Red going for Black. No, it's a brave shot doing that. He'd probably more come in for the block. Or go for, the, or just go for the blue. Or blue, yeah. I think the the block is very good here because you're in front even if you are. Yeah. But Levi hasn't missed many hoop shots from that range this game. No, he got a great one last game against Josh. Yes. From that, oh, that was hoop hoop eight. And and even hoop seven, the huge boundary jump. Yeah. Or maybe. Was he? I think he was going for the block, but he just rolled a couple balls too far. But that's okay because you're still in front. It's a bit yellow to be cleared here. Yep. Down the, to the boundary. The Yanoff is there as well. Yeah, but you just aim. I don't mean to be aiming for that. No, you're, not, you're, not aiming, aiming. you're not aiming just for aiming. it. Just hit the middle, hit it to the boundary. Yep. Let even have the shot for for uh, blue. Yep. Pungo at Kofi. Oh, oh not barely. And it's actually, it's almost straight on at red. So Ethan's got to be really careful he doesn't hit this blue ball yeah. into the red. Because if he does and the blue hits the red straight on, then the blue ball's not going to go anywhere. And it's going to remain in front of the hoop. And you're going to hit it to the boundary. Short boundary. But you have to hit it. Or, or you hit it on the uh, right-hand side. No, the left-hand Le side. Send it way up the lawn and then you'll be on the short boundary. But I think, that's, that's, yeah. I think that's slightly more difficult because of where the angle is. 
It's probably worth a gamble, I think. We'll have to see what he does. No, he's going to the safer option. Yeah, I think, I think that's probably. I mean, but it's easy for us to say, "Oh, you know, just hit yeah. it on the side," but it's, it's always harder than it looks. And the advantage of it is that with the yellow where it is, it is an outside position. Anywhere, True. anywhere anything comes, uh, yellow will be able to clear. Half clearance, good shot. Oh, Levi. nice mid pacer. But I'm I'm seeing the line from blue to hoop twelve. If red plays this right in front, why is it from black? Black plays in, yellow will be able to get a if Hoop yellow 11. can hit blue in the middle. Yeah, get to this Hoop is, 11. This, this could be yeah. huge for Ethan if he sees this. Well, he will be going for it. I wonder what Levi's doing here. Just playing it up. But is he going for a snuggle? I think he might be. No. Right. Or Ethan, just trying to hamper it. Ethan's really got to go for blue here. Yeah, that's a... It's so, it's so, so good if it works out. Hit, hit blue on the middle, end up travelling in the direction of hoop 11. Yeah. Run it with red. No, he's not doing that. Going for black. Going for black. It's not, it's almost the same distance. So yeah. why wouldn't you go for blue? Yeah. He's just playing in. Going for the jaws. Oh. I think blue was the option there. Yeah. I always try and look at the... Is it slightly amp ampered here, though? It could Maybe be. Maybe it's only half a ball. The Maybe thing that's is why he chose that option. Uh, at this level, people are really comfortable with hitting half a ball from mm -hmm. that distance. Yeah. Um. No. Maybe he's no, more he's, than half a ball. He's going for the hoop. Going for the hoop. This is really interesting. Okay, that's why Ethan did what he did. Yeah, um, yeah you can look at it on the camera. Mm. It is it is actually only about a quarter of a ball. Yeah. So this would be an incredible shot if this one goes through, and it would put him 6-4 up. Oh, mm. off the right-hand wire. Problem that Ethan's got here is where the yellow is positioned. Yeah, is, is yellow able to get down to the next hoop? And he's looking at it yeah, just to make sure... I think no matter what, though, you have to go for this. You have to bring it back to five all. He's went up his options. No, he no, obviously can't get to hoop eleven. So he's and if he can't, the safer one. Yep, play the stop shot. Yeah, yellow I don't, I don't, I don't mind that shot. Yep, okay. yellow, yellow will be able to come back. Block, block red from blue. It's just the problem is, I think he might have lost red a little bit, and now red's hoop shot is going to be a bit angled. It's hard to tell. Oh, on the camera, it's not as bad as it. It's not as bad as it looks from here. No, but yellow's definitely hampered to hoop eleven from that angle. No, you have to. You just come out. Yeah, come out towards uh, yeah, where we are different. and block <coughs> block blue. I think. Or come through the back, but then blue can just clear it. Give red the hoop shot. So Levi's come a little bit short mm, deliberately. Actually, deliberately. Yep. Yeah, so he is going for the block here. Okay, I thought I thought he was more blocked by the hoop there. I thought he would have to come out towards us. No. But he's, he's played it into position and possibly gotten the block as well. And yes, Levi. Happen? No, it's not blocked from that angle. No. A ball or two too short. And yes, Levi came short deliberately with the black, so if, if he did get the block, black would be as close as possible to the next hoop for the return rocker. So Levi going for red here. Yep, going for that that two tookie. Oh. Missed. That's the the first seven yarder I've seen him miss this yeah, game. Yeah, he hasn't I missed many. But could that be could that be the crucial shot? I feel like these two hoops. While while Levi's still been playing really well, there have been a couple of small, maybe decisions that could have been slightly different. Chance to get over to hoop eleven as well here. Yep, hit a lot this, closer. Hit this on the right hand side. Go go towards hoop eleven. Send black way out. This could be huge here for Ethan. 
Oh, that's Mess a good nice. shot. He's played that really well. Not in front of the hoop. It's it's hard to get it's hard to get there uh, like that. But he's on side. He he's denying Levi coming the up the chance to come really close to hoop eleven on his first shot down. So Levi will have to shoot at yellow. Long range effort here. And then the hoops in the way as yeah, well. Yeah, he's moved the clips. I'm not sure he's hampered that much, but you have to think about will it get in the way of his stance? Yeah. No, he's only he's only stiffing over it for a stalk. Yeah, a little bit. I think he is okay. It's just enough in the mind though, just to put you off slightly. Yeah, I think even even if it's even if mm. it's not actually in the way, yeah. you're thinking about it, and that's that's just another thing you're worried about, and you're not fully focused on playing your shot. So we'll see if he he comes back with a cast. Maybe yeah. he might twist slightly, hit the hoop. Yeah. Especially if he puts in a lot of power into it. Yeah, yeah. he has. He has. Yeah. So he's going to really he's got to really take his time with so this he, one. He's struggled to get a lot of power in this to try and clear yellow. So. And if he doesn't get enough power, he could hit the hoop, accidentally hit black, which would count as a shot, and black could end up being offside. Or two hopper. He takes his time. He's hit he the hoop again. again. He knows the shot is crucial. Yeah, he knows he has to he, shoot at yellow. He, he wants a full swing on that. Better, he needs sure he to be able it. to get it. Is there any other way you could play this? I guess you could get a bit. You could stand a bit further forward, get a little bit of jump on it. But it's not. It's not your natural stance, no. is it? And I think that's what he is doing. He's standing slightly further forward. So he's he's sacrificing he's sacrificing that calmness in order to get an actual shot at the ball. It's be a great shot if it comes off. Oh, and he's hit the hoop third again. time. It's not a not a fault. You're allowed to hit the hoop. It just you do have to hit your own ball eventually, and if it if it gets in the way. If he does it again, he might think, well, I think oh, this is sacrifice this hoop and, and think of on. the next one. Move on. What what else can you do? Blue. Oh, he's hit it. He's hit it. Oh. Oh, oh did he bounce over the top? That was close. Interesting to see the bounce, replay here. Did he bounce over the top? My eyes are glued to the screen. Oh, no. No, I, just I don't, to the I side. Th I think he was just to the side of it. And if FIFA makes this, it makes it 5-all. Yeah. Good comeback. So it doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be hard. It has to be whatever he's comfortable with, and he just runs it, strokes it through, hopefully. And that will bring it. Try and control it. If you go to the boundary, you go to the boundary, but. I think you just run this however yeah, you're you comfortable run, with. Yeah. Running it is the main thing. And that's what he's that's done. That's good. Yeah. He's going three quarters of the way down, but that's fine. That's really well done there from Ethan. And he's brought it back to five all with his red onside mm. for the next hoop. So Levi has to come deep here. Did say this could be a banana skin for Levi, and it's proven to be the case. It's just yeah, I think these these last two hoops, Levi's dropped off slightly, and he's taken the foot off the throat, and that's allowed Ethan to really get back in here. Now, do you cross wire this? Wire this from blue mm. across the hoop, or do you just play back? It's fifty-fifty for me. Yeah, I, I like to cross wire if I can. And it's quite an easy shot to do that from here. I'd say so. I think that's what Ethan's looking at at the moment. Yeah. Oh, oh and that's the that's that hour they've been playing for an hour, so that that's twenty minute quickly. time limit has come into effect. I don't think that twenty minutes is going to matter in this game I because hope not. I th well advanced at five all. I think yeah, they're, they're, it's a really, really close game again. Just like the first one of the day when uh, Levi and James were playing, they they'd gotten to an hour and they're only a hoop five. Yeah, I think they got a bit flustered, especially James, a little bit flustered of what was going on there. Yeah, I think Levi said he had to start rushing, which he didn't like. Yeah, to do. but he he's elected not to go for the crosswire here. I think yeah, I think yeah. that's almost a bit too deep. I think yeah. he could have come a bit closer than that. You know, like a, a yard here, a yard there. It just makes everything that much easier. For Levi, yes. Gives him options now. 
He'll, he'll want to come in nice and tight here. Which he has done. It's left the hoop open. And this even this even opens up the opportunity for Blue to just nudge Black, have two balls in front, and it wires red from the hoop. If it's not already wired. You're yeah, putting uh, yellow in a position where it's wired from blue as well. Um, wired from blue through black. So yeah. Levi can't just return and clear return and clear the uh, the blue ball. I think we might see either he'll either just put it in front, block red from black, and possibly the hoop if he can, or he'll just put it give in front's black. a little bit dangerous because red clears black. Yeah. Chance of a jump shot from Ethan. That's true. So I think it would be red at black now. Yeah. And he's shooting, he's shooting down through it. it. It's probably not a double, but I think it's close enough that you'd think, oh, maybe I might hit the hoop if yeah. I miss. And that would just at least stop me from... Well, what do you fancy? Going for the hoop from here or jump him yellow if he oh. decides that? It looks... I think... Oh, I think, I think I'd rather jump that with yellow than go for the hoop from there, just with where yeah. black is. It's, it's a controlled hoop if you don't get it. And then it could be a disaster if you hit if you hit it into the wire and you're sitting on the wire. Black jumps you. Yeah. You're not able to get down when you're five all. I think I think you need to clear black here. Yeah, I agree. Clear black. And then you see what yellow's got. A really crucial shot here. But Ethan's played a lot of these really well under pressure. He's taking his time. Is he thinking of going for the hoop here? We'll have to see. He hits it. No, no black. It's black, and he has That's used a good the hoop. shot. Yeah, he has hit it off the hoop. Some players will do that deliberately. They'll try yeah. and hit it on a side, saying, "Okay, I'll use the hoop to stop me." Yeah, that's an intelligent shot there. That is really, really good from Ethan. I'm actually very impressed by how he's been playing this. How how calmly he's been. Yeah. How calm he's been. There are many many players who you know you you're you're playing someone like Levi, and you're thinking, oh. This is really intense. I've got to... How am I going to perform under pressure? He's going to hit all these shots. I need to do all these big things. But Ethan's played it really well. Unfortunately, Levi is Levi yeah. not going to let up that easily. So no, he's, he's, he's got the option now of not going for the jump shot and clearing... Just clearing blue. Let red clear blue. Yeah. I think, though, if you are going to clear blue... You've got to stay in front. You do, which is tough from this distance. I feel I feel like going for the hoop is a good option. And it looks like that's what is it happens. Open? It looks like it. No, he did no. clear blue. That's still okay. Yellow's around. But I can't tell if blue if blue wires this from yellow, then Ethan's in trouble. He's coming back in. Yeah. But we talk about how calmly Ethan's been playing it. Levi's also much yeah. the same. A very, a very chill player, as you described. I think these are both going to be cleared. And you'd say probably as the game drags on into the closing stages, you'd start backing Levi more and more just with how he's been yeah. there before at, at the top end of national tournaments. Oh, when he was down was it against James, I think it was two hoops down with 10 minutes to go. He was, he, and he brought it back. Showed good composure. And he ran the winning hoop, but that's a really good shot from Ethan on the middle. Just allow yellow to clear blue. I'm assuming it's open. Yeah, it looks open from here. This would be really, really interesting for the tournament if Ethan were to get the win here. It does open it back up again for Josh. It would, it would put Josh back in... Josh and Levi would be equal again, I believe, and then it would also, obviously, Ethan would move up. I'm not sure who's third at this stage in the tournament, but, but I, I think there's still three or four losses. I know Miles and Luke are people I can think of who've, who are right up there as well. I think they both won seven. Yeah, I think Nathan may be. He's won six, but he's lost five, so yeah. he's a bit far behind. This will be blue. Oh, I just see Jessica just beat Nathan 7-2. Oh, wow. That's that's certainly, I wouldn't say unexpected. Jess is perfectly capable of beating him like that. But yeah. they've both been playing really well. I would have thought that would be 
a closer game. Although sometimes the score doesn't necessarily re- reflect the result. Like one of those one of those doubles games, I can't remember which one it was exactly, but I think it, Levi and James went up 5-0. Yeah. And I, oh, it was Levi and James against Josh and Jess. Or was it Nathan and Mikey? That was one of them anyway. But they went up 5-0, even though there were good battles over each hoop and they were, they were like both playing well. I think it was Nathan and Mikey playing against Levi and... Um, no, it was Nathan and Mikey against Josh and Jess. Oh, I can't remember. I can't remember. Yeah. Anyway, Levi's back in control of the hoop. Now, do you go? Do you go for the hoop here? Or do you if go it, for if it's on? If it's on, yeah. Are you going to get a better opportunity? Maybe not, unless Yellow's got a double. It was the hoop. Yeah. It was, and that will give Levi good control to the next hoop as well. Yeah. And that's what we say about Le- Levi's ability to close games out. But of course, it's still not over. Whoever gets this is only 6 5 up. Mm, oh. Taking a risk. He's saying, Are you good enough to jump on the boundary? Yeah, he's saying, That's not happening. I'm going to either play blue to halfway so I have a ball closer to the next hoop, or I'm just going to rush black down. And I like that shot from Levi. It gives you total control of the next hoop. Yeah, I think I think that's. That, that really shows the calmness that Levi's got in this situation. Many, many, oh, oh, even most players would just run that hat down, get yeah. that control, which is still a really good shot, but this, this allows you to just maximise everything about this hoop. And it will also mean that Geller would be offside and would have to play from a penalty spot. True. So he goes here. I know he can jump. I've seen him do some good jumps previously. This would be an incredible shot. No, he's he's playing it flat, I think. No, no what? Oh. That looked close. They'll definitely Got the purchase on it, all right. Yeah, they'll Looking definitely. The power. I'm surprised he didn't stand further forward to be honest. Yeah. I uh, that's that's amazing how much how much height he got from that. I was thinking, hang on, he's standing, he, he's standing, he's uh, not standing far enough forward. He's gonna, he's gonna try and cut off blue down to the next hoop. Well, Lipo's got a couple of options here. Mm. Yeah, so what do you do? Three. You can promote black if you want to, but then you're you're worrying about is yeah. blue gonna stay behind the hoop? I think, I think, yeah, I think you'd just be putting in the block here. Put in the block, or just go halfway and let him. Yeah, have or a go. halfway is the other option. Yep. I think I'll be doing the block. You can't control this. in a great position to control black down to the yeah, next I'd two, be, though. I'd be really tempted, and Levi's been playing a lot of AC recently. Yeah, where's the blue going to end up, though? No, that's what he does. He is, he's, oh, oh, this is this is very okay. interesting. If you're gonna, if you're only just gonna tap it, why not deem it? Is my, is my thought. Yeah. And it, it looked like you didn't change the angle or anything like that. Yeah. Showing even a bit of respect here. Yeah, he's not not going to risk it, and Le- Levi's playing this. Yeah, he's minimising any risk at all, even the slightest. So Ethan's got a choice of going halfway, thinking of the next hoop or going for that. I think you've just got to look at blue, see if it can go down to the next hoop. I think maybe yellow can't see blue anyway, so he's always yeah. going to make that hoop. So he said, "Okay, you can have this hoop." Yeah, stop any I of try these. And Use my red as a clearance for one Stop hit twelve shenanigans. Now, is this the case where you'd want to leave it still, let blue promote it down, so then red has to clear black, or would you just give black? Oh no, no, black will play. No, yeah. no red will still have to clear black. Yeah, no, it doesn't matter. It'll just have to clear it in two shots rather than next shot. It's gonna leave yellow where it He's is. Leaving yellow there. Maybe maybe he played this on purpose so that yellow would go down to the boundary and that and then black could run it to a wide position. But also, if you were going to do that, you'd probably want it to be red that's there, so black's wide from red. Yeah. So maybe he wasn't thinking of that. I think no, I don't. I don't think that that would factor into his mind. No, I'll probably do that. It's a harder angle for Ethan to get in front of the hoop. Yeah. He's done well though. Ethan's putting up a really good fight. And 
and it's, so. it's good to see that he's coming he's coming all this way and really really giving everyone a run for their money Levi mm. going for the block here I think no, yep. come a little bit read short it, read it like so let's see how look on the camera see how angled yellow is no I don't know if that's runnable looks yellow. plausible yeah looks jawsable but Eva's still got no choice so I think gotta get a clear black yeah well yeah you do I think the hoop is way too risky. Personally, anyway. But I think Ethan's been quite... He's been quite good at picking and choosing when to take the risks. Yeah. So I feel like he will he will go for black here. Oh, no, it was the hoop. Mm -hmm. That probably wasn't the time to be that... Aggressive. Because um, even even if you do run that hoop, Cause it, if, if you, you only if, if you only hit it softly, you might not even go through far enough. We clear black, put yellow in the jaws. I'm not sure Levi will maybe go for it just in case, put yellow through. Well, he's got to decide, yeah, whether yeah. whether I try this jump, and this gives the opportunity for Levi to close out the game. Yeah. And I think this this experience has really shone through in these last couple of hoops here from Levi. After, oh, he's in no, the jaws. Jaws. Well. Now this makes it interesting. If Ethan gets the jump shot here, Black's going to be hampered getting down to thirteen. Yeah, well, I still have a shot down there, but it, it just won't be as easy. Yeah, not as easy. But Blue goes down first anyway. I think, yeah, like I was saying before, even even though the ball's still in the jaws, Levin's experience has really shone through here these last two hoops. Even even though at hoops nine and ten, he had a little bit of a rough patch. And here we go, we've got the jump. Ho ho tarapeki. I'd like to see this go through and take it to the thirteenth. Yeah, so we support support good croquet. Ethan deserves it as well. Yes. Yeah, easy. Good no shot. no dramas there. Lovely shot there from Ethan. You wouldn't think he's under pressure. A lot of these No. Like hoop hoop nine, hoop ten, hoop twelve here. They've all been nice, calmly strokes, no no, no, ax no, no speeding it up. No, no jerking around. Nice, sm uh, one smooth motion. It takes the time out of the equation now. Being six all. Yep. You stop the clock. That looks quite good. Now where's yellow? I don't know what Yellow's you can see with either ball. They're more or less in line, aren't they? I think you just. I think you shoot through here. You're going to end up on the boundary anyway. Can you see blue or red or yellow? Oh, if he, well, if you can't see either of them, then, mm. well, there's nothing you can do, but I think he has to shoot through. And that's what it looks like he's doing. Yeah. And, you know, in the interest of good croaker, I'd love for him to hit this shot. He'd get a lot of applause here if he did. From what the assembled spectators? Yeah, about a dozen. <laughs> Which is pretty big for a, for croquet. Oh, he's looking, he's looking, he's looking. Oh, oh, just on the left. He's still got one more go. Yep, he takes another shot. He's still on the boundary. Now if he misses, if you're Levi, do you just put this in the jaws? Um, no, I think no, Levi will probably go for the hoop. Yeah. Hey, well, he, he did put it in the jaws. But he's, the done, he's done great with black there. That's a good shot. So now you might play for the block. I'd just be reluctant myself to let someone have a go. You you know, it's... if Imagine if you let someone have that go at the boundary jump yeah. and you're like, oh, and they get it, and you're like, oh, well, of course I shouldn't have done that. He's run those sort of ankled hoops many a time, so... And, and with, how, with how Ethan's jumps have been looking... He you hasn't give, gotten give any, him a chance. He hasn't gotten any long ones, but the height looks good. I, I'd i be hesitant to let him have a yeah, go. Yeah, I mean, Leo, I wouldn't give, give him that option. Even even if I wouldn't think it's... See what this one does. Likely. Ooh. Same. Right, it's right, like right the where. Same position. Same spot. Well, do you jaws? Do you block? No, nah, because if you it? go for the jaws, it could go wrong. Yeah. I think... Maybe block would be the better option. 
But what, I think what, Levi, what you, Levi's, Levi, Levi's going for it. I don't think you can block no. the hoop and black at the same time. It has to be one or the other. True. So, yeah, I think Levi would just be going just for run this. It. Run it. That's probably what Levi's thinking. If stop, you know, I'll just, I'll just run it. Yeah. This is it, hoop 13. Everyone's almost holding their breath, it's so quiet. Oh, yeah. no Maybe worries. Sure. That good was an game. incredible game. Very good match. Credit to Ethan as well. Yeah, he played so well, especially at hoops, at hoops 9 and 10. And that jump shot at 12. Yep. Yeah. He played that really, really calmly. I wonder if we would be able to get any of them for a chat. I'm not sure. It'll be nice to talk to Ethan and see what his Sorry, take ask away from match is. Yeah. <coughs> yep. So Brian's going to go see if he can grab Ethan. One hour, and failing that, we'll try and grab Levi. No, he's not keen. That's all good. They're still well, well played to Ethan coming all the way from Australia. Really, really taking Levi down to the wire. So it looks like uh, after this, well, first, yeah, it is a it's a good time as any to thank our sponsors, uh, Fakata Māori. Consider subscribing; they're the home of all uh, secondary school and youth sport in Aotearoa, not just croquet, but all sorts of stuff like rugby, volleyball, things like that. Uh, Bailey's, Caltex, New Zealand Carbon Farming, and Apollo Projects. And it looks like Levi is coming down for a small chat, and that was a, that looked like a really, really tense game. What was going through your mind there? Um, yeah, uh, I s made a few mistakes. Um, obviously, I should have ran 12. That was quite an easy hoop. But um, well, you can't get them all. Yeah, happy to have won. Didn't want to choke that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, it wasn't an easy shot on 13 either. It's no, quite it angled. I, I w we were saying that probably what's going through your mind is like, oh, I'll just run it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, if you go to hoop 13, if you have a chance, you got to take it. You don't want to just let the opponent have a chance. Yeah, that's so right. And we were we were thinking that Ethan's long jumps, while they were they weren't going through, they looked like they were getting the height. And the, yeah, the yeah, he had good. a good attempt on hoop 11. Yeah, um, he did. Missed, but it was like the perfect height and bounce to run if it was on target. Yeah, but I, I think it was pretty impressive from Ethan the way the way he was playing under his pressure. hoop running was really good. He did well to come back and make it a tight game. Uh, he's been playing pretty well. Yeah, so. and he's come all the way from Australia. It's good that he's he's given yeah. them a run for their money, yeah. right? It is. Yeah. Well, mm. thanks very much, Levi. No worries. Uh, we'll see you uh, see you tomorrow, maybe. If yeah. you're on, on the, I don't know if you'll be on the stream again, but we'll see. Hopefully we'll see no, I've been on here enough for <laughs> already, I think. Yeah, well, no, thanks very much, fun. No time to fluff around today? No worries. Just swing into Caltex and pay for fuel with Pay and App to speed on through. Oh yeah. Feels good. Use it at your local participating Caltex. This is an opportunity that we can't
funding is a real challenge. Uh, we know that a lot of schools face that ongoing and the reality is if you go to a lower decile school in New Zealand you are less likely to be able to afford to participate in sport. Obviously having come through it myself with kids and, and being one of those t kids myself who played sport, I know how much it defined who I was. And now being able to go, I can't fix it all, but we can help and try and give to those people who are going through really tough times.
Welcome back to the Under-21 NZ Golf Croquet Championships, sponsored by Terminator Mallets. Um, in this game, we have James Duggan playing Miles Duggan, and I welcome Robbie Spooner as my co-commentator for this one. Uh, kira koto. How's everybody? So, as we join the game, it is currently... Um, I hope it's not one all, because they're on hoop two. But from what I can see, Miles has won hoop one. And so that will be 1-0 to Miles Duggan, who's playing black and blue. And James is playing red and yellow. Hmm. Shortly won one all, you would hope. Yep. Yep. James makes it one all. James has been playing very well today. Um, had some pretty solid results, but has been hitting his shots very well. Lovely hoop. So, Robbie, what do we know about Miles and James as the twin brothers from it's Christchurch? It's a ferocious... Uh, Rivalry, I think, is is how we would describe their relationship. Yep. Bitter and competitive. Yep, you've got to keep your enemies close, though. Yep. That's it's nothing one. closer than twin brothers. Exactly. Oh, it's a little bit deep. There from James. That gives Miles the opportunity to come in nice and tight. Yeah. And Which he has done. That's a beautiful shot. Great one. Now James having to have a, another look at these balls and seeing if the Kikarangi ball is running the hoop or not. Doesn't look too confident about it, so he might just come in here. Mm. Almost looks like all three balls are in a perfect line. Pretty much. So he has been hitting his road game, so we'll have some confidence going into this. What would you do? Would you take position or do you think you'd shoot? I think I'd take position, mainly because, yeah, I think I'm coming nice and deep. I think blue's going to clear red, most likely. It's yeah. the most common situation, and red can't exactly go too far. So, oh no, he's lining up the, the black ball here. That's an interesting tactic. As you say, he's been hitting a lot of his rokes. No. No, that one's come off. off. Just come off the side. So unfortunate for James there, and it leaves Miles in quite a controlled position yes. in front of this hoop. And Miles will just be hoping to nestle up on red. Get the snuggle yeah. in. Yep. Nice and cosy. Ooh, which I think oh, he has done. Yep. It's, a it's like a good silk pair of pajamas there. <laughs> One of the trickiest shots, some might argue. Oh, it's, it's all it takes is half a roll and you're off. And yeah. Looks like James lining some kind of rush shot up here. Ooh. Oh. The double he's snuggle would have been a... Yeah, he's definitely made things interesting, though. It's always off-putting when you have one ball right next to your striker's ball. These hoops have not been kind to anyone this weekend. Proven time and time again to be extremely difficult. But Ooh. Miles making it look easy there yes. with the pungo ball. <laughs> Going straight through the fitty with his pango ball, pango portal. Now he would have hoped to get a couple more yards on that hoop shot. Yeah, it gives James a great opportunity to come in really tight here. Yep. First approach is often very important. Yeah. Looks like Blue had a nice line down to the next hoop. Just staying nice and close together, I think. We could set, see that being a bit of a theme for this game is lots of similar shots mm. given the relationship of the two players. Oh, now that is interesting. This gives Yellow the option of either shooting or playing a positional shot in. Considering the position of Blue... 
And if you're black, what's your choice here? I think it's a tough decision. It might be a double open on yellow on the hoop. From what we can see on the cameras, like it's it looks like a wire through the red and the blue ball yes. through to the yellow ball. So I think it's just tight position maybe. It's the best option here. Well, I was looking to put the pressure on. Yeah. Oh, oh no, yet another snuggle yeah, we got. He's not too pleased with that, unfortunately. That gives James playing the yellow ball, hopefully here. Kofi, Porto Kofi. And he looks to be going through the hoop here. And the current score is 2-1 to Miles. Looks hampered, so he's gonna mm. gonna get in his head a little bit here, probably. Oh, oh, shot! Now that was all touch. It was beautifully played, yeah. but unfortunately, he's hampered himself over to hoop five, yes. and looks like red is pretty easy to. Well, red's pretty hampered as well, so yeah. Miles. Oh, he's rolled a little bit too far. Just over the shot. It's two all. Battle with the twins. Mm. Oh, There's not much else you can do in that situation except. Yeah. That's a good shot. It's well played and stops Miles from really having any choices here. Goes deep. James has to come across deep as well. Leaving Miles with a open shot at the hoop, although it looks like it may be quite angled. Yep. So he elects not to go for the hoop there, he chose them to... Well, he's still looking at it actually. No. Nope. No, he made his choice, made his mind up. Take out yellow and essentially reset the hope here. It's a good shot. It's important that oh, his ball stayed around. You know, if you look at that, he's done very well there and some probably advanced level tactics and keeping his Kikarangi ball right in front of the pango and giving himself a promotional shot in front of the hope. And you should be able to work something out there and try to Sort himself for a free shot at the hoop on this next turn. With Siki Karangi ball. Good shot. Get pressure back on James here. Yes, he's got to do something decisive. Whether that's a hoop shot or clearing blue. Shot. Great shot. Fortunately with these bouncy lawns it's just flicked the top of the blue ball and sent yellow for right down to corner three over at the north boundary. Leave Miles about a seven yard shot to come back. This is often the uh, most difficult length it seems. It's the length you should hit. Probably 90% of the time, but well, he's Miles nails that. He's made it look easy. Yep. Now, where are you positioning if you're if you're James here, Robbie? I think 
James, he's done perfectly there. He's um, made a clearance on his ball. It's a little bit difficult because there's a chance that Miles kicks it into the hoop. Miles electing there just to go nice and close. Yes. Confident in his ability with glue to hit the red ball. Mm. Almost hopeful you would argue that James doesn't come and spoil his beautiful plan. Yes. James just coming back in. Yeah. Getting just himself. on a poor clearance or for himself to clear after being cleared. Great shot. Good, very good shot. Right in the middle of the ball. This is a big pressure shot for the hoop. Do you think it'd be more pressure or less pressure if you're playing your brother? That's a good point. I feel like often when you've got that rivalry, even the smallest shots feel they can build up if they start going wrong. And obviously they would have played each other millions of times. Many, many a yes. time before. Probably. So I'm sure they're well used to that. In several forms of competition. Yeah. Oh, oh that, just, that looks just roll whisker away. away. So Miles, full control of the hoop here. Worried about the yellow ball a little yeah. bit. They can often play in the mind. Selecting to call a, uh, a referee. So Alison Robinson comes out. Alison, the established referee. Yes, one of the best in, um, well, in, in the world. Oh, yes, and yes. in the world, yes. Mm. Refereed the McRobinson Shield and the Openshaw Shield and every shield there is to referee. Yep. Heralding from Te Whanganui Atara and playing at Kelvin and Wellington Clubs every now and then. So Miles is elected to play almost a jump shot. Interesting choice. Yes. Great shot. And well played. Well controlled. Obviously, would have. We like to be a little bit less hampered so we can control yeah. that position down to the next one. But Now he's potentially got the peg in the way. That looks to be a good shot from James. Yeah. This forces action on the Kikorangi ball. Miles just coming in again. Looks like he's putting pressure on Putting the pressure back on his brother. That's a great shot. Very good shot. Okay, let's leave another one of those seven yarders, which are so critical in this version of the game. was confident from before should be looking to take this yellow ball right to the northern boundary great shot very good shot he's looking like he could maybe if he got a bit lucky there he could have got the wire through hoop two mm. through to the blue ball and if he was luckier the balls would have been switched and he'd be in a Perfect position for the next hoop. Exactly. But these are things that you can only hope for from that kind of distance. Unless, of course, you're really feeling on your game. Yeah. Sure, you'll be going for that, wouldn't you, Robbie? Oh, this, you can always hope. <laughs> you can always hope. Oh, oh that is unlucky. And he has got the wire there, yeah. so Miles was yet another. Controlled yep. 
One yard hoop to give himself the 4-2 lead. He's looking to take full control of this game. Often the two hoops down the middle can play a pivotal role in the, the course of a game. I was just running that great shot. Very good shot. Yeah, running that hoop five just far enough mm -hmm. that he could get the troke on James's yeah. ball at the next hoop. It's crucial. Made all the difference. James coming in probably a bit deeper than he would have liked there. Mm. But he's more than capable from that distance. Oh, yes. At the same time. Just leaves a little bit of room for Miles. Now it's not elected. Now, Robbie, can you tell me about this YouTube channel that these guys used to oh, have so some control over? They did. They had a very popular YouTube and TikTok channel. Um, but it made, made famous, especially during lockdown, for um, some incredible trick shots. Mm. Um, now, I've heard rumours. Have you? I've heard rumours circulating at this event that... Given the live streaming of this, this, this magnitude, this ability of, of the people streaming and the quality that we're having from all of Croco New Zealand at the moment, there might be a comeback. Really? From some of the clips from this video. Now that would, of course, be an exciting return that we're be. all looking forward to. So hopefully we'll see some highlights from this game and that included. Definitely watch out for that. What does it look like James is doing? It looks like he might be taking on the hoop here. Yeah, this is pivotal for his uh, his hopes of winning this match. He's really trying to... He's trying to claw back some sense of competition in this match, which he has done. done That's well. a beautiful hoop. So he needed to take that, that aggressive shot on. And yeah. You get to a stage sometimes in games where if you don't go for the hoops, then... You just don't have a chance of mm. even contending mm. for a game. Now that's a beautiful positional shot. Oh, great this shot! Is exactly the response that Miles needed. To and James, show. James will be looking at this now, thinking he might, he might have to take the shot at. He might. Shot at it from with both balls. If he gets lucky, he might even make the hoop. Mm. Oh, there's been a few of them on this hoop. We saw Levi play. And Josh went to earlier, go straight through from about 15 yards out. Some um, spectacular shot, and they say the more you play, the luckier you get. Oh, exactly. <laughs> These players are some of the luckiest folk you'll ever meet. Yep. Must be something in the cashmere water. <laughs> so James, what is he lining up? He almost looks to be lining up a promotional he shot does. on red. Yeah. There's a bit of an angle on that. Now, I'm not sure. sure how much AC James has been playing, mm. but if he can cut this nicely in a nice little cut rush, he might give himself a shot on that hoop. Oh, and that's beautiful. It's a good shot. He's moved his red ball about six or seven yards closer towards black and now gives himself the best opportunity to make that clearance shot. Miles coming back in with Kikarangi. It's potentially a block. Uh, yeah. I, I'd assume he'd be aiming for it. Yeah. Mm. Just a couple rolls short, I would guess. James lining up the shot. It's a federal ball. Oh, now that was aggressive, but rightfully so. I think he had to go for something there. Yeah. He, had to, he had to really make an impact, and who would have got it would have been a great confidence booster for him. It but have been. Miles looking to make the game 5-3 here. Yeah. It really could have changed the tide yep. in uh, James's game. Unfortunately, it didn't quite come off. Oh. Now that is a... Hefty rejection. Now that looked like just though Miles might have slightly overhit that shot. Yeah. Often when you're confident, 
do tend to smack things with a bit too much power. Now does Miles have another go? What do you think? Um, or does he just go for a I stop th- shot? I, th- I think with how the game is sitting, with it being 4-3, Miles really looking to take that 5-3 lead. Yeah. He goes for the stop shot there, yeah, yeah. Probably the correct choice, and he's played it really well. Yeah. And he now takes a level of control over the hoop. He's got two balls sitting right in front, and James is all over the place on the other side of the lawn. And James lining up the, the clearance on Kikarangi Poro. Taking away the danger and essentially resetting the hoop here. Yeah. Great shot. Good shot. And now he does give Miles the first approach. Yeah. The hoop, but luckily his red ball has stayed handily close. And then another question is obviously red didn't quite go out there. Mm. Would you prefer it in that position or would you prefer it out on the line? I'd prefer it out just because of blue, blue now has the option of clearing red to a, a long boundary. Yeah. Um, some 25, 30 yards away. Yeah. James looking to continuous his aggressive approach yeah. and he's taking on Tango Poro oh, oh no that is unlucky so Miles has a big decision here looks like he's just gonna it's really become the battle of the two the two mindsets here yeah, yeah. aggressive and Control of the hoop. Mm. The Miles was uh, the early lead and yeah. pretty good 4 2 up going into the turn. And mm. James really looking to take his chances with it. They do say if your opponent has two balls in front, you should shoot for the hoop. That is, that is a common phrase I have yes. heard before. Yeah. So one would wonder if that's what's in James's mind right now. Looking at the live stream, we can't tell any different. No, he's no, taking the taking the black. That is just a good outcome. I guess he'd probably be confident in clearing the Kikarangi ball with Kofai and mm. sticking around in front of the hoop. This is really interesting stuff because we really are seeing a, a bit of a lesson in psychology here. Mm. Two very similar players taking two very different approaches to how they're playing this game. Brings up the question of nature versus nurture. Mm. As well. Being twins. I suppose who do you think would be the nature and who do you think would be the nurture here, Robbie? Yeah, a good, I, I don't know their parents. <laughs> Neither. So, so I couldn't I couldn't answer that question. Both of them seem to be very calm and mild-mannered in everyday conversation, but get them on the croquet lawn and they turn into vicious beasts. They do, don't they? Very formidable opponents. He looks to be taking on the, the black here rather than the blue. Blue from the camera angle looked more angled than we think it is. Mm. from where we're sitting. Now I probably would have preferred yellow stay closer. Again, it's a very aggressive shot by James to take that shot on and mm. trust that Miles is possibly not going to quite get this shot. On the second attempt... He manages to squeeze through. So we go to 5-3 with James having first approach at hoop 9. So two very important hoops here. Yes, yeah, that's a great position oh, shot. Beautiful by James. And 
if we're looking at most important hoops in a game of golf croquet, aside from hoop 13, which is mm. the obvious answer, what would you yeah. say is your most important hoop? Re- uh, well, I would say hoop, I'd say hoop four and hoop five are my most important because I find you often make, or it's very common to make hoops and twos. Yeah. Where you would make a uh, an odd numbered hoop and then an even numbered hoop mm. and straight line. If you're able to control your your hoop running, you're also able to turn that hoop running shot into a positional shot. Miles, you're going Ooh, for the, the long row, okay? Yeah. It doesn't quite get it there. I find if you can win hoop four, having also won hoop three because they're in a straight line and you can turn around and get control of hoop five, then you can really win a game early. And then even potentially win hoop six after hoop five if you can control hoop five. Yeah. Um, but I find those those turns, also hoop six and hoop seven, um, where you've got a sh- very short um, approach shot, mm. also short um, rocking shots, are um, mm. easy places to to regain control of a game or take complete control of a game. And James deciding there just to come in. He's not looking for the block there, I don't think. And just letting Miles have this shot, knowing that he can come back in and once again take control of the hoop. See a switch of roles with Miles playing the aggressor on this hoop. Oh, that oh. is unfortunate. So Miles just missing the two uh, two tuki, unfortunately, and leaving James with what could be a vital hoop. Mm. Controllable distance. I often find if you're running a hoop on an angle, it makes it easier to control as well. Mm, that's just a, a slight angle. That's an interesting observation. Yeah. I feel like I'd find the different. Uh, I find it the other way around. Do you? Um, that's interesting. Especially as an AC player, I'm never looking to be running it from an angle because I f- always feel like I get hampered after. Whoa. There's a solid rejection all the way to the boundary. And James just finds that you know, that inside wire and bounces off. Now Miles probably looking to clear yellow here and reset. Yes, it's not quite. I'd say if he was 6-2 up in this position, he might choose to shoot for the hoop. Great shot. Very good shot. Sticking around. With his, with his ball. He gets, the ball. He gets the, the two took again. Yeah, Pango, Poro Pango just sticks around on the side of the hoop. So James probably coming in nice and deep here. Not giving Miles too much to play off. Mm, and ensuring that he gets the option to shoot at the hoop. Whether or not he takes that is yet to be seen. Miles left with a few options now. Does he shoot it? Does he shoot it yellow? Or does he just go and sit in and trust that yellow's not going to do too much after it gets cleared by black? Do I go deep of yellow? Yes, that is an interesting choice. Now, why do you think he would have done that? I don't know. Overcoming short. Because he clears yellow to the boundary or takes tight position and then yellow can just clear blue he's to a long boundary. Mm. So he's, he's done it because he's taking that tight yes, position. That's the only... So that's why he's made that choice. And this leaves James with a great opportunity here. As I would think James could look for that wiring through the red ball onto black. Try to look at the cameras here, it's pretty tough to see. Oh, he's but, ooh. really sticking to that aggressive. He's just nature or nurture. He's got the ha ho tarapeki coming up. If there's one thing these Kashmi boys can uh, can do, it's jump the ball. So his hands come slightly down the mallet and he stands slightly forward and he plays it like he normally would otherwise. Mm. That is 
And it looks like it's just gone off to the side. It'd be great to see a replay of that one. So as we'll see, he jumps it and he's, yep, just off to that side, just pulls it a bit. To leave Miles is a nice shot where he can just... Oh, he would have hoped for more of a cut on that, down to hoop 10. Mm. Unfortunately, still leaving James with a shot on black. Yeah, no, a nice eight-yard shot where James again has been mm. hitting these all day mm. pretty well, so you'd hope. Also giving James the option to uh, cut off black and land on the boundary, which is mm -hmm. a very powerful um, shot to have in your repertoire. Mm -hmm. Now the more aggressive approach there by Miles would be to cut red on the other side and try to get his ball down to the next hoop and mm. ensuring him the first shot and just kind of hoping that James might not quite get this one. Which he hasn't. That is breath. Big sigh of relief. Miles. So Miles now about a foot out from the hoop at uh, hoop nine to go six three up and have control over the next one. The yellow ball obviously offside having come off that missed jump shot. So this is a super important shot for Miles Duggan here against his brother James. Oh, and you can see by his body language there that he's just not quite happy with how that's ended up. Hoop looked like it wheeled around on the ground a bit and mm. it's just dribbled through about two yards through. Very unfortunate, giving James first approach to hoop 10. Now, if you wanted your ball to go further through the hoop, than, uh, than Miles is just there. What would you be thinking about if you line up the hoop shot? I'm thinking about smooth. I'm not even thinking about the hoop really. I'm thinking I want to, the ball to land on the line behind hoop 10 and usually that's about the perfect weight. Hmm. Um, you can never predict how much wire you're going to collect when you make the hoop. <laughs> More often than not you collect none hmm. and you sail through. Um, mm. And you look pretty cool, but <laughs> but uh, strategically, it's not exactly the best outcome, yeah. especially when the options there. Now those are two great positional shots. Oh yes, and James. And James now arguably well in control here. Yellow looking in a jawsable position from there. If he can make this hoop and turn around with one or two good rokes on hoop eleven and he's well back in this game. Very much all still to play for in this game. Miles making the choice to just come back in, not thinking that James can run up from there. It's probably the correct decision. James still have a hoop shot with the red ball, but choosing to go for black here. Taking the risk with blue. Mm. Choose your battles, and I think giving Blue the option to either make the hoop or clear is, um, at this stage in this game, the right choice. Mm. Great shot. Very good shot. So Blue now with a multitude of choices, but you would think, as Robbie said before, two balls in front, you have to go for the hoop. I do. It's being 6-3 up, I think it's time for some glory. Glory shots. One. I mean, I've, I've seen Miles play these before this weekend. He did one against myself and Luke Francis in the doubles. And oh, it's yeah. a jump shot as well. Ha ha Tarapeki and Miles really going for glory on this shot. This is really just sticking the knife in and twisting it. And, st and sticking the knife in, twisting it, and the knife has to be rusty, and it's covered in oh salt as well. Oh. <laughs> I'd hate to be, like, in the car ride home after this one. Yep. 
the hotel and just looking at each other from across the room. So Miles. We're playing playing for the competition but also playing for bragging rights here. Oh, of course. I think bragging rights in this situation Miles, is much more important. Miles is probably still in the running a little bit for the singles here. Yeah. Going into the second round Robin. But Oh, oh that is so unlucky. Great height just comes off that mm. left leg. And unfortunately landing in a offside position for uh, hoop 11. And now James, so, um, James really with control over this hoop. He can, he can make, pick his battles a little bit here and maybe play some off. maybe play some really advanced level tactics. Mm. You're not wrong. But he does choose just to go for the hoop here. Just bounced Ooh. off that left wire as well. The yellow, nice and safe in front there. That's very handy. Almost an option here to uh, to jaws yellow mm. and um, do the thing. Do the thing. The thing, of course, being um, flicking off the yellow ball as you make the hoop and going over towards hoop eleven. A Paul Kaiser term. Mm. Coined apparently at one of the youth squads a few years ago. We love Paul Kaiser. Absolute masterclass in tactics from Paul Kaiser this weekend. Oh, what a yeah, shot! That is phenomenal. Take that one to the bank. That one's going to cause some arguments. Yeah. Now James just needs to take control back of this hoop, which he has done. Um, Pretty much exactly the same position he was just sitting in. Now, what does Miles do here? Does he play for position? Does he shoot with black? I'm seeing these as pretty much exactly the same length shot from yep. both black and blue, so I'm, I'm shooting for position here because I... I have confidence in myself. If I can hit one of them, I can hit both of them and mm. take the shot, which is going to give you the most advantage. Yeah. Do you think Red's going to come and try the block here? I think he's just playing for position. When he's and got that nice and us. tight. Yeah. He's blocked himself from the hoop yeah. by the look of the camera angle. But Miles still to play black onto yellow here. Mm. But because of the good positional shot, he's just played... Yellow becomes a clearing ball rather than a, a shooting for the hoop ball. Yeah. Now the aggressive option here is to take the red ball and leave the shot with yellow and regain control over the hoop if yellow does flick off a wire again. Um, and you might see James or well, James shot for a very similar shot at a hoop eight. But Miles here looking like he's playing the playing the percentage play. Oh, now that didn't sound perfect coming off his mallet. No. I have to wonder if um, maybe he's mishit that just slightly. Yeah. It's a game of inches, this. Yeah. Mm. Now the uh, thoughts of doubt might be creeping into uh, Miles's mind now. Um, mm. Now, if you're James here, do you go for the? Do you go for the stop shot down to corner four? Or are you playing it and trying to flick off and leaving blue probably in between the middle and corner four and getting yourself over? I think a standard stop shot is important here because you run the risk of overplaying your your yellow and wiring yourself mm. um, for the next hoop. So in comes the tutuki from James Duggan. Very good shot. Yep, great shot. And that leaves Miles about 30 yards back on the red ball. And he's just having a look for a wire. Um, which he might have achieved. Oh, 
making sure to get the line and position correct. Yep. And I Miles just, has to shoot. Yep. I'd say he's um he hasn't left a double, which is why oh that's no mm. good. He that's hasn't left a double, which what? is why the uh, the position of blue on the line was important. Yeah. Could you explain a double for us, Robbie? <laughs> so a double is where you have two targets, whether that's two balls or one oh. two balls or a ball in the hoop. Um, either perfectly next to each other in a, in a line or um, less than a ball's width apart so that you're guaranteed to hit one of them. When you're shooting at a, a double, what are you shooting at? What ball are you aiming at? The middle. That I always middle. aim in the middle. Yeah. That's confident. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, that is what we call an accurate shot. Unfortunately, I always aim at the ball on the right because I know for a fact I'm going to miss to the left. That is interesting. You always miss on the same side. Really? I wish I was consistent like that. A great lovely, shot by James. Lovely controlled shot. Um, you often will try and control um, hoops 4 and 10 in the hopes that um, you have a shorter positional shot. Yep. Across. It looks like Miles has overplayed that one a little bit. Yes. I was talking, talking about before this, it's a bit faster between hoops two and three there, and Lorne does really kind of let the ball keep going. So we might have seen a little bit of a, a result of that in that black ball's position. One of the most crucial shots, one could argue, is um, the positional shot. Um can really make the difference, especially in if you're trying to control hoops. Now if we have a look at the camera angle there, it looks almost like a, I wouldn't say a double, but like a half double there where he's got two targets and if he misses one enough he's going to pick up the other. So I'm mean, assuming he's aiming at the blue ball here. Very domineering stance. Oh, yes. Oh, he's gone, gone straight through the middle. Right through the middle. I take it back. <laughs> Aim for one of the balls. <laughs> Aim, oh, you hit it here yeah. first, folks. Yeah. So Miles taking this yellow, leaving himself... <laughs> A yard in front with the blue ball. Great shot. All comes down to this. This is a critical roke. Yep. Critical to Duki for James here with the Kofi onto the Kikarangi. If he gets this, it does essentially reset the hoop, and Miles probably will have first position back in, but if he doesn't, then it's, it's wraps. Great shot. Lovely shot. But unfortunately, Corfi has gone straight down to the south boundary and that'll be a very difficult roke back. This shot's important as well. It's a great position. He's executed. Might even be wide. So Miles having a quick look at that. James, no no second thoughts, straight up. Yep. Straight for the two tookie. It's a must hit. These are the shots you train for. Some moments see how the practice lead to. Oh. oh. And he's really not and far off with those ones. Away. Being great to see a replay if we have one, but I'm not sure we do there. So Miles will come back in, take control again. 
he's just he's rolled off again. He's not liking that. Uh, so this shot now becomes just as critical as the last one by James Duggan. Miles has left the door open just slightly. He's whipped it through. Whoa. Oh. Again, so close. Have a look on the replay there. And he's come through and just was paint a coat kind of stuff there. Now Miles to win the game. Oh, Ooh. again. He won't be happy with that no. one. This is on uh, hoop seven, hoop eight. Sorry, might be uh, playing in his mind a little bit. Often when bad thing happens, not once but twice, it starts. Mm -hmm. It's very dangerous. And Miles showing a little bit of emotion on the lawn there, which is very rare for one of the Duggan uh, brothers. That oh, it's just too far. Just slightly. That roll of the ball. And you'd be thinking James here might just go back in. Looks like blue's okay on red becomes a difficult one if mm. the hoop's there in the way. Either that or you uh, go for an in off off your own ball. Because why not? If you don't go for it, you're no longer a croquet player, right? No. So Got the shot of the you're a race car driver and you no longer go for gaps, then you're... Not a race car driver. No longer a race car driver. It looks like James Duggan might no longer be a croquet player. We might be announcing his retirement right here. <laughs> no, Miles going for the cut on the red ball down towards the south boundary. And, ooh, ooh. just skims it. He comes through and... It's a very fine cut. Leaves James one of those five yarders, which is so, so daunting. Yeah, yet so critical. Of course. At this level, these players are looking at these and trying to think about a 90% hit rate. But in this situation, what's this kind of pressure? You never know. Mm. Unfortunately, he's only clearing opposition ball to a short boundary, giving Miles a chance to get back in. Oh, now that is definitely the pressure. Unfortunately, James just missed that Tutuki. And again, Miles missed the shot. He's got to look at this, right? Look at this. The confidence you is yeah, the confidence is waning, though. Yeah. I saw him lining up that shot. Lots of custom on this shot. He's very, very making sure he does everything right. He sure he's balanced. Go through the process oh, and oh, he's done it again. Mirror image. Uh, it's really got to be playing on his mind now. Yeah. One has to think whether this game is now destined for the 13th hoop. Mm. And James here yeah, was an, a hoop shot on what is proving to be a very difficult hoop. He'd be hoping to run this nicely and take control of the 12th to pull it back to 6 all. Oh. oh. Looks like we have a curse to. So both James and Miles struggling to run their balls through this 11th hoop here. At the under 21 golf croquet nationals. Thank you very much to Fakata Māori for the streaming of this event. It's allowing us to show great battles like this for all to see.
Also, thank you to our sponsors. Whakata Māori, of course, uh, Bailey's Real Estate, Caltex, New Zealand Car- uh, Carbon Farming, and Apollo Projects for supporting our live streaming of this event. As well to, as our great team for filming it all and making sure everything's running smoothly. So James seemingly lining up a tutuki on Poropango and taking that black ball out of the equation. Unless of course he's going for the hoop, in which case he really is a croquet player. And he's coming back. Yeah. No, it does take the shot. That's a good one. Very good shot. We've briefly be, uh, been joined by Mikey Lauer on the commentary team. Does Mikey want to make any comments on his last game against Levi Franks? What was the result? Uh, disappointing. I lost at 7-5, but... Uh, Another chance? Yeah, probably only two mistakes, but... I um, didn't run 10, got stuck in the jaws, Levi jumped me, and then only ran 11 by about a mallet head, so... Made it difficult to get down to 12. Oh, and Miles going for the two tuki on the core five ball there and just not quite getting that, just tapping that 11th hoop and that's sitting through. And James looking like he might be attempting the hoop here. It looks really angly, so it might make it quite difficult. Mikey, any comments on the state of play of this? Have you been paying attention at all? No, I've been playing. <laughs> It's probably a good point. Yeah. So we see ourselves another jump shot from F- Miles Duggan. With Poro Kikarangi over the Poro Kofai and Miles to once again take the game. Oh. And you have to say, that gives my, uh, James the control over this hoop and over the next hoop as well with being in the jaws and getting that first positional shot down. So James just playing up to the middle here. Mm. He's kept at it and he's been rewarded. He's been patient. Oh, so he's had his struggles with this hoop, but it's paid off for James. He's taken the less aggressive approach, and it really has worked out. Miles choosing to forfeit the hoop as well, and letting James have that first hoop shot down. Now, I, I get the feeling Miles might not be too happy with that positional black. Why do you think that might be? I think he was potentially trying to block yellow from being able to play a shot like that. That's beautiful. James Duggan proving time and time again why he's playing in this event and Miles proving it earlier in the game obviously. Now. Seemingly having a couple of rough hoops. See this is what I thought you might say is that James gets his first roke back at the black ball and leaves it at the long boundary. Ah. Now that is not a, an outcome I had explored mentally. In addition to this being great oh, shot, great shot. James taking the aggressive line here and assuming that if his yellow ball runs. He's now left his red ball in an onside position for Hoop 13. And that is what makes these players so good, is knowing that, knowing how to do that and executing it in such a way that he's now not only got a two-yard hoop shot to make it level with his brother at 6'6", he's also in a rocaying position for the next hoop and can regain control 
if he does manage that hoop shot that Miles coming through with the two to kick here. Oh, he just nicks his own ball. So James, an unprotected shot at the hoop here. Opportunity to level the game and take control of the final hoop. Shot. Very good shot. So it's a six all level game. Incredible mental fortitude being displayed right now by James Duggan. Mm. To come from six three down to six all. And now if you're a very good shot. If you're miles, you're you're looking to reset and he knows he can play the game. He knows he had the he had the chance at the the start of the game to finish it all off and he's got the ability so hopefully he can reset and make this last hoop an entertaining one for us. James's red ball obviously on side after his great last shot. But Miles positioning his ball in a great position where the only place James can clear it to is the short boundary. So James likely just going to just gonna come in nice and close and force Miles to play the Roke on the next shot. Takes away Blue's opportunity at the hoop. Great shot. Perfect shot. Potentially perfect wire as well. Mm. Poro Pongo makes his way to the northern boundary. Gives James the opportunity to come in with another tight approach and arguably take control of the hoop and maybe even control of the game. Crucial shot here. Yes, looks well weighted. Very well weighted. Great shot. Miles, not sure what he's lining up. He's lining up the hoop, I think. Oh. oh. Not the worst outcome, but definitely not ideal. An important shot there for Miles, and just a little bit off to the side, and in a game of such accuracy, yeah, unfortunately can't afford that against players like James. So this for sibling bragging rights. James Duggan was a one yard hoop shot. There is a lot on the line. That's a great shot. And that's the game. Shot. Great that, display of mental fortitude. And we see the Duggan handshake there. Just absolutely iconic. We could get a replay on that. That'd be really great. That's the one. Oh, look at that. Yeah. See, sibling bragging rights go to James Duggan, but the real winner is Croquet there. A great Croquet always wins. Croquet always wins. On and the a, day. A, a great show of sportsmanship by the both of them there at the end. Yes. So hopefully we'll be able to get one of them to come in for an interview. Have a chat to us about what was a great battle of extreme mental strengths.
I would. I would. We're joined here by uh, James Davian, who um, just come off the lawn. I just want to hear what was going through your mind there about midway through that game, you were 6-3 down. What were you thinking? Yeah, to be honest, I kind of already accepted that I was about to lose. Um, I wasn't playing too great, but, you know, there's always, you know, you always think you, sometimes you think you're going to lose, but uh, I don't know, I just felt like there was a bit of hope there. Yep. Um, but, so, yeah, I got a bit lucky at times as well with Miles. Messing on Hoop 11. Yep. Um, so, yeah, of course, luck played a part there, yeah, but yeah, very good. And uh, in terms of sibling rivalry and great matchups between you and your brother, where does this one sit in your all time oh, list? I gotta say, it's, it's probably the best one, to be honest. Um, actually, the last three games I've played him, he's bet me 7 6. Oh, so you've got your look back. Yeah, so I had to. Had to beat him on the 13th, but I was pretty proud of how I managed to kind of stay in the game and um, yeah, get myself back into the hoop of some good positional player. So yeah, perfect. And last question: um, How are you looking in terms of the, uh, the tournament so far? Is that an important game for you? Uh, well, I think it's important if I want to come into the top three or four. Yeah. I think it's going to be pretty hard to win it now with Levi and Josh. Only losing a couple games, so yep. margins are pretty fine. So um, yeah, but I'm I'm really enjoying the tournament so far. Yeah, it's been really fun, and all the players are really good. So yeah, perfect. All right. Well, thank you. All the best for uh, the rest of your tournament, James. Thank, thank you very much, Robbie. And it's all good. We'll be back shortly. Just fill up at a participating Caltex, stack your pump discounts, and you could collect more savings on your next visit. Oh, there's another one. Getting quite good at this. Ah, filling and saving feels good. Funding is a real challenge. Uh, we know that a lot of schools face that ongoing, and the reality is if you go to a lower decile school in New Zealand, you are less likely to be able to afford to participate in sport. Obviously having come through it myself with kids and, and being one of those t kids myself who played sport, I know how much it defined who I was. And now being able to go, I can't fix it all, but we can help and try and give to those people who are going through really tough times. Ladies and gentlemen, this isn't about what we wore back in the day. We're going to go now. We're going once. We're going twice. No more offers. Scored! It's about being trusted to get a better result for our clients since 1973. From us, it's a huge thank you to New Zealand Carbon Farming. The opportunities and the sponsorship that's been provided is pretty crucial for our school. We're buying new volleyball gear, so volleyball nets, balls, and the stands to attach the volleyball nets to the floor. Volleyball is a very popular sport. Kids find it to be fun. We'd just like to thank you from Total New High School. See <laughs>
Like no my hiding my. I think we are back. Kia ora koutou, welcome back. We've got Luke Francis against Levi Franks today. Well, today. This Not evening. This evening, yeah. You can tell it's getting a bit late in the day. I'm forgetting what to say. Anyway, I've got Robbie Spooner with me. We've The dynamic duo has returned. We I think we, we commentated some random secondary schools event in our heads like five years ago. We did, yes. It's a um, rare meeting of the minds, but... Um, Meeting of the Minds and meeting of Callum's black ball to Levi's red ball. Beautiful contact. Beautiful contact. Some players, when they hit the ball, you just, you know, there's something special there. Yeah. That's like Levi's big boundary jump. A couple of games ago, I think Levi said he was not wanting to be on the stream all the time, but. The manager has decided his fate. So who's who's actually playing? Oh, okay, blue, blue of the hoop. Luke's been playing really well this tournament. He is, He's in yeah. like third or fourth or something, and it's definitely not what you'd expect on paper. So huge congratulations to how Luke's been playing. Oh, nice. Not far off there. But the one thing I'm worried that Luke might start doing by accident is kind of overcompensating in terms of how aggressive you need to be mm. thinking oh yeah i need to play these big shots in order to win but sometimes going too far in that direction what do you reckon roberto i agree um often when you're playing a person of levi's stature somebody who's won national tournaments before um you take a more aggressive line because you figure that a shot at the hoop is if you're never going to get another one. Like yeah, it looks exactly. Like he's, it looks like he's boundary jumping here. Yes. Which in this case might be the right option. Yeah, but I think I think what's he's he's not maybe not putting the time into it that he probably should. Mm. Maybe think about it a little, settle yourself. Yeah. You see, often um, the experiences I've had with with Luke, um, those shots have a very good chance of coming coming through yeah, turning well, out well for him he has to have gotten a lot of them because he's won so many games exactly so um he's definitely one of the, the players you definitely um have to watch yeah you never you never want to play him because you don't know if he's just gonna he, pull out oh. pull out the magic maybe maybe it's the luke the luke francis curse and levi might be feeling it's a fix with that first hoop shot yes that's not a good way to s to attempt to open your account. And Luke's gaining compound interest on these seven yarders. Oh, this is the second one he's hit. Yep. He's reinvesting those dividends. But Levi's still going to be chilling. He'll just put that ball right back in front. Yellow will be able to at least jaws. Do, yep. you, think, do you think Levi would attempt to run it after that hoop shot with red that he's missed? I think at some point during this game he's going to have to do something to get his confidence back. Or such, at least such to... As, such as running a hoop? You mean yeah. like running like a big shot or just... A big, a, or just a, a, a shot you would expect to make, but after having missed that yeah. first shot you might have pause for question. So you might you might not run it with this yellow, you might think, oh, I'll or, just chuck it straight in front. Or you would, you would in your brain, you would think... Well, at some point I'm going to have to do a shot like this, so it might as well be now. Yep. Yep. That's true. You're, you're going to have to anyway. Yeah. A lot of the time, I, sometimes I think to myself, it's like, okay, come on. Of course, you, you know, might not be confident, but you're good. You have to mm, hit these shots. That's right. You know, just, just do it. Yeah, and having read there um, is extra um, reinforcement. Might this shot not... He can he can call on the cavalry and just have Red smash it through. Yeah. And so he is he is going for the jaws here. Oh, interesting. Don't know if that's peelable, to be honest. The further out from the ball from the hoops, the the finer your uh, peel has your, to be. Your peel has to be. Peel. Yeah. I know if I'm if I'm not directly straight on any any ball that's even slightly out of the hoop, I'm mm. really really doubting whether I want to go for that. Yeah. I think this is a this is the right shot to play here. 
Oh, and he's not far off. He was he was obscured there. Black's going to have another boundary uh, haho tadapiki, boundary jump shot. If Levi doesn't attempt to rush this further into the jaws or even through, I feel like having just seen Luke's boundary jump attempt, Levi's not going to try this. And it appears he's playing the snuggle. We do like a good snuggle, don't we, Paul? We do. Definitely, definitely Brian's been a big a big exponent of the snuggle. He and has been. He's been largely in favour of this. Now, Levi has left enough distance between the two walls. For him to uh, get over. Either over or a stop shot. And it appears but Luke was pointing at the ball to, to signify that the ball was there in yep. front of his ball. Yeah. And they've caught a referee. I'm actually not sure what Luke is attempting here. Some kind of humongous, crazy jump. Yeah. This would... I, I don't know if I've ever seen a boundary jump from that close mm. going through the hoop. No, because the amount of power you would have to get into it, because it's obviously going to travel up and over very quickly. The, the amount of power you would have to get into it for it to continue to bounce and get over... That no, that is, was not a good... I believe that... Was that clean? I don't think it was. I think that may have been a fault, and I think Alison will probably call it as such, but of course she has a closer perspective than we do. Yes. So we are not questioning the referee in any way. No. That's yeah. a big no-no, we don't do that. But I think, judging by how they're having the discussion, I believe yeah. they have ruled it a fault. Yep. Yeah. And Luke is probably wondering, how is that a fault? And Alison is saying this is how it was a fault. Yes. How can you tell it's a fault, Robbie, for, for the viewers at home? Well, if we look at where the balls have landed, um, black has gone an awful lot further than red, but the, the distance they've travelled and where they are in relation to each other um, is a pretty clear indicator that something has gone rather awry. Yeah, and a, a shot like that, I don't think you'd see... I don't think you'd see more experienced players attempting a giant shot like that. No. Unless it was absolutely necessary. That that would and that would be like thirteenth hoop of the world championship final type situation yeah. where you yeah. have nothing else. Yeah. And it's a complete Hail Mary. Yeah, and it, Levi has I think wisely chosen to put these balls back. Yeah. Gives him a clear advantage. And now he can decide if he wants to just run this with yellow or play it into the jaws or try and try and have some do some shenanigans here but it appears he is looking down the lawn he's trying to run that with control right in front of hoop two and he has oh it's a little bit wayward oh and do you think this do you think that that fault is going to weigh on luke's mind a little bit i don't think so i think he um he does attempt a lot of big shots right? big shots um, and he doesn't seem like one to dwell on um, previous errors. So if that makes sense. I think I think for him, any hoop or any number of hoops, um, I think he would be happy with. He'd obviously be hoping to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but do you think he's being like realistic? Yes, um, and he's got a real good opportunity now to uh, to get control of this hoop. All I need to do is just bring this back black ball within within Cooey. Yeah. Looks looks good. Perfect distance. But it's gonna be it's gonna be really telling what what hoops that Levi's gonna leave Luke. Yes, we, because we know that any hoop four or five yards Luke will probably go for it yep and he'll have a good chance of making those as well so it'll be really interesting to see if Levi's going to let him have a couple hoop shots early in the game and then if Luke gets them then he gets them and Levi knows not to do that in the future yeah but if you let him but if he misses those hoop shots then Levi knows that maybe they'll get in Luke's head a little bit mm. and he'll start thinking oh I've missed maybe I might miss this one yep 
and it also means Levi doesn't have to put himself under as much pressure. That's right. So there's a bit of bit of mind games here from Levi, but it doesn't look like he's letting Luke have these chances, which I think is I think is a good idea. Yes, and Luke's now playing for a wide position between the hoop Big. from Red. That's right. I think I think it can almost be equally uh, an equal psychological blow when your opponent just doesn't give you any chances, mm. even even small ones. Yeah. You're know, like, just when when will I get a shot? Just let me have a go. Yeah. And what's is yellow to play, right? Or is it no? no it's black to play. Okay. He's just having just a look. At it. Yep. What are you doing here? I think you just you just bring it in, right? I would. I I um I think he might be thinking about a block. Oh yep. Um. So bring it in on the line between yep. yellow and blue. But I I think from that distance, anywhere in front of the hoop. It's still good, yeah. It's definitely very good. And is he, is um, he in front of red? Oh, I don't think quite. He's squinting at the camera. It's hard to tell. We'll see. We'll 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 know by what uh, by what Levi does, but he will be shooting at this, I think. And he has been hitting a lot of these. Mm. Now this is potentially a wide double. Blue in the hoop. Yeah, even even though there's a gap in the middle, you're still thinking, oh yeah, mm. you know, there's, there's there's stuff there. Yeah, I'd be really unlucky to go through the middle. Oh, I think he, he hasn't gone through missed the middle, on the outside. so I haven't I haven't commentated Kirsten, but I think he's gone to the other side of it. Has he? Yes, he has. Yes, okay. you see the ball bouncing a little bit. Yeah. Often makes those little nicks impossible. A couple, a couple of them. I've seen a couple of little bubbles in the lawn. Mm. Like when when Ethan was playing Levi before, he was. Uh, I think he played a shot up to hoop ten, and it there was it did like a little bounce. Mm. Very nice, nice controlled, controlled hoop. Yep. Very confident. I think if if once he gets confident enough to start doing that from a slightly longer distance, mm. I think that would be really, really da he'd be really dangerous to play against. Yeah. He would be, and um, he's left Levi a very, very difficult positional shot here. Do you reckon uh, he tries to get down or just go behind black? That is a good question. I think inevitably... A very good question. I think the best option actually would be to, to snuggle because that guarantees you get first shot and, and a good first shot, not just a jump but a good first shot at the next hoop. Yeah, I think I think Levi with with his tactical nous would have an advantage in a in a snuggle battle. Mm. But it, he's uh, he's elected to jump over that and just go to the boundary. Yes, which is not the worst outcome, but still. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing is, Levi's second ball is really really important here. If he puts this in front, red clears black, and then he's away. Which is why I hate putting a ball in like this against players like Levi, because you think that you're just giving them an easy rotate when seven yards is nothing, you know? That's right. So this is a really critical ball here. But Levi's very skilled with the balls. Slightly overhit that one. Yeah, I think so. He might have put too much too much gas on the stove. Mm. He overcooked it. I wonder if we see a hoop shot here. Why not? You know, maybe he's maybe he's feel like it. he's gonna he's gonna beat Luke at his own aggressive game. Yeah, win in Rome. And it would be it would be a real psychological blow. It would be. If he if he would run this, Luke is thinking, even if I go for everything, he's just still gonna slam it. Yep. Oh, Great he's shot. Too good. Incredible shot. He's too good. And he's Oh, oh there's he's, no way. Oh, oh this is phenomenal imagine shot. Imagine if that had gone in the jaws or gone through. That would have been the greatest shot of all time. He's just bounced off the jaws of hoop four. But as it is, he is sitting up against the upright. 
if Luke, Luke will be able to put this in a wide position where Red doesn't have a backswing on him. But it appears he's jumping over the yellow, so that makes it a bit harder to get control if yellow's in the way. And then it just looks like he's going past. That is unfortunate. Very hard shot to judge. I think... I think what he could have done there was just play past the yellow mm. because anywhere that's a wide position is still good, yeah. even if it's not directly in front of the hoop. It forces Levi to do something else about black. That's right. And so all he needs to do here is put it in front. He's got multiple options. He can just put it right in front, hiding from black, blocks blue from the hoop. He can put it between black and yellow. He can just come out a bit further. Multiple options, but which one would you choose? I think what he's done here is, is correct. He um, can protect himself from opponent, ball through the hoop, and then later use yellow to make sure that blue... Do you think you should be clearing red here, if he can see it? If he can see it, then definitely. I Let's think. Let's see. It looks like he's going through the back. Oh, unlucky. If he couldn't see it, do you think there was anything else he could have done there? I think. Ooh. I think it's a real toss up. Either you it's put your ball in the back right? of the jaw. Yeah, either you put your ball in the back of the jaws to ensure that, at least in that turn, your opponent can't make the hoop, or you put your ball in a positional shot so that. If things do go your way, you have a chance. Yeah, that's right. And we've got another ho-ho tarapiki here from Luke. Levi's blocked the jump on purpose. Ooh. Oh. Now he had the height on that. Oh. That was so close. Half a ball width. Yeah. It's off a, is not, not very much. It's a game of small margins, right? And do you yeah. think that Levi's just going to tap this through to get in front of Black, stop Black's path down to the hoop? Definitely. Definitely. You want every advantage That's you right. can. You can see that Levi's taking this very seriously, even yep. though he's ahead. By even though he's ahead, and you'd say he's probably controlling this match, he, he is. Still, he doesn't want to give a look anything. That's right. Because he knows he saw with that jump, you know. Mm. There's a real threat. Happen. There's a real threat there. Great positional shot from Luke. What's he? Oh no! An offside ball. Oh okay. Yeah, now Levi, true. I didn't realise it had gone offside. Yeah. Now Levi here is um, putting a lot of faith in his clearance shot here. And I think that's pretty justified. That is, yep, that's a tactic that I'm quite fond of as well. Yeah, put because a ball it in. gives you control. Exactly. It means you're, it means you're gaining something yep. at the rope immediately. Just staying in the, in the hoop. That's right, immediate control of the hoop. And so Luke is playing the Poro Kikorangi from a uh, two-hop position from now that, offside. That is interesting. That this, might be a wide this shot. Could be, this could be wide indeed. But whatever it is, Levi's looking at it. Yep. Whether it's the cannon or he can see half a ball. It looks pretty straight on on the camera. It does. So I wonder if this is a cannon that we're seeing here. Great oh, shot. If he could, Incredible shot. I don't know how much he could see of that, but it looked like, oh, it's a good shot either way because he hit it. But yep. if Miss. he was blocked, that makes it even better, partially. I think this is this is really, really mature here from Luke, looking looking at the angle, just taking a second glance to make sure if what he's thinking of is the right idea. Yeah. Because if this if this actually isn't runnable, I th honestly I think putting a ball in is really, really good here, and that's what he's doing. Don't move it, don't move it, don't move it. Okay, oh. he's good. And he actually might have blocked yellow at blue as well. So we'll see what Levi does here. Guess you have to clear blue, right? Mm, blue this is next. potentially a um, double, double clearance. clearance yeah. Yeah. Tasty. Oh, yeah, well, what a shot. He, he did play for the double clearance. Yeah. That was fantastic from Levi. 
because his red ball was nowhere to be seen. Yep. And if he only cleared the blue, black would be able to clear yellow. Yep. And unfortunately, black has sticked around. Sticked around. That's really well executed, though, from Levi. Able to clear both balls out of position. Black still will be able to clear yellow. But now that blue isn't in front, he's not gaining anything by clearing the yellow. Or, well, not immediately gaining anything. Mm. Yeah, just chuck it in. Yeah, nice shot. Could be tempted to clear red here. Mm. Mid pace yeah. stop shot. If it blocks, it blocks. If it doesn't, puts pressure on. Yeah, there's option. Oh, that is unfortunate. It's still clearing yellow is still a good option though. Mm. They're both equally good. It's just maybe I'd be tempted to do the other thing. It all depends how you're feeling. We'll go for the block here. Not quite, but not needed. Levi has definite control of this hoop now. Yeah, just with just with where Black's ended up. And shall we shall we cast our eyes over to the other lawns quickly and just do a quick scan of how they're going? Yes, we should. We have Mikey and. Jessica Bullen over on lawn two. It currently um, looks. I can see a couple red pigs and a couple blue pigs, so it looks reasonably, reasonably even. One, two, it's four, three currently to uh, to Mikey. Oh yep. Um, and he has control of hoop seven. You could definitely go either way. He's got two hoop balls eight, in front sorry. of eight. Yep. And over on lawn three, I think it is. Ethan Gumbrell is attempting a jump shot at hoop seven as Levi attempts his hoop shot at hoop 5. And Ethan has stroked that jump through very cleanly, and Levi has stroked that hoop not very weak, not very cleanly. No. Dirtily. It was, it was, yeah, it was a dirty no. shot. That was very unfortunate. Um, needs, a, needs a bit of a scrubber for that one. Yeah, but he... has definitely ceded control of this hoop. It's all these all these small margins, one one shot, and it and it can change everything. Yep. So anyway, what what was the score in that other one? It looks like it's. I only see like one pig. But oh no, I just see side. no. It's because there are lots of blue pigs. Three, uh, four, five. It's five one currently. No, but you just jumped through. Uh, six, it must be six one. Six one. Well, in that case, it looks like Ethan was six nil down, and he's managed to get one back with that impressive jump shot. So well played, Ethan. I think he's uh, he's up. Oh six no, he's up. Never six. mind. He's up six Never one. Never mind. He was he was up five one, and he made that jump to get six one. So double well played, Ethan. Yep. And he's actually aimed at a thirty yard hoop. Oh, incredible! And Luke has aimed at hoop another shot. hoop. We're seeing we're seeing hoop shots everywhere, and this is why you can't let Luke in here. No. Levi's going to be thinking, "Oh, I had a feeling this would happen." Yep. And he had an opportunity to to make that hoop. Do you think there's um, going to be? A little bit of doubt starting to creep into his mind as all oh, is this where he is this where he starts definitely he, this Although, is where he goes insane he starts cooking. I think after a shot like that, um, we can see that Levi's clearly focused focused on his own game. And that's probably that's probably a really good thing to do. How do how do what's your what's your thought process when you want to try and regain a bit of focus? I um I stop watching my opponent play shots. I turn my back and I. Pretend that I'm the only one out on the lawn. So you're kind of playing against yourself. That's right. I, only shots I see played are my own shots. Mm. That's for very extreme cases, though. Yeah, sometimes there are just those that w those one or two people that you really that just really get on your nerves. That's right. Yep. And just just oh, Miles has run a nice hoop as well. So that's now six two over there. We could see another six three comeback. We could. Now Levi here with an opportunity. Oh, Ooh. this is this now is really interesting. I think that was a slight bit of emotion there with the mallet swing. I think I think I think you're right. This is this is very interesting. Is this is it getting into Levi's head slightly? And we also saw him hit the pig earlier on his positional shot. Yep. 
could it, do you think it could be a bit of fatigue because it's been such a long day? Oh, I think I think it's a combination of factors. I think that as well as the fact that he's stumbling, he's stumbling a little bit. Um, you, you reckon? I think so. When that happens two hoops in a row, um, you start to wonder. Oh, that's He's, yeah. You make that's interesting. In, you make interesting decisions. Um, and with and with no balls in front of the hoop, mm. I'm very. I guess sometimes you got to back yourself, but I don't. I'm not sure about that one. Yeah, but then again, when it comes off like it did in hoop three, that's right. Um, you're held as a genius. That's right. So, yeah, what, what so a, you know, if, if he if he ran that, would be saying, "Well, you know, exactly." He, he knew exactly what he was doing. Exactly, and he's got the confidence and the skill to back up his confidence. Yeah, and um, you can never you can never count him out. Yeah, I think he's going to try this again, and I yep. feel like this one will be a bit closer. Yeah, I don't think you see Levi completely miss the hoop twice in a row. No, at the very least, a clearance on blue. Look at that! Has that gone straight through? That has Incredible. through. No That's reaction. That's how you would. Yeah, I, think, I think you know now he's in the zone. He is, yep. I think it took him three shots to wake up, but I think that was. I think Luke, he's back. I think Luke almost had him there. Yep. He or he nearly had him, and yep. Levi just locked in. Yep. Luke will be kicking himself for missing that that yeah. first attempt at hoop six. Well, he had he had two chances to get in the jaws there. He did. Yep. And that was like two, a couple of rare errors I think from Levi, just straight up errors. Yep. Not something you see very often. But you still have to be a really good player to to capitalise on those errors. You do. Not that Luke isn't. He's been playing so well. But anyone playing against Levi is going to find it hard. Because mm. the, these guys playing here, you know, they, they're not your average club players. These are, these are players who'd be very happy playing at a World Championships, a lot of these guys. And in fact, most of them have. Probably about 80% of the field here has been to the Under-21 World Championships last year. And so they all know what it takes to play at that level. As positional shot just going a touch too far. But Levi knows that his shooting has been really good. I think you've just got to take a deep breath, relax. Mm. Both players. Yeah. Yeah, definitely both of them. That looks a lot better. But now is... Uh, I'm, I'm thinking that Luke may take an aggressive option here once again and, and go for this mm. hoop. We've been, we've been seeing a lot of it. It reminds me, it reminds me of how... Um, Joel Steele plays somewhat. Yes, yes. Going for, going for a lot of hoops. A young Joel. Holy. Oh, incredible. Or are they going crazy? We're, we're, we're being treated to a hoop running exhibition. We are. And this is, this is, this is really, really interesting. Wow. So now we... It's, oh, it's, yeah, this, this is something. 4-3. It's anyone's game still. So now, now Levi's really going to be thinking, like we said before, I can't mm. give him anything. I've That's got to block. Right. I've got to, I've got to clear, and that that could force errors. It could. Yep, just playing this one in, two balls in front. But I do, I do have the feeling that Levi will compose himself. At some point, as he has done many times before. That's right. Two balls very close to hoop seven, hoop eight. Big pardon. Luke's got to hit something. Don't know if it's wide or not, but we'll see what happens when everything. I have a feeling something's going to go flying. And both oh, of them. Incredible double. Double clearance. Double well clearance. done. They've both moved. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like red still has a stop shot on black. Yep. But the danger balls have been removed. The hoops aren't. The hoops not getting run this turn. Well. Possibly not. Well, I. 
I don't think so. Maybe Levi no. might decide I'm just going to run it, but that would be a very aggressive that would, that course would be, of action. That would be Luke Francis level aggression, and I think yeah. if you get if you get sucked into playing the opponent's game, yep. that's that's going to be how you lose the game. That's right. And it looks like yeah, he is playing this softly. He's just going to go brocade this black ball. Yeah, well played. Perfect shot. Good composure there from Levi. Potentially a wire through the hoop. Yeah, that's right. But I think we already know what Luke's going to go for with this blue ball up on the north boundary. Mm. It's going to be a hoop shot. And I know, I know when I'm playing against people like that who will just go for everything, I think I never want to leave them anything because you never know how luck can go. You'll have two balls in front. Exactly. And then they'll, even if it's only one and three shots, you know, they'll they'll get it and you think, oh, why did I leave him there, you know? Mm -hmm. Of course he was going to get it. Yeah. That's a good shot there yep. from Luke. He's playing well to keep himself in the conversation here. He but is. Levi knows all he needs to do is keep placing balls in front. Yep. He can kind of go zen mode while Luke has to really shoot at everything and play window wipers. That's right. And he's done just that. We've got a bit of a, a mallet toss there from Luke. I wonder if there's what the emotions going through his head now, right, right now are. He's hit three, two, two very good row keys in a row. That's I right. Think, um, I think you might be feeling really confident here. Yep. It's like oh, I'm, I'm gonna run yep. this hoop. I think that's will, what he's thinking. His confidence will definitely be building. All we can do is sit and watch. No, he's playing in. Interesting. I I had a feeling he might have just gone for it, but it looks like he's gonna he's gonna leave black to do that. Hmm. Do you think Levi would think about blocking the hoop from black here or would he just put two balls in front, play the percentage game? I think you can you can hope to block black from the hoop and still get a positional. Yeah. It's probably the hope. It's really interesting. So we might we might be seeing the old tutuki here from Poro Pongo, but I have a feeling that you're aiming at the hoop. Oh, he's he's not looking. No, no he's a bit wayward, unfortunately. I always try and look, because some some players like to look at it no matter what. Mm. So you you look at them, and as the ball's travelling, they're looking at it, but. Sometimes, if they, sometimes even though they look at it, it's still off course. Mm. Just looking for a spot where it goes out. Yeah. And then some players just turn away, so you know they've missed or hit. So again, this is a chance for Levi to go Zen mode. Just a nice, easy hoop. Assuming it's not angled. Mm. I wonder... No, he is just running it. I was going to say, I wonder if he may consider going for the jaws, but... Le we, we heard from Levi earlier, his mentality is, you know, just run the hoop. That's right. Oh, which he hasn't done there. Oh. The rejection could have been worse. He's he's on the short boundary side. Yeah. But I think now you do have to go for this if you're Luke. I think the aggressive choice is the right choice in this situation. You've been handed the opportunity. You've got to take it. Oh... But he still cleared it. That could be worse. But I think in that situation, I think he could have gone for the hoop there. Mm. So I guess it's about knowing when to when Picking to choose when to when to take the aggressive shots. Yeah. And I guess you only learn that through experience, right? That's right. But it also it is it is getting pretty late in the day. I think it's almost six p.m. here, and these guys have been out the entire day. We've got eight games. I don't know if this is the eighth or the seventh, but oh, five. Sorry, five twenty past five. I thought I was looking at the I was looking at the screen. I thought it said five thirty nine, so I was like, it's oh, it's almost six. But now it says twenty past five. So not as late as I thought. But when you've been out on the lawn, standing, walking around, you do a lot of walking. I think people can walk like twenty k's. Yep. 
if, if you're playing so many games. So it, it is pretty taxing out there, especially if you're out there multiple days. But do you think that's a factor here or not really? I definitely do, especially after, um, what is this, the fourth day yeah. of the tournament. Yeah. Um, it can definitely start to take a toll. Um, but thankfully the sun's come out. Um, yeah, it's a little it's bit warmer. It's not windy. It's, it's nice yep. and still, no rain. Probably to quite a nice evening. Yeah, perfect, perfect croquet weather. Perfect, perfect weather for anything, I think. Yeah. Except for anything that requires rain, but I don't know what that could be. Growing crops. <laughs> Growing crops. Yeah. Well, thankfully, we're not doing that. No. A big shot here from from Luke. The only crop we're growing is this crop of incredible talent that we've got playing at this event. You're not wrong there. Yeah, you proud of me for coming up with that one on the yeah, fly? Yeah, that was... Oh, that, that was, was not, not far off. And I think this... This is a bit of a ritual here from Levi. He's... And a way for him to kind of de-stress a little bit. If mm. he is already, if, if tensions are a bit high, just take your time to walk, put that ball back in, yep. and that, that gives you like a few seconds to compose yourself. Some might even consider it a mind games as well. Not putting the ball back in. Yep. Why's that? Um, well, your opponent, you're putting your opponent's ball back in, your opponent thinks, oh. I missed. It kind of reinforces that. Well, not necessarily that, but um, it's almost a, like a great shot. It's what? almost a nonchalant, like, you oh know, yeah. you're calm, you're... Yeah, like you're just chilling, and you're confident. And you're trying, to, you're trying to show that to your opponent, even if inside you might be feeling a little bit different. That's right, yeah. I know definitely that's me sometimes. I can... I, tr I always try to look pretty calm, but, you know, on the inside, you're thinking, oh, you know, why mm. did I miss that type yeah. thing? Sometimes you got to fake it till you make it. That's right. Yeah. Looking over at the other lawn while they play over to this next hoop. What's what, 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 which Mikey one are you looking at? We've got Mikey and Jessica. Um, they're on hoop eleven, and it looks like it's currently six four to Mikey. But Jess clearly has control of of the hoop. Yeah, Blue um, is about a foot in front, and Mikey's rocking from across the lawn to try and get that. And meanwhile. Luke and Levi have play, are playing their positional shots. Great shot there from Luke. Yeah, it is. I think Luke's played this really well, these these two shots. And Mikey has hit that pressure okay, and in fact, he's somehow managed to hit red as well. His partner ball. Oh, no, no, never mind. I thought he'd made a double clearance, no. He did, yeah. He just unfortunately cut. Oh, he only moved blue slightly. Yeah. Okay, and, and Jess has promptly, run that hoop. Promptly run that hoop. So that'd be 6-5 to someone. Yep. Whenever you're at Hoop 11, it's always 6-5. Yep. Oh, and... 6-5 to Mikey. Lucas hit that right-hand wire. So now this is where Levi looks at... Looks at his ha-ho tarapiki, the jump shot. He's seeing what he's got here. Do you go for this? I'm, I'm not sure if you do. What score you is 5-3, I think. Had the score been 6-2... I think it would definitely be on. Um, it would be it would be a real statement to make, just like be. that boundary hoop at hoop three, and that angled hoop at hoop uh, six. Yeah, it's definitely within his repertoire. But that's right. Whether or not he's checking what, yeah. what kind of shot Black's got. That will, if that he could chooses what he to go for the the clearance on Black, he can only cut it probably. That's right. At the most to halfway. You'd, you'd have to hit this on the uh, right-hand side, right? Yep. Well, we'll see what he shoots at. I don't know if he's open on the hoop or if he's he's going for black. We'll, we'll find out. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. That, that's one of the consequences that can yep. happen from a shot like that. But luckily, both his balls have stayed relatively close. Yeah, that's right. So not the, not the worst outcome there for Levi. Definitely not. Is that the timer on our lawn? No, it's no. not. It's on one of the far ones. Mike's got it. 
and it appears that Lawn 3 they've come in, so I'm assuming that Ethan was up by a lot, that I'm assuming he managed to win that eventually. Against Miles. He did, yes. I've been I've just been told he did. Miles hasn't hasn't he hasn't won a game, he said. Oh no. Uh, uh, Miles hasn't won a game today. That's what he said. Oh. Now what's Luke looking at here? This is Poro Kikorangi to play. It's a bit of a dilemma. Do you put it in knowing that Red's probably going to clear you? Luke playing a deep ball in. Inviting Levi to either take a deep or a shallow position. Yep, that's right. Levi chooses the deep option. Uh, I, mean, I just need to catch my bearings again. I was just grabbed for a quick notification that we're going to be ending the stream after this round. There's one more round to play, but just because it's so late in the day. Which is fair enough. Everyone's everyone's been out here doing a lot of mahi. Yes. Especially, uh, there are a lot of people on cameras sitting out here sometimes for hours at a time, and there are people inside doing putting in all the hard work as well. Yes. So huge thanks to that whole team. We've got a big day tomorrow to prep for. Yeah, we do the final day of the singles. Eight more games, I think. Wow, it's a big day. It is. It's I will either seven or eight. Usually, you only play seven games a day. That's pretty standard. So mm. eight eight is a lot. And so, do you think Luke's going to shoot at this? I think you might be inclined to leave it if it's not open. Looks like he's just playing a... It's going to the line. Interesting. I'm not sure. I, I wonder if he played that on... I think that was intended. Oh, whatever's happened is he's left Levi with the, the Porto Fero, the chance of this hoop shot. And this would take it to 6-3. And Luke has, Luke has said something to Levi. Mm. It's pro probably something like, are you sure you're playing the right ball? May he, I think I heard, uh, I can't see the colours, so... No, no harm intended there from Luke, and everyone here is pretty nice. No one would do anything like that to deliberately put your opponent off. Maybe it was a mind game after all. <laughs> no, no, seriously though, no, it wasn't. I think it's just been a long day for these boys, and there's still one more round after this. Do you go for this? This hoop? That's a good question. Because um, you're at a short boundary, I guess. Why not? It's almost a free shot, really. I think you can. Oh. Could be worse. Yeah. It's been it's been a real it's been a real shoot off it has been. between these two and both of them have produced some big shots they out have. of almost nowhere yeah. when you when you think oh they've been missing a few shots and then they just pull one out yeah and yellow definitely has to uh, clear blue here yeah yep. absolutely and Mikey and Jess have just shaken hands it appears that Mikey, Mikey, has, won. Mikey has won that uh, seven five. five. And Levi's cut off that well. He's on the boundary. Now, in this case, I think there is a case for going to the boundary with Blue. Yeah. Just because of where Yellow is, and Luke yeah, has Luke done has done that. that. But Luke's very happy to do something like that. So when it's when it's not obviously, but when it's a necessary, it's, yeah. When it's a when it's a very good choice, then he's more than happy to do that. That's right. And I think that if this red is in front, there's no harm shooting at this. So he'll be shooting through at this. Great Ideally on shot. the left hand side, Perfect and that's exactly shot. what he's done. Perfect shot. It's incredibly advantageous if you can uh, cut, cut yourself, cut yourself, and retain at least 
some semblance of a position on a sh- on a hoop, especially one that's got a close boundary. Yeah, that's right. Like we have here on hoop. It's when you're nine. when you're playing in like a corner, like yep. like this hoop is. Yeah. I think we may see a hoop shot here as well. I think we might. And Levi will be want not wanting to give him a double here. Because if it's a double, I think Luke's definitely taking it. Yeah, why wouldn't you? Interesting. Oh, he's going for the clearance. It has to be with Black. I think this could be... Are we seeing a, a seismic shift in mm. Luke's play style at the moment? We are. This is very different from what what we have been seeing for the, the first half this of the game. This definitely a more definitely a more conventional line. Play that first ball in tell yourself I'm going to clear it and I think with the way Luke's been clearing I think this is a really wise choice mm. that is nearly perfect unfortunately it's rolled maybe two or three balls yeah, too he was, far he was going for that block there so this will be black at yellow great that's shot a, that's a fantastic shot and this is that's, that's, some, that's some really good croquet from Luke I think he's he's changed his style mm. for this hoop and it's really paid off for yep. him strategically He's making some very wise decisions. This, this, this could be a coming of age moment for Luke. Mm, yeah. <laughs> because I think generally aggression can be very good, but you have to know when not to when not to take risks unnecessarily. Yes, and you need to have the consistency and the skill to back up that aggressive line. And so we're gonna see this Porto Kofai. Going for the tutuki, the roke. And I think Levi's going to be thinking about the style change as well. Mm. He's going to be like, oh, what, what's he going to do now? He's going to play on his mind. He's, he's looking. Oh, oh, and he's hit his red ball. That is very unfortunate. So this is a huge chance for Luke to get a nice controlled run. Yeah. And he's he's actually been quite good at those from short distance. Mm. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised to see this landing, not, ne- not necessarily right in front, but, but landing close. Landing close. Yeah. And a lot of the time, you can't really control how much wire you're going to catch or where exactly you're going to go. But you That's can, right. you can, all you can do is give yourself the best effort. What's he up to here? I'm just restalking, looking at things. Looks like he's decided not to slam it, which I think is very good. Yep. Oh, he's playing for the jaws. Yep. I mean, the hoop was a lot more angled than we originally it thought. It must have been. That's yeah. it's still really good. But you've got complete control. You do give away two boundary jumps, but mm. uh, the one with the red is from the corner. I have seen. Ball, I have seen Levi make a corner jump before. Yeah, they're they're pretty flashy when they come off. Yep. But so hoop oh, thirteen at uh, like he's taking off the pegs. That, yeah, you have yep. to. Yep. That's gonna be that's gonna be another ha ho tada picky. And Levi's getting the ref to tap that hoop down. Why do we tap the hoops down? They're doing it a lot, aren't they? Mm, they get loose. Um and loose hoops are no good for uh for hoop shots. Well when we're when we're trying to run it with control. Yep. We already we want to catch the minimum amount of wire necessary. Yep, and often that's very unpredictable. Um, how much wire you might get when the hoop is loose. Yeah, that's right. So as the as the ref comes on, it's Wayne Gear, tournament referee, is going to tap this hoop down. We cast our eyes over to across the lawns again. I can't really see what's going on, so nothing really obvious stands out to me. We have Josh. Josh Winter. Josh Winter there. He's just finished a game. Oh, yeah, that's against Patrick Connolly. That looks like it was hoop 10, so I'd say that if Josh won that, that would be 7-3 to Josh. 7-3. And it appears that uh, James Duggan and Matty Clarkson are on hoop 4. Are they? Or are they on hoop 9? No? Yes. No, they're on hoop 4. Hoop 4. And it appears to be... I see a couple of two red one. flips, and that would be that would be two one to James then. Oh, and it appears it appears Levi is wanting to move his ball slightly forward. Maybe there's a bit of sloped ground or a patch or mm. something something that would 
disrupt Levi, and that's perfectly acceptable. They're just going to get the referee to make sure he doesn't gain any advantage from moving it slightly forward. So in that case, he's just going to move it along the angle that he's playing, so the angle doesn't become any easier. And if you're only moving it forward a couple centimetres, then the distance doesn't really change anything. You're still going to hit it either way if you if it goes through. So here we go. Ho Ho Tarapiki with Porto Fiddle. This could be incredible. Oh, he's, he's hit the blue ball. He just nudged it, but he hasn't gone through. He hasn't put it through. But he will have another shot here with yellow. Oh, last one, is it? So, I think here, you just go halfway. Let him have a go. Mm. Give yourself the best chance. And he's he's actually played for the snuggle here. But it hasn't, it but hasn't you have paid to, off. You have to weight this incredibly carefully because you can't go out. No. If you go out, then Levi's entitled to just move the ball away because it's not part of the game. Yep. And he has gone out. Considered an outside agency. You've got to have a lot of a lot of guts to go for a shot like that. Mm. Clearly shows the uh, confidence that Luke has in Levi's ability. So. That's right. He doesn't. He really doesn't want to give him this boundary jump. But here we go once again. He's already made one. Can he do another? No, oh. he's, he's missed it. And these uh, jumps like these are so hard to do. Some sometimes they are sometimes they are perfect. But anyone who can get a boundary jump rate of more than about one and three, that's that's incredible. That is incredible. You hit the uh, the bounce and the height perfect. It's just the. Uh yeah, sometimes there can be a Accuracy. small a small slope in the ground can just nudge it off course. Yep. All these minor things, and that's a really really good hoop from Luke. Perfect position. So that's the that's the control we were talking about earlier. He's really he's really in a good position here, and that's four five on the scoreboard. And there's a real chance to tie this game. Yeah, this could be really interesting here. But I'm now I'm now wondering I'm uh, I'm just conscious of the fact that they've been playing for a while, and I wonder when that 20 minute time limit is going to come into play. Mm, it could play a pretty big part in this game. I think Levi really would Levi would definitely decide I'm just going to clear balls. I'm not going to give him any chance whatsoever from mm. anywhere. Yeah. And that's the Roque, and he oh, slammed incredible it. Incredible shot. Levi, Levi really showing, even even in probably a higher stress game for him than most, mm. how he can perform under pressure and and hit the shots when he needs to the most. Just bringing this ball in. It looks like it might be a bit short, to be honest. Mm. Just slightly. I think this really, this really could be fatigue on both sides. I think it could be um, over and under hitting shots. And these are these are small margins, but definitely these guys are going to be. A, a lot of them have very high standards for themselves. They do. I know. I know. If it's me and I see that, I'm like, oh, you know, what mm. what was that? I think I think that to myself. Yeah. Even though in actuality it's it's fine. Mm. But I have a I have a feeling uh, both of them may not want to watch this one back. No, this is uh, definitely a um, one of the games of all time. <laughs> one might say. Oh, that's a Incredible. fantastic stop shot. Incredible stop shot. Anyone, anyone wanting to learn how a stop shot is done, just put this on replay ten yep. times. It's really channeling prime Joel Steele. Who would, who would win, Luke Francis or Joel Steele in his prime? That is a tough question. But I'm, I'm talking like Luke Francis going god mode. I think it's close. Oh, Incredible what a shot. Shot. Levi, Levi Franks has gone god mode. 
that's three that's three huge hoops under pressure now yep. and all of a sudden just when it looked like Luke was had a chance to tie the game up yep. he hits the incredible cross lawn roke and then runs an angled hoop to bring it to 6-4 and all of a sudden you're thinking where was that chance that I had it, it's gone mm. really is the stuff champions are made of yeah this, this game's really had its ups and downs but we can see how Levi is able to come back from these challenges and really really rise to the occasion we just wait for Levi to play his red ball he's down in corner four by the yellow flag so he's had to walk all the way across the lawn It looks like this might be a bit deep. Mm. I think deliberately. Yes, definitely. So anywhere anywhere that Luke wants to clear this red, Levi will back himself to hit that return row, okay? Definitely. Good positional shot there from Luke. So it's, it's these moments where silence falls on the croquet lawn. Mm. And everyone can just feel it. But we Levi's deciding to let him have this one. I don't know about this. Oh, he's played for the block, and I think he may have got it. Yes. But the problem with that is he's got the stop shot clearance, and this may force Levi to take on the hoop. Which I think he was might have been planning. He was intending he was intending for this all along. Yep. The puppet I, master. He is, the, he is the master manipulator. Mm. But also being 6-4 up... Yeah, it does give him a breadth of autonomy. Free will doesn't exist when Levi Franks is on the lawn. <laughs> oh, oh, now that millimetres away. I can't say anything wishy because he didn't run the hoop. Mm. I don't know what I would have said, but it... Yeah. Would have been spectacular, It would have sure. been, I'm sure. Anyway, black at the hoop. I don't think there's any... There's not really any opportunity for shenanigans here. Red's not really flickable, so... Oh, I think... I think That hoop might be a little bit I was Yeah, I was going to say, I think it could have benefited for him to get the referee to tap that down. And it also is like what we said before with Levi putting the ball in. It is a chance for Luke to gain a bit of composure mm. as and, and think about his shot as before he plays it. You're right there. Now put a call fire. As the timer goes off. That timer coming into play and it's it's distracted Levi a little bit. So we're just gonna quiet ourselves down and hopefully he won't be able to hear us. And there the the referee is clicking the timer and that's really distracted Levi. It's that's put him off and I think the, those referees, they should have probably been thinking about that and mm. noticing that Levi was about to play a shot. I think that could have waited. He's looking. He's Ooh. just nicked that black ball. And this really is the chance for Luke to get this controlled and straight down to hoop 12. He's run it hard. He's run it the whole way down. It's it's not near hoop 12, it's gone down to the boundary, so this is a chance for Levi to get that wide position with Porto Fedor. And he's looking at the line, so that's definitely what he's going for. Looks all right. It does. If Luke wants to send this to the 13th hoop, he... Um, it looks like he is lining he, up the shot here. He will have to do something with this ball. That is correct. He will yep. have to do something with this ball yep. if he yep. wants to win the game. Yep. Thank you for that insightful yep. that insightful knowledge. But yes, it, it appears we might be seeing Luke Francis go God mode. Oh! oh. No, he was... 
he was knocking on the door of, of the gates of heaven and, mm. and they said no. Oh. It was so close. But again, that would have been incredible. You see how close that was. Mm. It's really a game of inches. And you know, we're, we are, we're having a bit of a laugh, but the, these guys are both treating us to an incredible exhibition of shooting. Both of them running some incredible hoops and hitting really high pressure rokes from everywhere across the lawn. But I'm pretty sure both of them will be really happy when this game is finished, no matter who wins it. Yes, it was hard fought by both. And it still is. So what are we what are we seeing here? Blue's got to shoot at red, right? Blue does, but if blue can't see red, then only thing blue can do is Try take position. Or, or go through the back. Mm. Well, he's shooting at something. I wonder if we're going to see this just hit the hoop. That is definitely so one if, of the possible outcomes. Well, if the hoop's in the way. We'll see what happens. Oh. Millimetres. Yeah, again, a game, of, a game of inches. And this is Levi's chance to take the game. Seal the deal. 7-5 would be the score if he runs this hoop. I don't want to preempt it. Surprised he's not getting the hoop tapped, to be honest. Mm. I feel like this would be part of going zen mode. Just really make sure. Every possible variable is... But then sometimes, you know, Levi's mantra, just, just run the hoop. Which he's done, just, oh, I think. That is... They're checking. What are they saying? Doesn't look like it's through. Well... There's not much either of them can do about that. Levi's certainly trying to put the just in, just run the hoop. Yep. But it's barely not through, so... I, I don't know what Luke can do here. He's going to have to attempt some kind of jump, but... It's so angled, and you can even hit the hoop, and even if you don't touch the red ball, you can put it through. Yeah, oh, I think I think he has to try the jump here. Blue is blue is nowhere. You almost have you might even have to go over a hoop. Mm, he's uh, getting rid of yellow. yellow. And now he's I think he's he's given up. Unfortunately, yeah. that was kind of a not really just just hidden hope. Really, like quite literally hidden hope. Mm. Not much time really taken over that, and you can see. And Levi is going to remove all doubt. And this is this is a very safe option because he knows that red is most of the way through the hoop, and yep. he's done that. And that's the game. And has well played to both of these guys. Uh, I I think we might ask them to have a chat, but I feel like both of them uh, just want to be done with it and get on to the next round. But yep. I'll see what I'll see what Luke wants to say. I feel like Levi. We've had Levi on, and he might not want to. But I'll go do that, and then if we don't. Uh, if they don't want to, we will uh, finish up for the day, and that will be Kakite Apopo. Yes, thank you all for listening. Um, anyway, I'll go see shall, if I can get We lit. shall see. Yep, so Luca's going to come and have a talk to us quickly. Do you want to do the interviewing, Robbie, or shall I? I think we both can. All right, yeah. We can share them. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, Luke's making his way over now. Well, I'm unlucky about that, Luke. You played really well. Congratulations, but yeah, yeah, I think it was it was a good game. You put on a show for us. I'm happy with how I played. Yeah. 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 I reckon you definitely. I think at hoop, um, at hoop nine, I think you played it really well. I saw you changed up your style, and you were probably thinking about going for a hoop, but you chose to do the clearance instead. At hoop nine here. Yeah. When I set the blue ball in that hoop, I reckon I could have done what I did on hoop 11, just jumped through, but it was a bit awkward to hit that through, so I thought I'd 
let him have two boundary jumps instead of me trying to smash it through. Yeah. Because I need two hoops out of it. I think that's a very that's a very intelligent line of play, and we we definitely uh, praised you for it in the commentary box. But unfortunate with how well he was playing. Yeah, it looked. Ten, he had a real good row key. Yeah. Yeah. Good hook shot. Not much I can do to stop him being on row keys, but. Well, we we actually reckoned you had him on the ropes for a bit. I did get back in it a little bit, yeah. At hoop, at hoop six was a real turning point. Yeah. I think. I should have gone hoop six. That was less than a meter hoop run dead straight. Well, coulda, woulda, shoulda, yeah. right? Yeah. No use dwelling on the past. But you still gave him a really good go, and I think you can be really happy with how you played this tournament. Definitely. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with the results I've been getting. Yeah. I think your handicap's getting dropped. <laughs> good luck. Rightly so. <laughs> All right. Thanks well, thanks, so much. thanks very much, Lou. Thank you. And thanks very much to uh, you guys, the viewers. Uh, we're going to go and finish up for the day. Uh, so, Kakite or Popo, see you tomorrow. And yeah. Yep, Kirikoto, see you tomorrow morning. Whoops, running on empty? Enjoy a six cents per litre fuel discount at your local Caltex with Pumped Every Day. Ah, feels good, eh? Get it at any participating Caltex. Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. This isn't about long distance calling, technology, or living overseas. Do I have one more bid? Thank you. And we are sold to the Kiwi phone bidder from Manchester. <laughs> it's about Bailey's finding buyers that others can't. This is an opportunity that we can't pass up. Funding is a real challenge. Uh, we know that a lot of schools face that ongoing and the reality is if you go to a lower decile school in New Zealand you are less likely to be able to afford to participate in sport. Obviously having come through it myself with kids and, and being one of those kids myself who played sport, I know how much it defined who I was. And now being able to go, I can't fix it all but we can help and try and give to those people who are going through really tough times. The so sponsorship from New Zealand Carbon Farming has been fantastic for our sports teams actually who went away to tournament week. We're a community who's driven by sport, but often money and, and the cost of travel, accommodation and uniform can be a, a barrier for some of our students. And to come out with a, a new uniform for a number of sports, particularly our basketball teams who have been away at nationals, has been uh, uplifting for the students and for our community. Uh, the support from the Carbon Farming has been wonderful. Without them, then we wouldn't look like this. <laughs>